Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Jim Norick Arena here at the Cattlemen's Congress. We're excited to get started with another day here at our show. Before we get started, if we could please have you all rise for a national anthem. Well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the Cattlemen's Congress. We are excited for our third year here in Oklahoma City. We are going to get started in Ring 1 with your Super National Shorthorn Show. We'll be starting in your Bull Show, Class 1 Late Spring Bull Calves. We'd like to welcome our judge back today, Mr. Jeff Gooden. And over in the main ring, we are going to get started with your full-blood female show. I'd like to welcome our judge back, Mr. Garrett Lampy.
Well, good morning uh, over here on the Shorthorn side, and uh, what a nice way to start. It's a pleasure to be back here to evaluate your Shorthorn cattle today, uh, and what a, like I said, what a way to start. I think we got a bull here that comes to the top of the class relatively easy for me, and that starts from the ground up. This calf is so good on his feet and legs, he gets out and moves, boy, he really excels. He ties together real nice in that front end. He's probably the thickest, carries it down through his typhoon, down through his twist. Just an easy place for me to start off here in your Shorthorn Show. <coughs> the bullet's coming out here in second. One I really like up through his front end. He gives up some foot size, maybe some bone size to the one that's right behind him, or right in front of him. Maybe just not quite as deep in that flank as the one that we're starting the class with, but still a real nice bull here. The bull that's coming here in third is one I really liked when he first came in. But the more you watch him walk, his left pasture, and he maybe wants to pop it every once in a while. But again, that's a real nice calf that's really soft in his middle, ties together up through his front end really well. The next bull coming around is one that I like an awful lot. He just gets a little narrower down there in his twist, doesn't carry that muscle shape down his twist. When I get right behind him, I just want to get him and spread him out just a little bit. He doesn't carry the muscle down through his stifle uh, when you get to looking at him from a profile standpoint. And the next young lady's bull that's rounding out the class gets just a little weaker in the top, gives up some substance of bone and foot structure compared to the ones that's right in front of him today. But what a really nice way to start off our short horn bull show. As we get into our second class of full blood females, I, I think two heifers that contrast quite a bit in their type and kind. Uh, quite simply for me, the heifer that's going to lead off this class, I think she's bolder in the way that she's constructed. Uh, there in the center portion of her rib cage, she's more dimensional. Uh, from that standpoint, shows more outward curvature to her rib. And, and still, with one that's um, probably a little stouter in her bone work, a little bigger footed. Uh, now, without a doubt, the heifer that stands directly behind her probably reads better on paper. She's probably a shot leaner and more attractive when you study her through the front one-third of her body. I just wish that she had that uh, extra shape and dimension that the heifer that leads off the class does. Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Ring, your first class and first division here in our bowl show. Congratulations, champion going to Mitchell Hunter of Clinton, Oklahoma, with Hunt's ace in the hole, 242K ET. Second place in reserve in that division will go to Camden Flippo of Rush Springs, Oklahoma, with FFF Wild Thing, 2289. Third place in that class exhibited by Clay Huber. Fourth place went to Mitchell Hunter. Fifth place will go to Jocelyn Phelps. Now in ring one, we have class four. These are early spring bull calves. Back over in the main ring, congratulations in class two. First place was exhibited by Meyer Main on Jew Farms in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Second place also will go to Meyer Main on Jew Farms with MMA Simrose 242 KET. Now in the ring is class three. These are full blood heifer calves born November to December of 2021. We have a December single entry here and one that I think can stand some competition just when you study that one from a balance standpoint. I think that she ties in very smoothly behind her shoulder. I think she's built nice and constructed well out of, out of her hip and into her hind leg. I I'd probably like to lengthen that one stride out just a shot out of that front end, uh, but one that I think is certainly good in terms of her, her look and her balance and the way she's constructed down her top line. Nice single entry there for that young man. Well, here in our second class of shorthorn bulls, uh, another bull that comes to the top relatively easy. This is a calf that's uh, got a big top, big muscled when you get to look at him. Fairly sound on the move. When I get right behind him, he gets maybe just a little narrower track in there at the bottom. Uh, he gets them legs a little closer together. I'd like to spread him apart just a little bit uh, for me today, but that's a nice calf to start this class off with. Uh, the young man's bull here that's going to come out in second just gives up too much bone. Uh, foot structure, lacks the muscle that the calf that uh, we're starting the class with, yet he is one that's really nice up through his front end, uh, and you got to appreciate that about him. Well, congratulations. Back in the Shorthorn Ring results of Class 4 early spring bull calves. First place will go to Red Hot Cinnamon 92, bred known by Judah Williams of 
Mullican, Michigan. And second place in congratulations go to Chloe Carlisle of Amarillo, Texas with Cash Farms Checkmates. We're now going to bring in Class 5. These will be early spring bull calves. Back over in the main ring, results of Class 3, first place, and congratulations. We'll go to Fancy Creek Farm and Prairie Farm of Sherman, Illinois, with FCF 142B Indian Princess 111J. We get in here to some uh, October and September born full blood females. I think a very easy class winner for me. Uh, one that's so attractive and feminine in the way that she's built. Incredible in terms of her balance and, and build and just uh, looks like a female. Uh, yet I think that that one's got enough in terms of the extras, in terms of dimension and power uh, from a rib standpoint. Maybe not just uh, as opened up from a skeletal width and muscle standpoint as maybe you'd expect to see in some of these uh, full Full blood cattle, but her build and her uniqueness for what we've seen yet today, uh, I think, is is awfully, awfully nice. Uh, the heifer that's going to come in second, probably just mostly fo uh, follows my class winner in that ladylike feature standpoint. One that's really long necked, smooth shouldered, really attractive there about her head. I like this one in the way that she's constructed there, her hip and her hind leg. At times, she wants to come up just a little bit in her spine when we ask the cattle to go, uh, but I still think that that's an awfully nice female to go second. The uh, heifer that's going to round out the class, I think, is good in terms of her build. I think one that's extremely long bodied, long hipped, uh, one that gets out and goes good enough for me. Uh, I just, you know, if you could compare her to those cattle that stand directly in front of her, just needs opened up from a rib and body standpoint. Well, congratulations over in ring two results of class four. First place exhibited by Tyler Loudon of Creston, Iowa with TLC, TLLC Sassy Sophia ET. Second place in that class also going to Tyler Loudon with TLLC Sophia 1J6CT. And third place in that class will go to Fancy Creek Farm of Sherman, Illinois.
Uh, two summer heifers out here uh, in this particular class and two cattle that I think are awfully nice in their own regard. But for me, it was pretty logical and pretty quick to find the heifer that's going to lead off this class. Uh, talk about one that's just very attractive in the way that she's made. She balances so well. Just very ultra feminine and ladylike when you st study her there through her skull shape and into her shoulder. Just a really nice heifer to lead off this particular class. Uh, another next heifer that's going to come here, certainly one that's long bodied. She too's long necked and smooth there in her shoulder. I appreciate that uh, she looks like she's maybe even a shot further along in terms of gestation. But uh, as we ask the cattle to go, she's just a bit more uncoordinated. Uh, doesn't have that overall pizzazz and flair that our class winner does. Well, congratulations. Back in the main ring, class five, first place. We'll go to Adelidia Ebersall of Kellerton, Iowa, with ECC Missy 166J. And second place in that class, we'll go to Henry Woodard. Well, now we'll to see your final class here in our full blood female show. This will be class six, full blood spring yearling heifer is born March of 2021. Well, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think a really nice single entry here as well, and one that uh, I like in terms of that added length when you study her from the top side of her shoulder to her pole, really long in that regard. One that's set back very good in the angle to her knee and the slope to her shoulder. Uh, still, you know, very attractive. And then yet when you get in kind of behind that one or on top of her, that's one that's got some shape when you study her uh, outward curvature to her rib and with the skeleton. Good single entry. Congratulations to you. Well, congratulations in our final class over here in your Full Blood main show. First place, we'll go to ECC Anya 112J, exhibited by Adelaida Ebersall of Kellerton, Iowa. We'll now bring those first and seconds in over here in your Full Blood ring, and our judge will select his grand and reserve grand champion, Full Blood female. A lot of an excellent set of bulls here from top to bottom, and uh, you can switch these around. I couldn't argue with you a whole lot, but uh, I think the bull that comes to the top does so relatively easy for me, just on soundness. Uh, I'm kind of a soundness freak. Uh, they got to they got to hit their stride. They got to be good from the ground up, and I think this one really excels at that. When you get to analyzing him, he's got a nice muscle shape. When you get to looking at him, ties together really nice up through that front end. I think just a logical place to start off uh, uh, this class with. It gets a little closer, second, third, and fourth. I'm going to go with the bull that I think follows as far as soundness uh, compared to the bull that we're starting with. He maybe gives up just a little bit of foot size, maybe just a little bit of bone, but a calf that when we get him out here on the move, I like him an awful lot. Lot. I really like the way that uh, neck ties into that shoulder. I think he's really smooth and, and nice right through there, and I think just a, a nice place to land there in second. The bull that's going to come out here in third, boy, just a striking pose. He gives you a pretty look when you get to looking at him. He maybe can get just a little straight in that front end. I think that's my concern with him at times. Uh, he's maybe not as soft right there in his flank area compared to the bulls right in front of him, but a bull that sure catches your eye. The next young lady's bull that's going to come out next, when you get right behind him and follow him, he's not as easy tracking. He doesn't want to move off those hind two legs quite as well as some of the bulls right in front of him. He maybe just gets a little straighter in that hawk. I'd like to see him just spread apart when I get right behind him when we get him out here on the move. Then the next young man's bull that's rounding out the class, 
definitely the high performance bull in the class. He wants to struggle on the move, maybe a little narrow in that pin set, uh, probably just maybe a little coarser in that shoulder for me today, but a really good class of bulls here. Well, congratulations over in the Shorthorn Ring. Results of Class 5. First place exhibited by Armstrong Farms of Saxonburg, Pennsylvania. Bullum Family Shorthorns and Little Cedar Cattle Company. With BFS LCC, AFLC, Direct Deposit 2254 ET. Second place in that class will go to... Peyton Valley Farms of Millersburg, Ohio with PVF Tank 72K ET. Third place was exhibited by Savannah Vogel of Hamill, South Dakota. Fourth place in congratulations will go to Tyler DeGroot. And fifth place will go to Don Kegwin. We'll now bring those first and seconds in. Our judge is going to select his champion reserve here in your early spring bull calf division. Well, if you would, ringside, put your hands together and congratulate the full blood of Maine on you, uh, female exhibitors out here. Uh, I'll be I'll be quite honest and and quite uh, just just real. I'm blown away by the quality that we found in in this particular show. You know, sometimes uh, when you when you get up to do one of these, you're not really sure what you're going to see. And, and from the very beginning, it started off very very good. And and I think that uh, your two calf. Uh, class winners up here are certainly good in terms of cattle that have some dimension and some shape and some stoutness of feature and bone work and foot size uh, and then you progress into the fall and one that's uh, a little bit maybe more traditional and, and their kind but just extra stout at the ground and big footed and and very very good in that regard yet still long enough in terms of her body sh body shape and and really attractive there uh, about her head and neck but but quite honestly it kind of comes down to the heifers that that we found out of the last three classes and I think that's where there becomes some sort and some give in these cattle uh, the heifer that comes out of that fourth class uh, kind of a unicorn in the way that she came at us today I think one that's just so sleek in the way that she's built very flat and angular in her shoulders she's attractive there about her head and neck absolutely love that one from the profile when you study her down her top through her hip into her hind leg and then and then still has that curvature and shape uh, to her rib that, that we seem to be chasing, I think that that's an awfully nice female. A little bigger framed one here that comes next, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because I think she's one of the cattle out here that too is really attractive. I think that she's well built. I think that she's neat in the way that she tra transitions and ties everything together. You know, maybe she's not just perfect in the, the way that her hip is, is built from an aesthetic standpoint, but I think one that's very good in terms of the basics and then the extra uh, look and ladylike feature. The heifer that came out of that last class, well, we talked about, I think that that one's very good in the angle to her knee. I think in relation to the cattle that stand directly in front of her, that one's probably a shot more dimensional and mo shot more genuine in the way that she's built from a muscle and a skeletal width standpoint but maybe doesn't just have that extra pizzazz and that extra sweep to her lower rib cage. But I think that these three females here on the back side of this uh, full blood show are very, very good. Put your hands together and congratulate them. I'll show you the two that I like. Well, on the shorthorn side here uh, for this division, uh, what a pair of bulls here that, that won their classes. Uh, the bull that won the first class in this division, he's won from his shoulder back. Boy, he's really good. He sets down on a nice foot and leg. You can maybe see him just getting a little coarser right there in his shoulder as he gets a little older, maybe just a little straight on that front end at times. But, uh, boy, from the shoulder back, that one's got a tremendous hip, carries it down through his stifle, nice soft middle, but that's a really nice calf. Uh, the bull that won the second class, I love the way that front end all comes together there. Nice big set of testicles under him. A little longer sighted than the, probably than the bull right in front of him. And, uh, you know, I say this a lot, that extra length of body uh, will add some pounds onto the progeny, and I really appreciate that about him. Uh, if you would, let's give these exhibitors a round of applause. This was a really tremendous uh, uh, two classes in this division here. That's a good class. Well, congratulations over here in your Full Blood Main Show, your champion. Coming out of Class 4, congratulations to Tyler Loudon of Creston, Iowa, with TLLC Sassy Sophia ET. 
And reserve champion Full Blood will go out of Class 5. Congratulations to Adelaida Ebersol of Kellerton, Iowa with ECC Missy 166J. We'll now look to get started with your Full Blood Bull Show. We'll look for Class 7 Full Blood Bull Calves born March to May of 2022. And congratulations back over here in the Shorthorn Ring, your champion in that last division. Coming out of Class 5, exhibited by Armstrong Farms, Bullum Family Shorthorns, and Little Cedar Cattle Company with BFSLCC, AFLC, direct deposit 2254ET. And reserve champion will come out of Class 4. Congratulations to Judah Williams with Red Hot Cinnamon 92. We'll now look to get started with your next division here in our Shorthorn Bowl show. This will be Class 8, Junior Bull Calves. As we start off your bull show, a March born uh, single entry and one certainly compliment in terms of his growth figures, probably as good in that regard as we've seen yet uh, so far in the full blood show. And really a shapely muscled bull, one that's got some pop and flair when you study him. Uh, from a shape standpoint and some muscle turn. Ideally, we need to free that calf up on by the end of his skeleton, uh, but really a shapely, attractive bull to uh, win this single entry class. Well, congratulations over here in the main ring. Results from Class 7. First place went to FCF 132A, Red Slinger 25K, exhibited by Fancy Creek Farm in Prairie Cross of Sherman, Illinois. We'll now bring in Class 8. These will be full blood bull calves born January to February of 2022. Again, I think we got a bull here that uh, comes to the top of the class rather easy for me. And this one, uh, a bull that when you get to uh, looking at his numbers, he checks all the boxes. He's got the big yearling growth, uh, big carcass weight, nice ribeye numbers, uh, and a good calf to go along with that. I love his body shape. He maybe doesn't have quite as much muscle as some other bulls we've already seen out here. But again, he's one that's sound from the ground up, and uh, you really appreciate that about him. He gets a little closer second, third, obviously. We've got a bull that gives up some performance here that's going to come out in second. Uh, but I think a calf that's uh, uh, got a lot of future to him. If I'd change him, I'd maybe set that tail head down in him just a little bit. He gets a little higher in that pen set for me today. But uh, his best days are still yet ahead of him. Then we come out with a bull that's really green in his overall makeup. I think with some time and some feed, this bull's going to get a little better. He gets just a little off on those hind legs when we get him out here in the, and on the move. Uh, he gets one to hawk in just a little more than I'd like to see. But a nice bull to start the class off with. Uh, 
Another single entry here on the Full Blood Bull Show, and one that you certainly like in terms of his growth and performance and the added scale and pounds that this bull has. Really a long-bodied bull, bull that's good on his foot, uh, good foundation under this bull. It is stout-muscled as well. Good single entry there, bull, to lead off that class. Well, congratulations back over in the Full Blood Ring. Can out of class eight, first place exhibited by Eversole Cattle Company of Kellerton, Iowa, with ECC Dream Dirt 201K. We'll now bring in class nine. These will be full blood senior bulls. After this class, we will be selecting your grand and reserve grand champion full blood main bull. Back from the Shorthorn Ring, results of class eight, first place, bred known by Paint Valley Farms of Millersburg, Ohio, with PVF Icon 50K. Second place in that class was exhibited by Eisenhower Cattle Company of Hampton, Nebraska. In third place, exhibited by Cade Lott of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Now in the ring is Class 9 Junior Bull Calves. Well, I think two really good bulls here uh, in your final class of bulls. And, and uh, the one that's going to lead off the class for me does so quite handily. I think that bull's just better in the way that he's constructed from a design and a balance standpoint. I'm more comfortable with the way that that one's built down his top line and out of his hip. He's not just the freest moving one out here, but a uh, bull that's got some size and some scale and attractiveness and neatness about him. I think that that's an awfully nice bull to lead off this class. I think he's good turnout value in the bull that comes in next and one that's certainly shapely from a muscle standpoint. He's really dimensional from there. He's just a little plainer in the way that he comes at us today, a little flatter uh, or just a little plainer in, in his uh, presence a little finer in his bone work, but certainly a good beef bull uh, that has tremendous turnout value. Congratulations to those exhibitors. Well, congratulations in our final class of full blood Maine bulls. First place exhibited by Fancy Creek Farm and Prairie Cross of Sherman, Illinois, with FCF Redstone 06H. In second place, we'll go to McCullough Cattle Company of Maxwell, Texas. We're not going to bring those first and seconds in. Our judge will select his Grand Reserve Full Blood Bowl. Well, another nice pair of bulls here, and obviously some differences here. Uh, it's a matter of give and take. Uh, there are some things I'd like to change about both of these bulls. Uh, I think the calf that uh, I'm going to start the class with uh, does so on soundness when I get him out here on the move. He's maybe not the most attractive off them hind legs on the move, but he maybe has got a little more set, but uh, I'd rather have one that's that way than a little too straight, and I think uh, this calf here wins this class on soundness between the two. I'd like to maybe change him off that front end. He gets a little wider in that chest floor for me when he gets on the standstill, but a nice calf to start the class. The bull that's going to come out here in second, he's one that just struggles a little more for me on the move. He misses his stride just a little bit on them hind legs when he hits uh, where that front foot takes off. He's just a little short of that stride, gets a little shorter or choppier in his uh, step. I'd like to maybe set that tail head down on him just a little bit for me today. But uh, nice pair of bulls that you could uh, switch them around if you want to. But for me today, I'm going to use the bull that I think is a little sounder. Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Ring. Results of that last class. 
First place exhibited by Kane Agater of Seward, Nebraska with JSF Kane Broadway, 830 KET. And second place will go to Brock David Studer of Creston, Iowa. We'll now bring those first and seconds in. Select a chamber reserve in your junior bowl calf division. Well, maybe not the, some of the numbers that we've seen in some of the bull shows throughout the week, but I think tremendous quality, and I think uh, as we finished up the full-blood female show, I, I, as I mentioned, I was blown away and quite honestly a little bit surprised just how good they are, and I think that that trend uh, continues out here when we when we get these uh, four full-blood main bulls out here. I think that there's some value in these cattle from a muscle standpoint, from a dimension and shape standpoint. I think that all these cattle are very good in that regard. There's some differences that I see in terms of balance and structure uh, in this particular lineup of cattle. Uh, so there, there is a little bit of give and take and maybe some, some decisions to be made. Uh, but I like a bull out here to win this, this bull show pretty handily. Uh, if you would, congratulate these exhibitors. It's been a lot of fun to evaluate this show. Well, the shorthorn side here for this division, uh, we got a pair of bulls out here for this division. That's little differences in types and kind. Uh, the young lady's bull here is one that's attractive from a profile standpoint. He doesn't maybe quite have the foot size, maybe the muscle shape is the one right behind him, but uh, a bull that checks a lot of the boxes for yearling growth and uh, carcass numbers when you get to analyzing the paperwork, uh, one that I really appreciate about that. The bull that won this second class, as we talked, in, talked to him in class just a minute ago, he maybe just gets a little straighter in that front end, maybe just gets a little spread in that chest for but still a bull that when we get him out here on the move, I really like him an awful lot. He's uh, got a lot of muscle shape, carries down through his top, uh, a real nice calf. For me today, this young man's going to be your champion bull, and I'm going to use the young lady to be your reserve. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Well, congratulations. Back over in the main ring, your champion full-blood bull coming out of Class 9, exhibited by Fancy Creek Farm and Prairie Cross, Sherman, Illinois, with FCF Redstone 06H and reserve champion coming out of Class 8. Congratulations to Ebersol Cattle Company of Kellerton, Iowa, with ECC Dream Dirt 201K. Again, congratulations to those exhibitors. And congratulations back over here in the Shorthorn Ring. Class 10, your junior bull calf champion coming out of Class 9, exhibited by Kane Agater with JSF Kane Broadway, 830 KET, and reserve champion will come out of Class 8. Bred known by Paint Valley Farms of Millersburg, Ohio, PVF Icon 50K. Now in the ring is Class 12, winner bull calves. Well, single entry over here on the shorthorn side, and a really nice bull that uh, could have withstood some competition. I like the way he ties together up in that front end an awful lot. Uh, he's one that uh, you like him on his feet and legs. He maybe gets a little softer in that pastern, but uh, again, we'll take one that's uh, that way a little more than one gets up on his toes. He, he maybe doesn't have as much muscle as some other bulls that we've seen out here, but he's going to be a fun one to compare to some other ones here in a little while. Well, congratulations, Class 12, first place. We'll go to Little Cedar Cattle Company, Delisle Farms, and Lehman Cattle Company with Little Cedar Currency, 2146. We'll now look to see Class 13, Senior Bull Calves. This will be the final class in this division.
Well, another uh, nice pair of bulls here, but uh, I think we got a bull that comes to the top relatively easy for me. Uh, this this bull here is really nice. I love his length of body. Uh, maybe takes away from his middle a little bit. He's tight in his sheath. Uh, I guess maybe if you wanted to nitpick him when he comes at you, he maybe gets just a little pigeon toed off that right front. But uh, I tell you what, that calf is really nice there. He's got a lot of muscle shape to him, but the, that extra length of body is what I really like about him. The young lady's bull here that's going to come out in second just gives up some depth of flank. Maybe quite, does not quite have the muscle shape when you get to analyze him. Right, really right there from his hooks to pins, he gives up some to the bull that we're starting the class with. But a really nice calf here to start this class off with. Well, congratulations. Back in the Shorthorn Ring results, class 13. First place was exhibited by John Allen of Saxonburg, Pennsylvania with Armstrong Ruger, 2066. Second place in that class went to Emory Robertson of San Marcos, Texas with 5R Outsiders Pride. We'll now bring those first and seconds in, select champion reserve in this division. A really nice pair of bulls out here for this uh, division championship. Uh, the young lady's bull that won the first uh, class in here is one that's really attractive. You really like him up through his front end. He maybe doesn't have quite the muscle shape as the one right behind, but he's one that's extremely sound when we get him right here on the move. Get right behind him, he maybe is not quite a stick, but uh, really pretty bull up through his front end. You like his body shape. Just maybe give him, spread him out a little bit and give him a little more muscle shape. The bull that won the second class, again, uh, you know, I said it earlier, that extra length of body is going to add a lot of pounds on to to his progeny, and I really appreciate that about him. He maybe gets a little wider right there in his chest for, but uh, that's just a really nice calf there uh, to win that class, and he's going to win your division, and the young lady's bull is going to be your reserve. Well, congratulations, your senior bull calf champion coming out of class 13, Armstrong Ruger 2066, bred known by John Allen of Saxonburg, Pennsylvania, and reserve champion will come out of class 12. Congratulations to Little Cedar Cattle Company, Delisle Farms, and Lehman Cattle Company with Little Cedar Currency 2146. We'll now look to start your next class. This will be class 17, late spring yearling bulls.
Well, in this class, we always got some differences in the size and performance uh, when you get to looking at them, but uh, I don't think that's the only thing that separates the two. I think the bull that we're going to win the class with is one that I think ties together just a little better right there in his shoulder area. He's maybe a little flatter than some other bulls we've seen out here, but he's another one that's uh, got a nice hip in him, really long body. Do you like the way he carries himself when he gets out here on the move? The young lady's bull that's going to come second is one that just gets a little weaker right there in his heart, a little coarser right there in the top of his shoulder. The neck doesn't tie into that shoulder quite as well. Look at him out here on the move. He wants to slope just a little bit from his hooks to pins. Uh, doesn't move off those hind two quite as well, but uh, nice pair of bulls. Well, congratulations in the Shorthorn Ring. Results out of your Intermediate Bull Division. Your champion will go to Dason Cash of Fay, Oklahoma with DC Impact. And reserve champion will go to back number 60404. Chosen select 1712, exhibited by Valentin Del Rio of Sunset, Texas. We're now going to bring in Class 20. These will be early spring yearling bulls. Well, and back over in the main ring, we're about ready to get started with your open Maine Anjou Bowl show. We'll start with Class 11, Maine Anjou Spring Bowl Cavs, born March to April of 2022. Well, as we start your main on Jew Bull show, I think a good single entry out here and a bull that's certainly good in terms of his movement when we ask him to go, a long-bodied, stout-made bull, good single entry. Congratulations to you. Well, congratulations over here in the main ring and a good way to start our main on Jew Bull show. Class 11, first place exhibited by Laramie Blakely of Oolaga, Oklahoma, with DRCC Kingsman ET. We'll now bring in Class 12. This will be Maine Anjou Spring Bull Cavs, born January to February of 2022.
another uh, nice class of bulls here. The bull that uh, I'm winning the class with is one that's uh, extremely sound on the move. I really appreciate that about him. Uh, you look at, down at his numbers, he's got some tremendous growth numbers and tremendous carcass numbers, and uh, you know he's a show bull, and that uh, sometimes don't always go together, but that one there is a pretty nice one to start this class with. Uh, he maybe is not the thickest one down low when you get right behind him. He maybe gives up some muscle shape down through his twist, but again, uh, he's really sound on the move, and I appreciate that about him. This bull here that's coming out in second, boy, when he's on the standstill, he's one you like an awful lot. Uh, we get him on the move, probably is where he gets a little maybe disappointing compared to the one we're starting the class with. You get right behind him and watch him walk, he gets maybe just a little bow-legged right behind there. But I think that comes with that extra muscle shape that he does have. Also, maybe that little bit of shoulder comes with that also. It's a little give and take there. I'd just like to make him just a little smoother right in that front end, make him just a little better right there from behind when I get to looking at him and following him down the ring. Uh, the, bulls, the bull that's rounding out the class, just a really nice calf here, really complete. He just got in with two really good bulls today. Well, congratulations in the Shorthorn Ring. Results of Class 20. First place, bred known by Kate's Farms, is CF Payweight XET. Second place in that class went to Lane Blankenship of Orlando, Oklahoma. In third place, exhibited by Pfizer Pulled Shorthorns and Dason Cash. We'll now bring in Class 21. These are junior yearling bulls. This will be your last class in our junior bull division. Again, uh, you know, i am uh, been talking a lot about soundness. I think, again, this is one that wins the class on soundness. I think uh, not so much on the move, but just from the ground up. I think this bull sets down on a really, really nice foot and leg. Maybe just has a little more bone structure for me today compared to the bull that's going to come out here in second. I'd like to maybe stretch him out through that front end. He gets a little compact and jammed up up there in his front end, but from shoulder back, that's a really good cap uh, uh, to win this class. Uh, the young man's bull that's going to come 
come out here and suck him. He too maybe just gets a little coarser right there in his shoulder, just not quite as stout from the ground up, but he's another one that when you get right behind him has a tremendous muscle shape, carries it down through his top and down through his twist. That's a nice pair of bulls here in this class. Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Ring. Results of Class 21. First place exhibited by Shrag and Nichols Show Cattle in Cornerstone Farms with SS Inferno 120ET. And second place in that class will go to Jungle's Shorthorn Farm in Catherine, North Dakota. We're now going to bring your first and seconds in. Our judge will select their champion reserve, Junior Bulls. Wow, what a uh, pair of bulls here on the top end of this class. And, and you know, I, I think when you come out here and you evaluate cattle, you know that there's always going to be give and take. But I don't know that I've, I've been in a pair of cattle uh, that I think are both so good yet so different in their, in their build and, and just the way that they come at us today. Yet I still think that they're both extremely high quality. And I think depending on what your cow herd base is and, and what you need to do, um, I think that these two bulls uh, can certainly do a lot of different things, and I think that these two bulls complement themselves, complement each other extremely well. For me, I'm going to use the bull here that stands directly in front of me. I just see as that one is just a shot more opened up, and I think that that one's more genuine when I get in right behind the cattle. I think he's bigger behind his blade. I think he's bolder in the way that he's constructed there in his hip and from his hooks to his pins. He's a shot wider skeleton in that regard, a big footed bull an athletic bull. I absolutely love the foot shape and just the, the extras that this bull gives you uh, because I, I, just, I think that that's an awfully, awfully nice bull here. You know, in comparison to the bull that stands directly behind him, you want to talk about the, the bull that's going to be second in here, just eccentric in his look and just a wild-looking creature, if you will, just to be that high tying on the top side of his skeleton, so elevated there about his head and neck. I think that the difference is is that bull's just a shot rawer when we study him there in his forerib, a shot rawer in the way that he, he transitions there. Uh, but two extremely good cattle on the top end of this class. Young lady brings us a nice bull here that's going to be third and, and unfortunately she runs into just a buzzsaw and then those two bulls that go directly ahead of her because this bull's long bodied, he's certainly sound in his structure, just not as powered up and unique as the two cattle that win this class. Congratulations to those exhibitors. Well, congratulations over here in the main ring. Results from Class 12. First place exhibited by Moore Cattle Company and Buck and Morton Cattle Company with BKMT Classified 12KET. Second place in that class will go to MCCF Kino ET exhibited by Candace Muir and Silvera Brothers. Third place in that class and congratulations goes to Sarah Rimple of Athens, Texas. We'll now look to see Class 13 Maine Anjou Winter Bull Calves born November to December of 2021. Just a single entry December bull and one that I think is extremely athletic when we ask him to travel, a long bodied, good spine bull, good on his feet and legs, really good single entry here. Congratulations to you. Well, congratulations back in the main ring, results of class 13. First place, we'll go to Lad Landgriff with Medill, Oklahoma with Lad Jump First, 120J. We'll now bring in Class 14 Main Anjou Spring Yearling Bulls, born March-April of 2021. 
Well, over here on the Shorthorn side, uh, the water's starting to get pretty deep. This is a nice pair of bulls. There's, uh, there's some differences in type and kind between these two. Uh, the bull that won the first class is one. Boy, he's really attractive from a profile standpoint, and uh, you get to analyze in the numbers if you, if you want to look at that and help uh, uh, determine how to breed your herd. This one here's got an awesome set of numbers. Uh, maybe if I changed him when I get right behind him, he's maybe not as muscular as the bull right behind him, but boy, he just ties together up in that front end so well and so attractive from this uh, view right here. The bull that's going to come out here in second, he is the massive one when you get right behind him down through that muscle shape up across that top. If you'd change him, I'd maybe he gets maybe just a little bunched up right there in his front end, but uh, that's taken away from a really nice bull. Uh, and in the seconds, the bull that was second in the first class is one that, boy, standing still and he gets parked. I like him an awful lot. He maybe just gets a little bow-legged right behind when we get to looking at him. Maybe just not quite as good right there in that front end, uh, but a nice calf. And the bull that was second in the second class is one that has a tremendous muscle shape. He just gives up some bone and foot structure uh, or uh, some foot and some bone structure compared to the ones right in front of him. For me today, I'm going to use the young lady's bull here to be your champion and the young man right behind to be reserved. Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Ring, your junior champion bull coming out of Class 20. Congratulations to Kate's Farms with CF Payweight XCT and reserve champion in that division going to Shrag and Nickel Show Cattle and Cornerstone Farms with SS Inferno 120 ET. We'll now bring in your final class of Shorthorn Bulls. This will be senior yearling bulls. Once again, I think another really good class of bulls here and an easy winner for me. I like this bull a good bit. You talk about a bull that's moderate in his frame and, and bold in the way that he's constructed and has some true width and power in him, yet gets out and travels really well. I think this bull's really attractive from a balance standpoint and, and transitions and flows very, very well. I think that's an awfully nice bull to win this particular class. Uh, the, the bigger frame bull is the one that's going to come next and certainly appreciate about that about him because he has that extra s extension and growth and scale. He's probably just a little harsher in the way that he comes at us today from a presentation standpoint and a flesh standpoint, but a really sound functional bull to go ahead and go second in this class. Well, congratulations in the main ring, class 14. First place will go to K&A Jester 50JET, exhibited by List Livestock of Algonia, Iowa. Second place in that class, and congratulations to Austin Dunn of Terrell, Texas, with RRRC 283J. We'll now bring in your final class of May Nanju Bulls. This will be class 15, senior bulls born September to December of 2020. Well, on the Shorthorn side, just a single entry here and a bull that uh, could have withstood a lot of competition when he gets out here and gets parked. Uh, he's one that's really nice. He's extremely long-sided. He's got a nice hip structure, nice foot. Maybe clean him up right there in his sheath. And uh, uh, what a great sight to see this young man showing this bull. Let's give him a round of applause. This is a really nice bull. Well, congratulations back in the Shorthorn Ring. Your senior champion bull coming out of class 24. Congratulations, Craig Fuller with FF Pursuit 6H. At this time, we're going to bring in those division champion and reserves, and our judge will select his grand and reserve grand champion, Shorthorn Bull. Well, I think an exceptional single entry here, a fall two-year-old bull, and, and one that I compliment, uh, like I said the other day, not always a number guy, but this, this bull's phenomenal on paper. Uh, you know, just when you compare him to the breed averages, I think that that bull is exceptional in that regard. A very attractive, well-balanced bull, one that's very neat in his head and neck. He's long there. He's smooth-shouldered, uh, really nice when you study him there, and the design to his hip and his hind leg, I think a high-quality single entry. Bull. And congratulations over here in ring two. Results of your final class of Maine Anju Bulls. First place exhibited by Rachel Ann Carlson of Plattsburgh, Missouri with RRRC Prince Money 817H. 
Well, over here in ring two, we're also going to go into your grand drive of our main Anjou Bowls. We'll bring in all of those first and seconds out of each of our classes, and our judge will select his champion reserve, main Anjou Bowl.
Well, absolutely. What a tremendous set of main on Jew bulls that come out here and 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 probably, you know, like like the full blood show even I'm a little bit blown away just by the depth and the quality that we found uh all the way out here. I, I think there's there's three or four bull three or four bulls out here that make a uh, real shot at contention here. And, and I think that these cattle are different, and I think that there's good and there's tremendous value in, in some of these bulls out here, depending on where you want to lie and where you want to put your priorities. I think that you can do a lot of different things. And, and guys, I think that that's so important when we talk about a breed that's on the rise and a breed that, uh, that a lot of us from the outside have shown a lot of interest in because I, I like I said I think there's three or four bulls out here that a guy can latch on to and not only use to win a show but then take them back and use them in your program and study them and, and mate them up on the on the different cows that you have and, and be very happy and and get some cattle uh, in, in a show ring setting uh, that I think are, are the ones that can generate and make the next generation better. I just, uh, to talk about them briefly, uh, the bull that came out of the, the first class, just tremendous in terms of growth and performance, a uh, bull that's stout in terms of his muscle and his bone work, one that's still attractive to me. He's maybe a little harsher than a few of the bulls that come out here, but still a high, high quality individual that I think uh, certainly needs to be uh, commemorated for that. The bull that comes out of that second class, we talked about just how good that pair of bulls was, and, and you know, they're, they're so different in their type and kind, but still both high, high quality, useful bulls, depending on where you want it to be. I love how genuine this bull is. I love just that bull's opened up in terms of behind his shoulder, he's soft in his forerib, he's opened up in terms of his hip, and bold and square in that regard. Big foot, incredible foot on this bull. I like the way that he travels about the ring, and I think his foot quality is one of his, his advantages out here in this particular lineup. The fall bull comes, comes at us a little leaner, and I'm okay with that, but that's an athletic, long-bodied, high, high-quality bull to represent that division. The uh, spring yearling bull, I tell you, I, uh, there's things that I really like about this bull. I think that he's moderate. I think he's stout. I think he's as shapely as anything out here when we study him from a muscle and a dimension standpoint. I think he's soft in the way that he's made. I think he's athletic in the way he goes. To be honest, there's a concern that I have just uh, on this bull's outside toe, but I think that that bull is awfully, awfully good and so attractive and so neat. He's one of the bulls that I think certainly deserves to be in contention in this lineup. We talked about this big senior bull, uh, the, the two-year-old fall bull, and one is just so smooth, and, and he's so attractive there about his head and neck, and, and maybe even at times you want to call him a little bit, uh, you know, not as bully and manu masculine in his feature, uh, but I think that there's a place for that bull because he's so smooth in his shoulder. I think he's so smooth in his transitions. He's good when we study him on, on the move, especially off of his hind end. At times I want him to reach just a bit more out of his front end, uh, but I think an awfully, awfully good bull. He's in great shape and good rig. We commented just how good that bull is on paper. Guys, I think this lineup of bulls is absolutely incredible. If you would, put your hands together and congratulate the Maine on Geo breed. Well, over here on the Shorthorn side, uh, it's been a pleasure of mine. And, you know, you don't know uh, sometimes what to expect, but... Uh, well, I tell you what, this is just overwhelming. This is just an unbelievable set of bulls when you get them out here for this championship lineup. There's, uh, there's a lot of good ones right here. And uh, that being said, let's, uh, let's give the exhibitors a big round of applause. You know, the young calf down here that won the first class, uh, he, may be the, he may be the soundest one out here, but, you know, it's hard to go out there and use a calf, but they're going to be, they're going to have a lot of fun with that one on down the road there. He's tremendous muscle shape, sets down on a really good foot and leg, ties together really nice in that front end. The next bull is one that I like an awful lot. I love the way that front end ties together. I think that shoulder and uh, neck all come out there just right for me. Uh, I guess if you want to get really picky about the one that's pretty good, maybe rolls over just a little bit uh, on those hind feet. Uh, but again, that's, uh, that's getting picky about a pretty good bull right there. That's a, that's a really nice one to win that division. The next young man's bull that won the next division is one that's just not as stout from the ground up. He maybe isn't quite as attractive right there in his hip. I'd give him just a little more foot and leg for me today to compete with some of the other ones. 
The next bull in the lineup, uh, if he was a little better in that front end, he'd win this thing hands down. I love that extra length of body he's got. I love his hip structure. He just gets a little straighter on that front end at times, but man, is he extremely long-sided. I just, like I said, he's going to add some pounds onto his progeny. He's really clean sheath, but he just gets to want to tip over on that front end at times on, uh, and just gets a little straighter. The next bull that won the next division wasn't quite as much competition in that one. He gives up some muscle and some uh, shape to him compared to the other ones, but from a profile standpoint, that's a nice calf. The big bull that won the next division is one that, uh, you know, if you want to use some numbers and change your herd, that's one that when you looked at him on paper just has a tremendous set of numbers, uh, and you really appreciate that about him. Sets down on a tremendous foot and leg, extremely long-sided, attractive up through his front end. As we talked, we'd maybe give him just a little more muscle down low, but uh, again, with that extra length of body, that's a nice bull. The bull that won the last division <coughs> is one when he gets parked, you like him an awful lot. He maybe is not quite as attractive on the move as some of the other bulls, but that's a nice calf. Again, let's give him one more round of applause. It's been my pleasure, and I'll go out here and I'll select your champions. Well, congratulations back over in the main Anjou ring. Congratulations to your main Anjou champion bull. Exhibited by Moore Cattle Company and Buck and Morton Cattle Company with BKMT classified 12 KET. And reserve champion came out of class 12. List Livestock with K&A Jester 50 JET. The bull that's pulling in here that was uh, reserve in that division, he's another one uh, from his shoulder back. He's, uh, he'd be one of the ones to really compete. He just maybe just gets a little jammed up in that front end for me. Uh, maybe just a little more compact all over, but uh, again, tremendous hip, tremendous foot. Uh, just a really nice calf here. Uh, that being said, I'll go out here and I'll select your reserve. Well, congratulations over here in ring one. Your grand champion shorthorn bull here at the Cattlemen's Congress goes to Kate's Farms of Modoc, Indiana with CF Payweight XCT. And congratulations, your reserve grand champion shorthorn bull. Coming out of class five, exhibited by Armstrong Farms, Saxonburg, Pennsylvania with BFS LCCC AFLC, direct deposit 2254 ET. Congratulations to our Shorthorn Bull exhibitors. Once again, congratulations to our Champion Reserve and your reserve owned with Armstrong Farms, Bullum Family Shorthorns, and Little Caesar Cattle Company. We are going to head to the backdrop over here in the Shorthorn Ring, and we'll get started back up in just a moment with your Shorthorn Female Show.
Well, I definitely think we have two bulls that contrast quite a bit in their type and kind and both offer some quality and some differences out here. And just when you study them, uh, the calf that wins this class, he's the bigger calf, the higher performing calf, if you will. I think both these cattle are comparable in terms of their figures when we look at them on paper. I probably like this calf just a shot better on the move than I do on the standstill because there's at times I think that, well, I, I think he could be plenty upright there in his knee and maybe a little bit rigid out of his hock, but when we ask him to go, he actually reaches and, and goes with some ease and some flexibility. I think there's just a shot more grow and future in this particular calf, a more size and scale, and that's his decisive advantage and why I think he wins this class. Uh, if you like him a little bit more moderate and round and, and huge bellied, then maybe the calf in second fits your bit just a little bit more. I don't think that that calf's any, too more, any more coordinated when we ask him to go off of his hind two. Uh, for me, he probably just gives me a little bit of a quick look, uh, but two really nice bulls to start off your main Angus division. Well, congratulations over here in the main Angus ring. Your first class in our main Angus bull show. First place goes to MKL Big Spender 63KET. And second place and congratulations to Madison K. Loschke of Kingsdown, Kansas. I think like we've said multiple times today, we have a class of bulls that contrast quite a bit in their type and kind, and I don't think it's probably any more evident than it is right now, and, and without a doubt, the bull that stands in second is the striking, eye-appealed, well-balanced, highly presented bull out here, but I think when we just study the cattle and we talk about genuine beef bull shape and, and, and doability, I think that this bull that wins this class does that very well. I, he's just more opened up from a total body dimension 
position standpoint. He's bolder uh, there in his rib shape. He's stouter in terms of muscle and feature. Uh, I think just a really nice bull uh, to lead off this particular class. Yeah, he's not as attractive and neat as the bull that comes in directly behind him. And, and I think that that's where that bull has tremendous merit. I think his build is really good. I think his flex and his range of motion is very good. For me, I just need to open that bull up from a muscle standpoint, blow him apart there in, in his rib shape and design there, and just give him more total body gauge and width, but a good class of bulls in the main Angus show. Well, congratulations in Class 17, first place. We'll go to Brett Jones of Ardmore, Oklahoma, with JFRMS Liston 5JET. And second place exhibited by Jason Minner of Atkinson, Illinois. We'll now bring those first and seconds in and select a Grand Reserve in our main Angus Bull Show. Well, as we conclude your main Angus division, put your hands together and congratulate these exhibitors. Just four bulls to represent your main Angus breed, but I think all four of these bulls are extremely nice in their own regard. I think probably have four different bulls standing out here, and I think that's okay. Uh, you know, like I said earlier in the, in the high main show, uh, take figure it out which ones you want to use and which ones work on your cows. Uh, I think that there's, uh, there's quality and, and some good to be used in all of them. You know, I, I do. I, like I said, just in class, I think that the, the two bigger bulls contrast quite a bit in their type and kind. Uh, in fact, they're pretty night and day for me, but I do. I think that's the best two bulls that come out here today. The bulls out of your last class will be champion in reserve. Well, congratulations, your grand champion, Maine Angus Bull, here at the Cattlemen's Congress, coming out of Class 17, Brett Jones of Ardmore, Oklahoma, with JFRMS listing 5JET, and reserve champion will also come out of that same class, Men Moving Forward 180 JET, exhibited by Jason Minnert of Atkinson, Illinois. We'll now look to get started with your Maintainer Bull Show. We'll be looking for Class 18 Maintainer Spring Bull Calves, born March to April of 2022.
Well, at this time, over here in the Shorthorn Ring, we're going to get started with your female show. First class in the ring will be class one, late spring heifer calves. I think a pretty logical place for me to start with the blaze face bull and one that's just certainly overwhelming in terms of pounds and performance and maturity in this particular class. He's not perfect in terms of his structure, but it's hard to just deny the overall bull shape and quality uh, that he has in comparison to this calf that's going to go second. I actually think that the calf that does go second has an advantage in length of body and length of motion and, and reach of stride. Simply just need to power him up, give him a little bit more time on feed and maturity to be more competitive. Congratulations to those two people. Well, congratulations over here in ring two. We have gotten started with your maintainer bull show. Class 18, first place will go to FFF, made to believe, 2219, exhibited by Camden Flippo of Rush Springs, Oklahoma. And second place in that class, exhibited by Ethan Wire of Great Bend, Kansas. We're now bringing class 19. These will be maintainer spring bull calves, born January to February of 2022. Well, as we start the Shorthorn Show over here, uh, I think we got a easy class winner here for me. Uh, this calf here is uh, excels as far as growth numbers, and when you get to looking at it, and really nice as far as her overall makeup. Big square hip, big belly, really fresh up through that front end. Just not a lot of holes in this heifer. I think this is one that's uh, going to go on and make a nice show heifer. The young man's heifer here that's going to come out in second. She's the most flexible when we get her out here on the move. She just gets a little plainer in that front end. Uh, let's just be careful not to get her too overconditioned, okay, so we can keep her going right along and keep her fresh. She's maybe got a little more flesh on her than she probably needs for a calf this age, but that's one that's extremely sound when we get her out here on the move. Uh, the heifer that's going to round out the class, I'm sure this is probably her first show. She's a little bit like the one that uh, wins the class as far as her front end. She gets maybe just a little coarser right there at the bottom of her shoulder. I need to see her flex off that front leg. She's wanting to fight that halter a, a little bit for, uh, today, and I think, uh, like I said, it's probably her first show. She's just not wanting to relax and get out there and lead. Uh, I think with time, that one there is going to be a pretty nice one also. Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Ring, Class 1, first place, exhibited by Morgan Vonder of Mineral Point, Wisconsin, with GCC TRN, Dream Only 28. Second place in that class, exhibited by Tristan Hobaugh of Blackwell, Oklahoma. And third place, we'll go to Jessica Turnpaw of Winnet, Oklahoma. We're now bringing Class 2. These will be late spring heifer calves. Well, once again, I think two really nice bulls out here uh, in this uh, February-January class, and, and two bulls, once again, that contrast quite a bit just in their type and kind, and I think that there's certainly some give and take when you study the cattle from a muscle standpoint, uh, but I still, I land on this bull here that stands directly in front of me, tremendous in his figures there on paper, certainly commend him for that, but he's the bull that's just so smooth in the way that he transitions there from his shoulder to his forerib, 
championship. Uh, one that's just very attractive in the hip to it, in his hip and his hind leg. I think his angles are very good. You know, I did. At, at first, I questioned, is that bull just opened up enough for me in terms of muscle and skeletal width? Uh, but I think that his balance works very well in the way that that bull ties in. And in particular, uh, when we study the two cattle out of the hip and the way that they're uh, built there from hooks to pens, I think that that's a big advantage. Couple that with his good figures on paper. Uh, without a doubt, the bull that's going to go second is the stouter, wider gauged, heavier muscled bull. Uh, but with that, he's just a little bit rawer in his design, maybe a little bit bolder in his shoulder, uh, a little bit more tight there in his forerib, but a stout, heavy muscled bull big structured bull. Uh, congratulations to those two young people. Well, congratulations over here in the maintainer ring. Results of class 19. First place went to CEBC. Forever in style exhibited by Courtney Bachman of Weeping Water, Nebraska. In second place in that class, we'll go to DRCC Kojak ET, exhibited by Laramie Blakely of Ulaga, Oklahoma. We'll now bring in class 20 maintainer winner bull calves born November to December of 2021. Well, nice uh, class of June heifers here, and uh, this heifer we're starting the class with, I like an awful lot. I like the way her front end all ties together. She's really good from that shoulder back, sets down on a nice foot and leg, has a nice swoop to her belly. I, I like this heifer an awful lot. I guess maybe if you wanted to change her, she's maybe not quite as feminine right there, top her crest, but uh, that's a pretty nice heifer to win this class. So, the young man's heifer that's going to come out here in second, just not quite as attractive from the ground up. Probably gives up just a little bit of flank when you get to analyze her, especially when you get right behind her. She doesn't have quite the spring of rib that the heifer that we're starting the class with. Well, I think a uh, November bull that comes out here is a single entry to us and one that I like a good bit in terms of just his flexibility and his range of motion. I think that bull's very good in that regard. You know, maybe is he not just tied up perfectly there behind his shoulder? No, but I think that uh, kind of lends to that bull's extra flexibility and, and certainly enough power and ruggedness and masculinity in that bull. I think a very good single entry. Congratulations to you. Well, congratulations over here in the maintainer ring. First place in class 20 will go to Langford's Main 1659 JET, exhibited by Cash Langford of Okmulgee, Oklahoma. We'll now look to bring in class 21 maintainer fall bull calves, born September to October of 2021. Back over in the shorthorn ring, results from class 2 late spring heifer calves. First place exhibited by Adeline Vaughn of Maxwell, Iowa, with AFVF Dream Lady. 204 ET in second place in that class exhibited by Wesley Stone with Reba 22. Now in the ring is class three late spring heifer calves. Another good single entry fall bull in October, late October born bull here. And, and ideally, I'd probably like to give this bull a shot more performance and growth. Uh, would just when we study him from a, a maturity pattern or where I think that, uh, you know, a, a 14, 15 month old bull should be at this stage of the ball game. But then when you study him on paper, he tells you that genetically he's got the growth. So uh, I do. I think that this is a nice calf in terms of his structure. I think he's long bodied. I think he's attractive in the way that his angles work on the lower end of his skeleton. Good single entry. Congratulations once again to you. Well, congratulations in class 21. First place goes to MMAS Brooktown 259J, exhibited by Mally Monty of Arma, Kansas. We'll now bring in your final class of maintainer bulls. This will be class 22 maintainer spring yearling bulls, born March to April of 2021.
real good song here that uh, I'm going to interrupt to talk about these uh, maintainer bulls. And an easy class winner for me, one that uh, I think is just in terms of balance and softness and, and doability, I think that that's his overwhelming decisive advantage in this class. A uh, bull that you like in terms of his total body dimension, a moderate frame bull, easy flush and highly presented to us today. A uh, nice bull to here to lead this particular class off. The black and white bull, I think, certainly has an advantage when you talk about length of body and scale and growth. Uh, but for me, we just need to make that that bull sure off of either side of his skeleton, give him a shot more authority there when we ask him to go off of his hind leg. Congratulations to those people. This class of May heifers, uh, there's some give and take here on this top pair. Uh, for me, I'm going to go with the heifer that I think is just a little better in her hawk structure uh, when you get to looking at her. I like her up through her front end. She's wanting to fight the holder pretty bad today. Uh, both these heifers are, but uh, this heifer, I like the way she ties in up through that front end. I like her belly shape. I think just on soundness is where she beats the heifer that's going to come out here in second. This heifer in second, she is uh, wide when you get right behind her with that. She even gets just a little more shoulder. She just gets a little straighter in that hock. I just need to give her just a little more flex when I get around here on the movement. She maybe wants to tip over on that front end ever so slightly too when you get to looking at her. Uh, the young lady's heifer that's going to come out here in third is one that has an extremely nice front end. You like her belly shape. She just gets a little weaker right there and her hooks depends. Wants to droop when we get her out here on the move. I just like to freshen her up when we get to analyzing her when we get her out here on the move and make her just a little more structurally sound. Well, congratulations back over here in the maintainer ring. Results of that last class. First place exhibited by Silveras Brothers of Fireball, California with J-A-B-R-S-I-L, Daddy's Home 115J. And second place in that class exhibited by Samantha Newman. Currently in the main ring, we are going to select your grand and reserve grand champion, Maintainer Bulls. Back over to the Shorthorn ring. Results of class three, late spring heifer calves. First place exhibited by Dixon Fry of Independence, Iowa with Nullswood Myrtle Bow K52. Second place in that class exhibited by Barrett Griffin. Third place will go to Jocelyn Phelps. Now in ring one is class four, late spring heifer calves.
Well, as I wrap up my uh, final bull show of today and uh, take a little break here and get ready for your high main females, uh, I think another tremendous lineup of cattle that come out here. And uh, I think, uh, like I've talked about in a lot of these bulls today, uh, I think that there's there's bulls that you can come out here all the way throughout this lineup and grab and, and utilize inside of your herds and, and make them work. And, and I think that's a true testament to, to how far this breed is coming and, and, and how much they're on the rise and, and the depth and, and the, uh, the different uses and usefulness that we have in these main genetics. Uh, so my hat's off to you breeders and the, the people exhibiting these cattle because I do. I think there's some, some good uses in, in so several of these bulls out here. For me, it does. It comes down to two bulls, and, I, and once again, I know that I probably sound like a broken record uh, of cattle that contrast quite a bit in their type and kind, and, and I'm a firm believer, believer that not all cattle have to fit exactly alike. Uh, I just like to use the ones that I think are the best or the ones that have uh, the most value to me. It's the two, that the, the baldy bull that comes out of that fall class. Uh, I like that one a good bit in just terms of his structure how up-headed and attractive he is, uh, just very good in the angle to his shoulder, the slope to his knee, the added reach that he gives you when you ask him to go. I think that's uh, an advantage that that bull probably has in the lineup versus some of the other ones. Compared to the other bull that I'm going to talk about in a minute, he's probably not just hooked up as true right behind his shoulder. He's probably not just as bold and, in, and, and good in the transition from his shoulder to his forerib but an awfully, awfully nice calf, and I, I think a great deal of that particular individual. Uh, the other bull that I think that's out here is uh, the bull that comes out of the last class, and, and sure, he's probably a bit moderate for me, uh, but I think there's a lot of good in this, in this animal. I think he's so attractive uh, there about his head and his neck, yet still masculine enough for me, uh, one that looks like a bull very smooth when we just study him uh, from a profile standpoint. When we get on the three-quarter, I think everything transitions very well. Is he just as sound and as flexible as the, the baldy bull that we talked about? I don't know. I kind of wish this bull would catch a gear every once in a while in terms of motion, uh, but I think that's two awfully, awfully good individuals. I'll show you how I like to line them out. Congratulations to these main on you exhibitors. It's been an outstanding uh, show that we've had this morning. Well, congratulations, Grand Champion Maintainer Bull coming out of Class 22. J-A-B-R-S-I-L, Daddy's Home, 115J, exhibited by Silveris Brothers of Fireball, California. And congratulations, your reserve champion comes out of Class 20, Lankford's Main, 1659, J-E-T, exhibited by Cash Lankford of Okmulgee, Oklahoma. We'll look to get started over here in ring two in just a couple minutes with your junior Main Anjou female show.
Well, over here in ring two, we are getting started with your junior main on Jew female show. We'd like to welcome back to the ring our judge, Mr. Scott Beyer of Ringo, Wisconsin. Well, what a nice class of heifers from top to bottom here. Uh, this is, uh, is going to be a fun day if all the classes keep looking like this. Uh, uh, like I said, all the way to the bottom. This is a tremendous set of heifers. Uh, I switched these around here kind of at the end, probably just soundness and uh, freshness. Uh, the heifer that's going to win the class is one that gets around and moves really free and easy. Uh, when she first came out, I just thought maybe she wasn't... Uh, quite as thick right behind there, maybe just a little narrower from her hooks to pins, but she is really green, and I think that's the advantage that she has. She's probably a little fresher in her overall makeup compared to the next two. Uh, the next two maybe just a little quicker in their maturity pattern, uh, maybe carrying a little more condition. I'd like to see for heifers at this young age. Uh, the heifer that uh, comes out here in seconds, maybe not one that just gives you a big wow factor when she comes out here, but boy, I tell you what, we get her on the move, she's really sound. She sits down on a tremendous foot and leg, has a lot of extension up through her front end. I think one that's uh, going to go on and, and be really nice. I'd like to maybe make her just a little more feminine up through that head for me. Uh, the heifer in third here, this is one that's kind of the problem for me. Boy, this is the kind of body shape that I uh, absolutely love on one. She's got that deep rib. Uh, I like her an awful lot, but uh, I just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that it's real and not uh, conditioned, but she's plenty conditioned for one this age. I think she's one that's uh, going to make a nice cow, but I think that's one they're going to have to watch and make sure they don't get her too fat uh, too soon, but she's carrying a lot more condition than she probably needs for a heifer this age. 
Uh, the next heifer coming out is one that I like an awful lot. I uh, like that extension up through her front end. I like her feminine any up through her head. She's one that just gets a little coarser right there, top of her shoulder and right there in her lower shoulder. But she's another one. I love her body shape. I like her freshness and her look. She's got a nice uh, swoop to her belly and one that I like an awful lot. I just like to change her in that shoulder. This next heifer here is the one that's the problem for me. I think this one here, her best days are going to be ahead of her. This one here is a little greener in her overall makeup. She shows that when you get right behind her, maybe not carrying it down her flank, maybe not quite as stout from the ground up, but uh, this heifer, as she goes out and keeps on feeding, I think that's going to make a nice cow. The next two heifers are two that's uh, plenty, plenty on the big side for me uh, for this age, but uh, not taking anything away from them. They're both really nice heifers. The young man's heifer that's coming out right now is another one that's extremely sound when we get her on the move. She may be just a little narrower, doesn't have quite the spring of rib when I get right behind her. The young man's heifer that's rounding out the class, she's one that just gets a little stiffer in that hawk when we get her out here on the move. Maybe just gets a little straighter in that hind leg for me. Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Ring. We have the results from Class 4. First place exhibited by Miller Smith of Pendleton, Indiana, with CF Mona Lisa, 2101 UHXCT. Second place in that class exhibited by Abilene Sullivan of Lawton, Oklahoma. Third place exhibited by Caitlin Berg of Osage, Iowa. Fourth place. We'll go to Morgan Brooks with SFF Roses Are Red. Fifth place in that class exhibited by Josie Heater of Raymond, Kansas. Sixth place went to Dason Cash of Fay, Oklahoma. And seventh place and congratulations to Zach Johnson of Chickasha, Oklahoma. We'll now bring those first and seconds in. Our judge will select his champion reserve here in your late spring heifer calf division. Again, what a nice uh, division of heifers here. Uh, uh, like I said, this is going to be a fun day if they all keep coming looking like this. Uh, for me, it's pretty easy in this division uh, for your champion reserve. I think we got some heifers up here at the front that their best days are still ahead of them. Uh, uh, but today, I think the young man's heifer in the cowboy hat, I thought that pair was extremely close. The young lady will be your reserve. Well, congratulations in that division, your late spring heifer calf. Coming out of class four, congratulations, Miller Smith of Pendleton, Indiana, with CF Mona Lisa, 2101 UHXCT, and reserve champion in that division. Coming out of the same class, Abilene Sullivan of Lawton, Oklahoma, with CCBF Crystal Dream 15 Gay ET. We'll now look to see class seven early spring heifer calves.
Well, what a way, what a way to start here in our uh, high main show on this side and these females. This whole class is a really good class all the way through. I mean, the quality is all the way down to the end. There's a lot of good, useful parts in all these females all the way throughout this class. We get on the top end here, and there's some give and take in these top four. And, and again, I, I'm, I'm going to say I'm not going to pick them exactly the same. I'm just going to go with what, as far as structure and the way they're made from the ground up and how they can move and handle themselves and bounce together and tie in together. Uh, that, that's what's going to sort it for me. So I'm not really worried about picking pairs and matching up cattle. cattle. I'm just matching up what I think the good qualities are in each of these cattle and, and bring them to the top. This heifer that starts the class, again, boy, what a, just a striking view. She's so balanced and so solid, uh, just ties in from that neck into that shoulder and fore rib down through that lower rib cage. A female, again, her biggest advantage, I think this one just gets out and motors. She is super sound at the ground, covers her track, and gets out and goes. You know, for this age, is she pushing the envelope a little bit as far as size and maturity and condition for me? Yes, I, I guess I'd like to see her tone down just a little bit more. And I guess that's what I appreciate about the next two heifers that come next. I really like this heifer in second. Very exquisite made through that first one third. Long spine, level top. She transitions very well. Uh, I love the tightness to her chest floor and then starts in that fore rib and explodes out into that rib cage. Uh, just a lot of internal dimension in this female. You know, she maybe gives up some of that power and mass compared to our class winner, but again, you project this one down the road. I think she's in the right shape, the right condition. Certainly going to give that one a run for her money down the road as she matures out. I really appreciate that about her. The young lady's heifer that comes next, again, probably the greenest heifer in the class, but if you analyze her as far as structure and foot size and flexibility and the way her knee sets back into her, the way she uses that hock when she gets out and travels, you know, I'm going I'm to be okay with using one that's a little bit greener because I think everything's there. She has the right shape to that barrel. She has the right shape to the lower portion of that rib cage. She's as far as, as, far as maturity goes uh, compared to some of the heifers in this class, but again, Again, I think everything there is there, and the structure is good enough. She's just going to go on and go further. Young man's heifer and fourth. This is one I struggled with. I love the power and the mass in this one. Similar to our uh, power and mass of our class winner, to me, she gets a little bit shorter spine. She doesn't tie in quite behind that shoulder into that spine quite as good. She doesn't tie in quite as good from that hip out to that pin, pin set. Set her in motion. I'd like to free her up just a touch. And again, maybe it's just fighting the halter here today just a little bit. But again, that's a real high-quality one there and fourth as well. I love the overall maternal look and the skull shape in this heifer that comes next. Really long muzzled. I like the way the eye socket sets. Very feminine made and feminine featured. Nice maternal look. She gives up some foot size. She gives up some bone work and structure work as she gets out and goes. A really level topped, long spine type of female. I love the length from hooks to pins in this female as well. When you analyze her, it doesn't quite match up to her front end. She gets a little bit shorter coupled for me up through that first one third. I'd like to stretch her out just a touch and, and get her to free up and change the angle of that move and flexibility in that hock and that pastern just a bit more. A real nice heifer here, the young man in the cowboy hat has. Again, just a nice, good, solid type of female. Again, one that just gets a little plainer looking for me through that first one third, a little bit more common looking. But again, everything's there. It just doesn't have the bells and whistles, but again, a very nice female. Young lady that rounds off the class, again, probably the youngest heifer in the class, and you can see that as far as maturity pattern, but very feminine. I love the way the neck comes out the top side of that blade. She's really true down in their underline. We set this one in motion. It gets a little bit tighter in that spine. I'd like to relax that just a touch uh, as she gets into that loin junction into that hip. But again, an outstanding class to start off our high main show. Well, over here on the shorthorn side, uh, i got a heifer that I thought come to the top of this class relatively easy for me. I think she does so uh, from the ground up and on as far as her hip structure. She's big square hip, big footed, big bone. I like that about her. I like the way her front end comes out just a little better than this heifer that's going to come out here in second. Just a nice heifer to start this class. This heifer in second is one that's really attractive when he gets her stopped and parked. She maybe just slopes a little bit ever so slightly from those hooks to pins. She just gives up some foot and bone to the heifer that we're starting the class with. Uh, the young lady's heifer that's going to come out here in third is one that's just a little smaller bone, smaller footed. She's fighting the halter pretty good today. Makes her look a little less attractive out here on the move. She gets a little shorter and choppier in her stride when we get her out here on the move. But if that heifer ever relaxes and uh, uh, gets filled in, I think that's going to be one that's going to make a nice cow. The heifer that's rounding out the class, she just gives up some belly shape for me today. Just not quite as deep in that flank. Maybe not straight in her lines, gets a little weaker in that top, not as square from her hooks to pins, but uh, that's a nice class of heifers there.
Well, congratulations. Back over in the main Anju ring. Results out of class 23. First place will go to TSSC Summer Bell 2110 KET. Exhibited by Carter Cornegie of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Second place in that class was exhibited by Kennedy Lockhart for Gibson, Oklahoma. Third place exhibited by Hadley Geiger of Blue Ridge, Texas. Fourth place exhibited by Tyler Miller of Armington, Illinois. Fifth place in that class went to Emma McLean of Stillwater, Oklahoma. Sixth place exhibited by Henley Hassenbeck of Elgin, Oklahoma. Seventh place will go to Barrett Howe of Lyons, Texas. And eighth place in that class, and congratulations to Lillian Christian of Purcell, Oklahoma. Now in ring two, we have class 24, Main on Jews, Spring Heifer Calves, born April of 2022. Back in the Shorthorn ring, results from class seven. First place exhibited by McKinley Evans of Lorenzo, Texas, with SN Chasing Dreams 229 ET. Second place went to Mark Inskeep of Lafayette, Indiana, with CF Crystal Lady 290 URX. Third place in that class, exhibited by Lauren Berg of Osage, Iowa. In fourth place, went to Caitlin Moffitt of Indianola, Iowa. Now in ring one, we have class eight, early spring heifer calves.
real nice class of females here as well. And again, we get down to these uh, top four again, and there's some give and take as far as maturity pattern and condition. And, and I'll be the first to admit, and, and if you're going to hear me say this again, you know, I'm, I'm not one of those guys that can sit out here and give you a bunch of terms just the cow guy in me and how we raise cattle at home. You know, these two females, you know, they're, they're plenty conditioned right now. Um, that, that's enough for me. Uh, but again, these cattle look good and they're made right and they, and they put a lot of good things together. The young ladies heifer that I started off the class with, again, I think as far as structure and balance, she's the one that handles herself and stays within side of her skeletal means better than the, the heifer behind her. You know, she's not as long fronted, she's not as long spined. Uh, but again, everything ties together. It comes out of the top side of that blade, nice soft swoop to that rib cage. I love the transition behind that, fore, behind that shoulder blade into that fore rib, out through that hip. Again, a good foot, good bone underneath her. And like when she gets out in the motion, you know, she can get out and cover that track and handles herself very, very easily. Young man's heifer that's in second. This is a big powerhouse type female. You know, she's kind of pushing the envelope for me as far as maturity pattern. Uh, but again, boy, she's made good on the stand. She puts an exquisite look, very feminine up through that first one-third, just blows into a big t uh, maternal uh, rib cage in this female. You know, long and square. She's, she's definitely longer spine than our class winner. But with that length of body and the power and mass that she has, to me, she gets a little bit shorter coupled off that front end. I'd like to take that uh, point of that shoulder and bring that out just a touch. She gets a little bit narrow based on the move on the outside hoof for me. Two heifers coming next are two of the greener made type of females, and I appreciate that about them. I think these are good functional type of cattle, well-designed type of females. You know, they give up some of that shape and, and maturity look compared to our two class winners, but again, I think this heifer has enough shape to that lower rib cage. You can see this growth pattern in this female. She's long and extended, very attractive from the side. Really nice female. It just gives up some of the power compared to the two ahead of her. Young man's heifer here next, kind of the same thing. Uh, this female, though, when she gets out on the move, again, I like to free up that pasture and free up that hock just a touch. Gets a little bit tighter in that spine right behind that top of that shoulder blade there. I like to relax her down her top just a touch when she gets out on the move. Big, powerful type of female here coming next, young lady has. You love the added bone and mass and structure. To me, she gets plainer in that jawline down into that chest. Again, I like to change the angle to her shoulder just a touch, set that knee back in her just a bit more, get her to get out and go. Again, I like to tone her down as far as maturity pattern uh, as this female progresses down the road. Young man's heifer here, again, big top, big hip female. When you see this one in motion, she struggles off that front end. We need to change that angle of that shoulder, need to change the angle of that hock just a touch, get her to flex out, soften her up in that flank as you read her through that body cavity out throughout her rear end. Again, the baldy heifer coming next. Again, a nice young maternal looking type of female the young lady has. Again, just doesn't have the bells and whistles. We need to modify her both ways on front and rear as she gets out on the go. Really nice moderate type of female that rounds off the class. Young man brings us. She's got the added power and mass. She gets plainer and coarser through that first one third and just carries that jam. She's kind of jammed up all the way throughout her body when you get her out in motion. I like to free her up and stretch her out just a touch. But again, nice pair of females on the top end. Well, Monty just told me down there it's going to keep getting tougher. Well, I tell you what, I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge because, again, this is a, this is a tremendous set of heifers from top to bottom. I, I absolutely love this heifer that we're starting this class with. I think uh, I love her belly shape. I love her hip. I love her foot and leg. The only problem I could see that this young lady might have is she's going to have to be careful that chest for her don't get away from her. She's got a little bit of chest for her in her already. And she don't look overly conditioned to me, so I, you know, that's something that she might want to keep an eye on as she feeds her out and feeds her along. But I tell you what, I think this heifer in this class is a, is a really nice one. Uh, gets a little closer than uh, second, third, and fourth. The heifer that I'm going to bring out here in second is one that's wanting to fight the halter really bad today, and I think that's affecting her when we get her out here on the move. She maybe just gets a little straighter in that hawk for me today. I think the white maybe uh, adds to that just a little bit, but uh, she's one I like her better. Belly shape, I like her uh, uh, hip structure, but I just like to 
free her up on that hawk a little bit for me today. Uh, the next two pairs are extremely close for me. I'm going to go with the heifer to me that I think has the kind of shape that the ones that I've used right in front of her, I like the way her front end ties together. She too maybe just gets a little straighter than that hawk out here on the move. She wants to slope from her hooks to pins when we get her on the move. The next heifer was kind of the problem heifer. When she first came in, she hit me pretty hard. I, I like that extension up to her front end. I like her hip structure. She maybe just gets a little towed out and up on that front end ever so slightly when she gets out here on the move. I'd like to keep them under her just a little better. Maybe just a little coarser right there in that shoulder, but I think that's one that's an awful nice female. The next heifer here coming out from the shoulder back, I think she's a lot like our first couple heifers. She just loses some femininity and freshness up through that front end, up in that neck and that head area for me today. Uh, but another one that's got a nice belly shape big straight top in her square top when you get to looking at her. The next two heifers just give up too much power for me today compared to the heifers that we're starting the class with. The young man's heifer here, she is not quite as square from her hooks to pins when you get to looking at her compared to some of the other ones. The lady rounding out the class is one that just gives up so much as far as her depth of flank and depth of belly to the ones that we're starting the class with. Well, back over in the Shorthorn Ring, results of Class 8, first place, and congratulations will go to Kennedy Brogdon of Waxahachie, Texas, with Solberg's Cherry Dream ET. Second place in that class, exhibited by Keegan McGrew of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Third place went to Guy Hendrickson of Charlotte, Montana. Fourth place, and congratulations to Laramie Piper of Caldwell, Texas. Fifth place went to Tyler Vondra of Mineral Point, Wisconsin. Sixth place in that class, exhibited by Landon Marvel. In seventh place, we'll go to Isabella Delgado. Now in ring one, we have class nine, early spring heifer calves. Back over in the junior main on Jew ring, results from class 24. First place and congratulations, we'll go to Ratliff Cat Call 212 KET, exhibited by Aubrey McCurry of Hutchinson, Kansas. Second place in that class, exhibited by Cart. Cutter Prince of West Point, Nebraska. Third place, exhibited by Kristen Hesselmeyer of Gerald, Texas. Fourth place went to TJ Mills. Fifth place in that class, exhibited by Clara Cross. Sixth place will go to Emery Mills. Seventh place to Rebecca Purvine. Eighth place in that class, and congratulations will go to Benjamin Burling. Now in ring two, we have class 25, Maine and Jews Spring Heifer Cavs, born March of 2022. This class here, uh, we got some obvious differences in type and kind between the two of them, but uh, 
for me, I'm going to go with the heifer that I think is just a little more complete. Uh, granted, she's given up some weight per day of age uh, to the heifer right behind her, but I just feel like she's just a little more complete for me today. She's uh, got a nice uh, hip structure to her. She likes her up to her front end, nice foot and leg. Uh, the heifer that's going to come out here in second just gets a little straighter on both ends when we get her out here on the move. She gets a little straighter in that hock. I just like to soften her up in her middle, and when I get right behind her, she doesn't have quite the spring of rib that the heifer that we're starting the class with. Well, congratulations back over in ring one, class nine, first place. We'll go to JAC Margie 328K, exhibited by Cade Lott of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. In second place in that class, we'll go to Case Glazier of Loyal, Oklahoma. We'll now bring in class 10 early spring heifer calves. Real nice uh, class here again, and we got two heifers that sort themselves at the top, and the young lady's heifer that starts this class, again, this is more my type and kind, and as far as freshness pattern, maturity pattern, you know, she really fits the bill for me. Super sound at the ground, very functional. I love the shape of her shoulder, how she transitions from that neck into that shoulder, into that forerib, and just carries that all the way throughout. And when you set her in motion, she's just a gorgeous picture when she gets on the move. I love the power and the added mass in this female in second. You know, with that, <clears throat> excuse me, with that added power and mass, you know, she gets a little bit, doesn't tie in quite as good as our class winners. You analyze her from her neck into her forerib and then out through that flank. I'd like to take that tail head and take that down into her pin bone set just a touch. Uh, again, a female, when we set her in motion, maybe not quite as smooth. She can get out and reach, but not quite as smooth as our class winner. But I love the added dimension and overall look in this female in second as well. The young lady's heifer that comes next, again, very similar to the one ahead of her. A uh, real powerful type of female, a lot of shape through the center portion of her body, very exquisite as far as that jawline into that chest floor, the way that she's designed in that first one third. You know, this one, as she gets in motion, when she comes together, she gets a little bit more pinched in that heart. She gets a little bit stiffer in that hock and tighter in that pastern. On the stand, boy, she gives you a really nice look. I just like to change those little tiny little uh, structure issues on her just a touch. But again, I think a really high quality female there as well. Young man's heifer here, you love the cow man in me, loves the overall maternal look of this female. She's got a brood cow look to her, shape to that lower portion of that rib cage. One that's not quite as clean fronted and as exquisite up through that first one third. Gets a little bit plainer looking as you analyze her as well. Young ladies uh, heifer that rounds off the class, again very similar. I like the cow power in this female as well, long spined, uh, long top type of female. She's not quite as big footed and big boned. But if you would, let's give this young lady a nice round of applause. She stuck with it out here and kept that heifer and showed her. Excellent job, young lady. Nice pair of heifers on the top end. Well, congratulations over here in ring two, class 25. First place, we'll go to Hadley Dunklow of Wayne, Nebraska. Second place in that class, exhibited by Claire Williams of Keithville, Louisiana. Third place, went to Brooklyn Derby of Olton, Texas. Fourth place in that class, we'll go to Gage Pickens of Medill, Oklahoma. And fifth place to Grace Raymond of Upland, Nebraska. We're now going to bring in class 26. These will be Maine on Jews spring heifer calves, born January to February of 2022. This will be our final class before division.
we get into our last class, so January is here on the high main side. And again, a trio of heifers, again, all three really different in their overall type and kind. And when you analyze these cattle, and I'm not going to sit here and say there's one that's a super sound and a perfect structured one, uh, but I think the heifer that starts the class is probably the one that has, is the fault freest. Uh, female, again, with the added power and dimension and, and uh, design that you're looking for on the stand. You know, when we see in motion, she gets a little bit tight in that spine. I wish she'd just relax. I don't know if she's just, you know, fighting halter enough that much that she's popping that up, but I'd like to relax that just a bit. But that's a really nice female to start the class. The young ladies have her again, as far as uh, the way she's designed and balances up from top to bottom and front to rear, behind that shoulder into that forerib. You know, she's not the deepest body compared to the heifers on either side of her, but I think there's enough shape there, and I think her design, her structure, and skeletal make gets her into that second spot for me. Just a nice place there in second. I love the cow power in this one here in third. I uh, love the depth from that spine down to her floor, the turn to that shape of that lower rib cage. Again, a real nice brood cow looking female. To me, again, she gets a little bit coarser and a little bit plainer appearing as you analyze her transitioning from the front to the middle to the last one third of her body. Uh, but again, I think a nice female there as well that rounds off the class. Well, congratulations over here in the main on Jew ring. Results of class 26, first place exhibited by Hunter Morton of Stratford, Oklahoma. Second place will go to Abby Brown of Linwood, Kansas. And third place exhibited by Andrew Triplett of Blanchard, Oklahoma. We'll now look to bring your first and second in, and our judge will select his champion reserve junior heifer calves. Another nice uh, class of females, top to bottom here on the shorthorn side. Uh, we got one that comes to the top really easy in this class. Uh, from her shoulder back, she's one that uh, I like an awful lot. She's big hip, big bellied. Uh, she maybe just gets a little more of a terminal look right there in her head and neck. I'd like to extend that out just a little more for me to make her just a little more feminine, but I think a real nice uh, female to start the class off with. I really like this heifer that comes out here in second. She's the one that's got the kind of belly shape I like. She is a little more feminine up through her front end and up through her head. She just gives up some power and some substance to the heifer that we're starting the class with. The young man's heifer I moved up here the, to third is one that when he gets her parked, boy, that's a nice one to look at. I like her an awful lot. Uh, she just gets a little coarser right there in the top of her shoulder blade, maybe just a little more bunched up. I'd like to maybe lengthen her out just a little bit for me all over, uh, but a nice heifer. Uh, the next heifer here is one, another one, when she gets parked and it's on the standstill, you, un you really like her an awful lot. She's got that extension up through her front end. She's a little greener in her overall makeup. Maybe not quite as good from her hooks to pins as some of the heifers that that's up towards the top of the class. The young lady's heifer, I moved down a couple spots. She just gets a little shorter in that front end, a little coarser in that shoulder for me today. Just not quite as soft in that middle uh, compared to the heifers in front. Then the next three heifers are heifers that are really close. Uh, the heifer I moved up here that's right here coming out next is one that I think is just a little more longer fronted, a little more feminine. I think that's the advantage she has over the next two. The, he the next heifer is a high performing heifer, obviously. We just need to make her a little more feminine up through her front end for me today. The heifer rounding out the class, I just need to fix that tail head on her for me today. Just gets a little straighter on both ends when we get her on the move.
Well, congratulations back over here in the Shorthorn Ring results from Class 10. First place exhibited by Braylon Schaefer of Hagerstown, Indiana with Pioneer 216 ET. Second place in that class exhibited by Riley Bivens of Burleson, Texas with CF Mona Lisa 270 ET. Third place in that class exhibited by Cade Smith of Gravit, Arkansas. Fourth place will go to Ryder, Ryder Heater of Raymond, Kansas. Fifth place in that class was exhibited by Shaley Conrad of Dover, Florida. Sixth place went to Chloe Carlisle, Amarillo, Texas. Seventh place will go to Crow Creek Farms of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Eighth place will go to Tanner Waite of Mountainville, Missouri. We're now going to bring in Class 11 Early Spring Heifer Calves. Well, if you would, let's put our hands together in this first division on our main, high main side. Again, I think uh, real high quality. All eight of these females have some great attributes as far as breeding pieces and going into a program and being able to breed cattle and improve cattle. And they all have their different uh, spots as far as where you want to go and, and what you want to improve on. So I think that's good. And again, if you look at the lineup, I think they're very similar. You know, they're not cookie pattern, but I think uh, when I'm sorting cattle, I'm, I'm picking cattle that are good from the ground and just put a lot of good things together in a most complete package and, the, and again at the end of the day that's what you want to do and that's what you got to have in your cow herd at back home as well. Um, this first class winner again in May and like I said in class you know as far as condition goes for May for me she's, she's pushing a little bit I don't think she's out of the realm uh, but again I think a female that is so well designed and so soft in her overall look in her muscle pattern, in her body cavity, and again, a female, when we set her in motion, she just gets around and covers some ground, and is very relaxed in her overall skeletal design, and everything puts together, and again, you get her stuck from the side, she gives you all the look and all the phenotype that you want, but yet still very maternal looking as well. I like the heifer out of the second class as well. She's very similar as far as from her shoulders back uh, compared to the one ahead of her. Uh, and then the overall design, the way she's made, you know, that neck comes out top side of that shoulder. You know, at times compared to some of these heifers, she might get outside of herself. I'd like to change that shoulder just a touch. She gets a little bit wider based up front for me. I'd like to tuck that in underneath her. But again, that's being critical on an awfully good heifer there as well. The heifer out of that third class, and like I said, you know, it's more my, my type and body shape and, and as far as condition, uh, where they're at in their stage and their maturity, she's more my kind and more that you can see down the road, she's just going to keep going. You know, there were some heifers in that class that were more powerful, more advanced, uh, but this one has just put so many good things together. Uh, just transition so nice. She's good at the ground. I uh, love the way that shape and that lower portion of her rib cage is, and you can just see this one as a big bread next year, boy. She's just going to put a lot of good things together. Heifer out of the last class, again, there was a, she was a real powerful female in that class. You know, as far as structure in that class, they probably can't compete with the three that are out here ahead of them. But again, that female's got a lot of good to her, a lot of depth, a lot of power and mass, just like to modify her just a touch structurally. So I'm going back in my head a little bit. There's two ways we can go here. I'm going to take one more look and get you a champion reserve. If you would, let's give these kids another nice round of applause.
Well, congratulations over here in the main Anju ring. Your junior heifer calf champion coming out of class 23, TSSC Summer Bell 2110 KET, exhibited by Carter Cornegy of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And congratulations, your reserve champion junior heifer calf coming out of class 25, Miss Maxine E.T., exhibited by Hadley Dunklow of Wayne, Nebraska. Again, congratulations to those exhibitors. We'll now look to get started with your fall heifer calf division. We'll bring in class 27, Maine Anjou winter heifer calves, born November to December of 2021. Two uh, high, no, uh, high main November females here. And again, I'm going to go with the, as they came in the ring and the, use the black heifer here to start. Uh, again, I think a female that puts a lot of good things together. She's very feminine skull shape, uh, very feminine through that first one third and the angle of that shoulder and the shape of that sho uh, neck into that shoulder. And again, designs really well out over her top. You know, when we set this one in motion, would we like her to reach just a smidge more off that rear end? Absolutely, but I think it's functional enough. Uh, again, uh, the quality in her is really, really high. Young lady's red heifer, again, a nicely designed heifer. If you really analyze this one, you love the angle of that shoulder. You love the femininity this female possesses. Again, a female that's really long-spined. You know, one that just gives up some maturity here and, and her growth pattern. She just needs a little bit more groceries uh, and get up to compete with that black heifer. But again, I think a really nice functional red female here for this young lady. Well, on the shorthorn side, another nice class of heifers, and I'll be the first uh, uh, to tell you there's a lot of differences in type and kind in these first three. I think the heifer that's going to win the class, when we get her parked, I, I like her an awful lot. Uh, uh, she maybe gets a little shorter fronted when she's leading, but uh, she's fighting the holder pretty bad. I guess my biggest concern is reproductively. She gets a little smaller right there in her vulva area, uh, but again, that's taken away from a really nice heifer that we get her out here on the move. I think she's just extremely sound, uh, especially when she gets her park to love her up through her front end. I think that's the advantage maybe she has over this heifer in second. This heifer in second, when she stops, she wants to tip over just a little bit on that front end. She gets a little straighter fronted, a little wider in that chest floor, but from there back, I think that's a tremendous female here to come out in second. The young lady I moved up some spots is one that uh, kind of was my uh, concern in the class. Boy, I, I like her an awful lot, but she's carrying a little more condition than I'd like to see. She's starting to show it in her chest for her. I'm a little worried about her maturity. I think she's going to be a little quicker maturing maybe than uh, some of the F other heifers in here. But boy, I like her body shape. Just worry about that front end holding together as she goes on out. 
Uh, the next heifer coming out is one that's an uh, awful lot like the first one, uh, maybe just not quite as long fronted for me today, just gets a little bunched up on the move. Uh, I just like to extend her, give her a little more maternal look up through that front end. The next heifer is one that has a little extended front end. I just like to tie her a little different right there at the top of her shoulder for me, maybe not quite as soft in that middle as the ones that's right in front of her. The young lady's heifer that's rounding out the class. This is one that has that extra extension up to her front end. She just gives up some power to the ones that's in front of her today, but that's a nice heifer also. Well, congratulations. Back over here in the main ring, results from class 27. First place will go to NCC 15%, 119J, exhibited by Claire Norris of Eudora, Kansas. Second place in that class will go to Morgan Ray of Stephenville, Texas. Now in ring two, we have class 28, Maine Unjew Fall Heifer Calves, born September to October of 2021. Back in the Shorthorn ring, results of class 11, early spring heifer calves. First place exhibited by Skylar Ward of New Paris, Ohio, with SF. SFF Mona Lisa Reward AV215 ET. Second place in that class was exhibited, exhibited by Caroline Schumann of Kimmel, Indiana with CFNB Demi 250 RBX ET. Third place in that class went to Sheridan Fox. Fourth place will go to Alyssa Carter. Fifth place and congratulations to Jensen Wurstler. And sixth place was exhibited by Ella Helton. We'll now bring in those first and seconds, and our judge will select his champion reserve in your early spring heifer calf division. Yeah, and a trio of females here in our last fall division. And again, the young ladies heifer that starts the class, uh, just a real easy place to start. Just overall quality and dimension and design. She puts a lot of good things together. Still has that maternal look, but still has that exquisite female look as well as far as phenotype out in the ring. Very functional at the ground as she gets out and moves. I like that heifer a great deal. Uh, the heifer comes in second, again, a little bit different body type and style compared to our class winner, but again, I think she just has a little bit more shape through that center portion of her body. Gives me a little bit more of a maternal look as far as rib shape and internal dimension uh, compared to the heifer behind her. And again, a female, I think, that handles herself a little bit better off those two rear wheels as she gets out on the move. I love the overall length of body, the heifer that rounds off the class. Long spine, long hip type of female. We set her in motion, she struggles, gets a little bit harder through that center portion of her body. I'd like to soften her up there as far as her maturity pattern goes. But again, a nice trio of females. Well, congratulations over here in ring two, class 28. First place goes to PQG Grace 9JET, exhibited by Paisley Gas of La Mesa, Texas. Second place in that class will go to Brindley Berend of Alvord, Texas. And third place in that class, and congratulations to Bailey Matlock. We'll now look to bring in your first and seconds and select the champion reserve here in your fall Hevercalf division. Well, again, not a real big division here, but again, I think the two females that win those classes, again, are both very high quality females, and yeah, they both match up and complement one another very well as their overall design and maternal look and eye appeal and attractiveness from the side, and yet as far as structure goes, I think it's a, it's a wash there as well. I think they're both very functional in that aspect, and again, for me, I guess it comes down to those two, and for me, I think the one out of the second class just has a little bit more there. Of course, she is the older one, but again, I think there's just a little bit more there as far as power and mass and shape uh, compared to the other class winner. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use that one for our champion for reserve, for reserve and then we're going to use our class winner for reserve there as well. Well, congratulations over here in the main Anjou ring, your champion in that division coming out of class 28. 
PQG Grace 9 JET exhibited by Paisley Gas of La Mesa, Texas. And reserve champion in that division will come out of class 27. Congratulations to Claire Norris of Eudora, Kansas. We'll now look to start your next division here in our main Anjou show. We'll bring in class 29. This will be your only class in this division. These will be main Anjou summer yearling heifers born May to June of 2021. On the, on the shorthorn side here as we pick this uh, spring heifer calf championship, uh, let's give the exhibitors a round of applause. This is a really good set when we get them back out here. Um, the young lady's heifer that won the first class is one that, boy, you love her when she gets parked and gets that head up in the air. She's big square hipped. I like her belly shape. Uh, she maybe gets a little restricted on the move, but again, that's a, that's a pretty nice heifer. Uh, the heifer that won the second class is one that has the body shape that I absolutely love. I love her up through her neck and head area. Uh, as we talked to her in class, she may be going to have to watch that chest floor a little bit, but boy, from there back, that's a really nice one. Is she as out, stout boned as some of the other ones in here? Probably not, but I don't know that we need them. Uh, maybe as stout as some of these cattle are, but I think that's an awful nice heifer here that won that uh, second class. Uh, the heifer that won the third class probably wasn't quite the competition, but a heifer that gave up some weight per day of age, and she obviously does when she gets back out here, but uh, from her shoulder back, that heifer's built really nice. I like her an awful lot. She gets some uh, groceries in her. She'll probably catch up with some of these heifers. <clears throat> the heifer that won the next uh, class is one from the shoulder back that uh, is really good, and she is one of those ones that is powerful from the ground up, tremendous bone, tremendous foot, she maybe gives maybe not quite the maternal look up through that front end and head and neck area, but from the shoulder back, uh, that's one that's really nice, got a nice body shape. I'd just like to make her a little more feminine up to her front end. The heifer that won the last class, when this young lady gets her parked and when she wants to cooperate, this one has as good a look as any of them does, uh, but maybe just a little shorter up through that front end, maybe not quite as thick right behind, but uh, boy, she's got a nice belly shape to her, going to make a tremendous cow. This was a pretty tough division. I'm going to go out here and select the one I like the best uh, for me that I think is the freshest and going to go on to make the better cow of the bunch. Uh, that, let's give them one more round of applause. This is a really good set of heifers here. Well, congratulations, your champion in that division over here in the Shorthorn Ring, coming out of Class 8. Solberg's Cherry Dream ET, exhibited by Kennedy Brogdon of Waxahachie, Texas. And congratulations, Reserve, in that division coming out of Class 7. SNN Chasing Dreams 229 ET, exhibited by McKinley Evans of Lorenzo, Texas. We'll now look to start your next division over here in the Shorthorn Ring. We're going to bring in Class 14, Junior Heifer Cavs.
this class of heifers, I think we got one that comes to the top relatively easy for me. Uh, this one here is <coughs> so good up through her front end for as much as she has to her and so sound. Uh, you get behind her, man, she's big butted, big topped, uh, nice belly swoop, but the thing I'm really impressed with for is how thick and much there is to her is how sound she is when we get her out here on the move. This one here hits that stride perfect every time. I mean, she has a tendency maybe maybe just not quite as feminine up to her front end, up to her head and neck, but again, from their back, that's a really nice one, especially on the move. Uh, the heifer that's going to come out here in second, just a little greener in her overall makeup, gets just a little narrower right there in her pins, maybe just a little weaker right there in that top line when we get her out here on the move. I just need to stouten her up just a little bit for me today compared to the heifer that we're starting the class with. The young lady's heifer that's going to come out here in third, that's a nice female in her own right. Uh, she's just one that maybe just gets a little narrower from them hooks to pins, wants to slope, maybe not quite as powerful right behind when you get to looking at her compared to the heifers that's right in front of her. The young lady's heifer that's rounding out the class just gives up too much performance today uh, to the ones that's right in front of her. Maybe just a little shorter up to that front end. We just need to extend her out all over for me. Well, it's a little disappointing that female had to leave the class. And again, I might, uh, probably my fault too for hanging on to these out here too long. I probably should have shoved that one in the middle so she wasn't out in front. So I apologize for that. Uh, but again, those guys, goes. Those two females were our high quality females. Not take anything away from your female here, young man, that's in second here. I think that's a really good balance type of female. Nice body depth to that female. I love the, the depth that she has from her spine down to her floor. She just didn't have the structure compared to those other two heifers that were in this class, but she's going to be second here, and I understand the rules. Uh, but those two females were just buzzsaws you ran into there. This female that wins the class, I'm going to start with this one. I was going to start with her uh, to begin with. Uh, again, just so exquisite in overall design and makeup and the power and mass that everything balances up and yet is still functional at the ground, can get out and travel. I love the power and the shape to her rib cage. I love the condition that she's in. I love the set to her hock and her hind leg and that, down to that pastern, set back into that knee so well and then yet travels. We get up on top of this one. A lot of power in this one too as well. You know, at times maybe she maybe just gets outside of herself up front just to touch. Uh, but again, I think that's being real critical and an awfully, awfully good one. Uh, but again, I think two nice high, high quality set of females in this class. It's unfortunate that one had to leave the ring. Congratulations to all you young men here. Well, congratulations over here in ring two results of class 29 in your summer yearling heifer division. Your champion will go to BBR J47 JET exhibited by Kelton Arthur of Stillwater, Oklahoma. And second place in reserve in that division will go to Ty Keaton Williams of Van Alstine, Texas. We'll now look to bring in your next class. This will be class 30, Maine Anjou Spring Yearling Females, born March to April of 2021. Back in the Shorthorn Ring, results of Class 14. First place went to CF Crystal Lucy, 230. RKXET exhibited by Paige Wickard of Wilkinson, Indiana. Bred by Sarah Rose Sullivan, Dunlap, Iowa. Second place in that class was exhibited by Carter Meyer of Needville, Texas, with CF Max Rosa, 245. RKXET. Third place in that class went to Reagan Easton of Bethany, Illinois. And fourth place in that class, and congratulations to Maggie Bass of Burton, Kansas. Now in ring one is class 15, Junior Heifer Cavs.
Well, this class, uh, again, we have some differences in type and kind, uh, maybe not quite as uniform as some of the other classes we've had, but uh, I think we've got one that comes to the top relatively easy for me when I get her out here on the move. Uh, she hits her stride as well as anything uh, we've seen today. Uh, I guess if I'm concerned, maybe a toe structure there, there's one that's maybe rolling under just a little bit, but again, uh, when she gets out here on the move, it sure doesn't affect her. She hits her stride as good as anything we've seen today. I like her square hip. I like her leg. Uh, really nice effort to start the class. I switched these next two just because of the power from the ground up that this one here's got, and from the shoulder back, that's really nice. She may be carrying a little more condition I'd like to see. Maybe doesn't look quite as fresh up through that front end, but I think the color pattern might take away from her as far as that, uh, but boy, from the ground up, she's probably the stoutest one in the whole class. Class, uh, just like to freshen her up to that front end. The young lady's heifer that I moved down a notch uh, did so because of that. I think she just doesn't have the foot and the leg that the one that's right in front of her. Maybe just not quite as soft in her middle and not as quite as much spring or rib as the ones right in front of her also. Uh, the next one coming around here is one that just gets a little narrow in her pin structure for me. Maybe not quite as long-sided, uh, but one when we get her out here on the move, she wants to maybe just get out of her skeleton just a little or so slightly off his right hind leg as she gets out here on the move. Uh, the next heifer that's coming around is one that uh, just gets a little more tucked up in her flank, maybe just a little narrower when I get right behind her, especially right there in her hooks, depends, not quite as level in her top out here on the move also. The next heifer coming out is one that's really thick. If you want a one, uh, a breeding tool that's got a lot of muscle and shape with that thickness, she gets a little restricted in her movement off that hind leg, gets a little weaker in that top, maybe just a little rounder muscle than I'd like to see. Well, congratulations in class 15. First place exhibited by Michael Frisbee of Buckingham, Iowa with CF Mona Lisa 222 LLXET. Second place in that class, we'll go to Reagan Smithers of Pittsfield, Illinois with AF Magical Mirage 2204ET. Third place in that class exhibited by Kimberly Holland of Tecumseh, Oklahoma. Fourth place went to Kate Lott of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Fifth place, exhibited by Brock David Studer. And sixth place, we'll go to Caitlin Moffitt. We'll now bring in Class 16, Junior Heifer Calves.
again tonight last year in this uh, high main division and you know we get into these top four or five females and again as far as I'm concerned the structure kind of sorts these cattle to the to the top four here and the young man's heifer uh, just struck me as she came in the ring I just love her overall design and maternal look and still the show ring presence that we're looking for but yet still very functional you know she's not as extreme and in some aspects as maybe the two heifers behind her but again she just balances up and is so smooth and so soft to that center portion of her body and the way she transitions into that shape of that neck into that shoulder and fore rib and yet tremendous amount of length from hooks to pins when you analyze this female I think that's a great advantage in this one is that she has that added length from hooks to pins she's very true and square out that hip and again like I said when you set this one in motion uh, she looks almost better on the move than she does standing and yet still gives you a striking look on the pose you know I struggle between these next two heifers and again they're different in their type and again like I said earlier I'm not going to follow cookie cutter patterns I'm going to follow cattle that are structurally good and I think that balance up the most and I think this young lady's heifer does that best for me she balances better from front to rear and top to bottom she holds her spine just a touch better on the move when she gets out and travels you know is she a little bit plainer neck than our class winner absolutely but I think it's still feminine I love the shape to her skull and her muzzle again she's very feminine and ladylike looking she's a little bit more moderate than the, than the heifers on either side of her and I guess I like that about her she's really fresh in her overall type and pattern and the condition that she's in I just a real, think a really nice place to fall in the second there again when you set that one in motion she's very comfortable inside of her skeletal design I love the added power and mass in this heifer in third you get behind her she is the stoutest biggest top biggest hip biggest quartered female and yet still gives you a nice maternal look as far as her shape to her rib cage she's big boned and big footed uh, again when you get up in that first one third she gets a little bit plainer for me you know and with that added power you're gonna have some of that I think it's still designed and put together nice it just doesn't tie it in quite as well as the other two heifers she gets a little tight in that top for me as well this heifer that comes next when she came in the ring I thought man this one this one's gonna rival my one that I saw earlier and again on the stand she does she puts a lot of things she's very similar to our class uh, class winner in her overall type and kind of design she's pushing a little bit more chest she's a little bit outside of herself off that front end I'd like to change that uh, set to that shoulder I'd like to set that knee back in her just a touch she gets outside of herself on the move but other than that that's a really well designed type of female that puts a lot of things together as far as maternal look and mass and power I like the added length in this heifer that comes next this one here too when you set her in motion you see her stand we need to modify that hock just a touch gets under gets underneath herself just a bit more than some of the other heifers kind of gets a little struggles when she gets out on the move off that front end but again I think a real nice brood cow look type prospect there as well young man's uh, white socked heifer here that comes next this is a big powerful type of female as well you know you love the, oh, the overall maternal look and the mass and the body power that she has you know it just doesn't tie together quite as well she gets a little bit coarser off of both ends I like to tone her down as far as condition goes especially down through that underline young man's heifer here too I struggled with this one you know she's a little bit more moderate she's very striking from the side at times she I'd like to tone that tail head down just a touch and at times she gets outside of herself when she gets on the move I guess I just like to see a little bit more pop to this female compared to some of the heifers placed ahead of her young man's white socked heifer coming next really fresh appearing type of female maybe a little bit slower in her overall mature pattern uh, but again a female I think that just needs to get softened up through that center portion of her body we need to change that hip structure and that pin set and that tail set on this one tone that down just a touch young ladies big large frame type of female that rounds off the class you love the added length of body the length of spine again a female that just gets a little bit too hard for me not soft enough through the center portion of her body compared to the heifers ahead of her again a nice uh, female on the top end of that class over here on the shorthorn side uh, a group of January heifers and I think one that comes to the top relatively easy for me in this class this is one uh, I like her an awful lot from her shoulder back she maybe is not quite attractive when you get to looking at her on those hind legs she sets down those pasterns maybe a little more set I'd rather have one a uh, little bit that way than I would to have one too straight uh, I think uh, I like that about this heifer especially when I get her out here on the move she's really soft and free and easy moving when you get to looking at her the heifer that's going to come out here in second is one that's uh, 
big and bold in her rib shape, but along with that you get a little more extra shoulder, not quite as much feminine look up through that head and neck. She doesn't tie together real well right there, top of her shoulder into that neck compared to the heifer we're starting the class with. You know, and like I said, this is January heifers. We're getting some of them a little bigger maybe than what we need, and uh, I think this heifer here is uh, on, the, on the extreme side of that. The next, next three heifers are that way. Uh, you know, I'm not here to say what's too big, what's too small, but these are pretty borderline for me as far as size-wise, but uh, this heifer is nice and feminine up through her front end. Maybe this gets a little disappointing right behind. She gets a little shorter on her stride off those hind legs once you get out of her skeleton just a little bit, not walk quite as free and easy off those hind legs. The next heifer, she's one that you really like from a profile standpoint. Get right behind her. She just doesn't have the spring of rib that the heifers that we're starting the class with. You like her as far as her foot and leg when we get out here on the move. Same way with the next heifer. The next heifer just gets a little wastier right there in her throat, right underneath her uh, jaw there. Maybe like the feminine or up, up through that neck and head area for me today. She too is getting just a little on the, on the large size for me. The white heifer rounding out the class. She just gets a little slope from those hooks to pins. She just gets a little narrower when you get right behind her compared to the ones that start in the class. Again, we get a single entry here on the high main side. And again, uh, female probably scared some away. This one's awfully good. I, I love her overall structure from the ground up. She's so good as far as the way her skeleton's designed, her levelness and softness, and yet still has that added foot. You love the heel depth on this female as well, and she just gets out and motors and goes. Uh, just the overall general soft, maternal, still yet eye appealing, and still has that sharp design and phenotype that we desire. Uh, again, just a great female here in a single entry class. Well, congratulations back over here in the main Anjou ring. Results from class 30. First place was exhibited by Tyler Miller of Armington, Illinois. Second place in that class, and congratulations went to Carly Shenfield. Third place exhibited by Bailey Dutra of Hanford, California. Fourth place will go to Lane Fincher. Fifth place in that class, and congratulations to Caber Johnson. Sixth place went to Brooks Collier. And seventh place in that class, and congratulations will go to Kyan Herman. Out of class 31, first place was exhibited by Madison Shout of Piedmont, Oklahoma. At this time, we're going to bring in those first and second selected champion reserve here in your junior yearling division. Back over in the Shorthorn Ring, results of Class 16, Junior Heifer Cavs. First place went to SN Margie, 214-ET, exhibited by Travis Beckstrand of Waldorf, Waldorf, Minnesota. Second place, and congratulations to Riley Bivens of Burleson, Texas. Third place went to Cooper Hetrick of Fremont, Ohio. Fourth place, exhibited by Cornerstone Farms, Winchester, Indiana. Fifth place will go to Autumn Berg of Osage, Iowa. And sixth place, and congratulations to Jacob Bergman of Brownsville, Wisconsin. Now in the ring is class 17. This will be your final class here in this division.
Well, if you would, let's put these, uh, give these exhibitors a nice round of applause here in this division as well. You know, we had the one class that was really big and very competitive, and again, I think those two females out of that class are, are really high-quality females. There was some give and take in there as well, and the heifer that we landed on was one that was just put together and good at the ground and sound and maternal looking and still had that overall phenotype and look and presence uh, that we were looking for. You know, when you analyze this female, again, compared to the one out of that second class, uh, again, maybe one that's not quite as heavy structured down low compared to the one out of that last class. But again, I think it's very adequate, and I love her foot shape and her heel shape in this one as well. You know, they, both these females, you know, I know we're in the mains, and with this breed, we're supposed to add some muscle and some dimension to them. These two heifers are very smooth muscle patterned. I mean, they've got some width and dimension up high. They track wide. They, they maybe don't have that added width and dimension when you get behind these two, and I'm okay with that. As long as we keep our main bulls with that added power and mass, we need to keep breeding that. We can take those bulls on top of these females and get the muscle that we want. That's part of a breeding program. That's part of what we're supposed to be doing. And again, I think both these females for that aspect are maybe a little atypical of maybe what the main uh, female is. Uh, but again, I think they're very adequate as far as muscle type and pattern for me. Uh, again, there's some give and take between both of those. You know, out of the second class, you know, she was a single entry, so, you know, and she really didn't want to behave, but now she gets out here and she sets up, and she's got that added bone, she's got that added heel and foot size, so flexible on the move and soft. You know, is she quite as exquisite and maybe as feminine sculled as maybe the one ahead of her? No, but yet she still has that overall maternal and feminine look, the shape to her neck and the shape to that shoulder. You know, if you're going to get critical on this one, would you like to clean up that brisket there a little bit? Yeah, that's being pretty picky, and, and for me, that doesn't bother me much. I know that that's going to go away as a cow. Both the, All these cattle are going to clean up and freshen up that way, and I understand what it takes to get one here. Otherwise, I think that one's very fresh in her overall appearance, very smooth and natural in her overall shape and design, and I like that one quite a bit. Again, I think it comes down to those two class winners. I'm going to take another look, and I'll pick you a champion reserve. If you would, put your hands together, nice set of females. On the Shorthorn side here, another uh, class of Januarys, and again, we're, we're pushing the envelope for me on uh, size, but uh, again, I'm not here to say what's too big, what's too small, but uh, this heifer we're starting the class with from the shoulder back, I, I like her an awful lot. She maybe just gets a little shorter right there in the front end on that crest and neck area and around that head. I'd make her just a little more feminine, but uh, boy, from there back, that's a really nice one, sets down on a nice foot and leg. The heifer that's going to come here in second, man, when she gets on the move, she's just as sound as can be. I love her body shape. I like her way she extends up through that front end. She, too, could maybe be just a little more feminine in her head. I'd just like to set that tail head down her when she gets out here on the move. But as far as uh, soundness and moving, I like her an awful lot. Just uh, want to put that tail head down in her when we get her out here on the move. The next heifer I moved down a spot. Just gives up some substance to the heifers that's right in front of her. Just doesn't quite have the belly shape uh, compared to the two right in front of her. But again, a nice heifer to come out here in third. The heifer that's rounding out the class is one that's uh, probably just a little fresher in her overall makeup. I think that's one that uh, on down the road that could go ahead and compete and challenge with these other ones. But she's just a little bit behind as far as performance right now compared to the heifers that we're starting the class with. Well, congratulations over here in ring two results in that last division. Your champion, congratulations to Madison Shout of Piedmont, Oklahoma with DUP Jealousy 199 JET and reserve champion that division coming out of class 30 exhibited by Tyler Miller of Armington, Illinois. Again, we get into our last class of uh, high main females here and we got a fall senior yearling and again, a nicely designed type of female. Again, that neck into that shoulder and on, down her spine. She's really loose structured up over her top and the length of hip that this one has. Again, when we set her in motion, she's very functional at the ground. A female, again, that just for me, I'd like to see a little softer through the center portion of her body. I'd like to see a little further along and as far as pregnancy, uh, but again, I think a nice functional type of female.
And congratulations back over in the main ring. Your senior yearling champion, congratulations, goes to Hollis Driscoll of Stillwater, Oklahoma, with LJR Miss Baina 104H. And back over in the Shorthorn ring, we are bringing in those first and seconds, and our judge will select his champion reserve junior heifer calves. Well, and at this time over here in our main ring, we are going to bring your champion reserves in. Our judge will select his grand and reserve grand champion, junior, main on Jew females. On the shorthorn side here, if you would, uh, let's put our hands together for this division. Four outstanding efforts when we get out here for this uh, division championship. Uh, the young lady, Sefer, that won the first class. So much power to her when you get right behind her. So much power from the ground up. You'd maybe think it would restrict her movement, but it sure doesn't. And to be that much uh, nice up through her front end, I think just a tremendous cow prospect and just a really nice heifer here that won that first class. The heifer that won the second class is one that uh, I like an awful lot. Uh, she's maybe got a toe issue right there on the outside of that uh, uh, left hind uh, foot, but again, uh, that's getting pretty critical of a really nice heifer. I like her belly shape. I like the way her upheadedness is, how feminine she is. The next heifer that won the next class is one that, uh, I, she's the one I talked about, maybe had a little more set to her hind leg, uh, but that, you know, I'm not going to take that away from her. I'd rather have one that way than be too straight. She maybe just gets a little narrower right there from her hooks to pins, but I think a tremendous cow prospect in her own right. Heifer that won the last class is one that, boy, from the shoulder back, you like her an awful lot. She's got the kind of belly shape I like. She's got the nice square hip. She's maybe just a little, little shorter up there in that front end, maybe carrying a little extra down there in that chest floor, but again, that's taken away from a really nice female. Again, this has been, uh, that's, I can't wait for the rest of the show to go on because this is an excellent set of heifers out here. Uh, with that being said, I'll go out here and I'll select your champion. And congratulations, your champion that division over here in our shorthorn ring. Coming out of class 14, Paige Wickard of Wilkinson, Indiana, with CF Kersalusi, 230 RKXCT. And congratulations, your reserve in that division. Coming out of Class 15, CF Mona Lisa, 222 LLXCT, exhibited by Michael Frisbee of Buckingham, Iowa. We'll now get started with your next division here in the Shorthorn Ring. We're going to bring in Class 20 winner Heifer Cavs. Over in the main ring, we're going to bring in those division champion and reserves, and our judge, Mr. Scott Beyer, will be selecting his grand and reserve grand champion, Maine Anjou Females, here in your junior show.
We get on our high main side and selecting champion female here. And if you would, put your hands together for these exhibitors out here. A nice set of cattle all the way through. Now, this is the last time I'll be in the ring. So, again, I want to, like the other day, I want to thank the Cattlemen's Association or the Cattlemen's Congress uh, group for uh, inviting me here and also the Maine Anjou uh, Association for inviting me here to evaluate cattle. Uh, I love sorting through cattle. We do it every day at home and it's uh, a real honor and a privilege to be able to do it at this level. Uh, also, why don't we put our hands together for the Junior Maine Anjou Board out here. Did an excellent job getting these classes in and around. Nice job. We get down to our champion and again, uh, high quality throughout here. You know, these two calves out of that first set uh, Boy, they, they've, they've got a bright future to them, and, and uh, they are certainly good enough and uh, well-designed enough uh, that you're going to see them down the road and be very competitive next year back here as big breads and next summer as well. And, you know, I, I'm not one of those guys, and I know I went against my grain and I used a calf the other day, but, uh, again, I, I think there's a couple big bred females here that are super good and super sound, and, and I, I know what it takes to keep those keep those coming the way they need to and and uh, so I put a lot of credit in those females that are older and have proven and have run the road and the track record and and you know just being able to uh, be able to come out here and compete at this level and and uh, so I put a lot of emphasis on there but I don't want to take anything away from these calves because again I think both these are two high quality females here that are going to have a lot of future to them as well you know we get down to it and it comes down to two for me and I, again, I wish there was one more out here, and, and I apologized earlier for not maybe helping that young man out and getting him in the middle of that, you know, that heifer took off, but that was an awful good female that we sent back to the barns, and that was very unfortunate, but uh, it would make things a little more interesting out here as well. Uh, but again, uh, it comes down to two of them for me, and, and there's slight differences between them. Uh, you know, it's the young man here with the white-bellied heifer, uh, a female, again, I think is so well-designed and so powerful and massive, but yet still feminine in her overall makeup and the shape to her neck, into her shoulder, and into a nice maternal rib cage in that fore rib and down the lower portion, uh, lower portion of her rib cage. And you get behind this one, this is the stoutest female out here. She's got the widest hip. She's the widest base. She's got the most muscle behind. And like I said, it's the main Andrew breed, and we should be adding some of that, and that's what this breed is known for is adding some of that muscle and, and dimension to these cattle, and we don't want to go away from that. And I think this female puts that muscle and the femininity all in a, into a really nice package. When you analyze her compared to the heifer behind her, you know, the heifer behind her, like I said, is a little bit flatter muscle pattern, and that doesn't bother me as long as we keep our bulls that way there's a place for this female and the functionality of this female. Uh, she's probably got a little bit more foot width and base to her, probably a little bit more bone. She does give up some of that muscle. She's probably not as quite good skulled as our, the heifer ahead of her, but again, like I said earlier, I think it's all feminine enough and shaped enough. She's extremely long bodied, extremely soft in her pattern. So it gets really close, I think, between those two. Uh, I'm going to take another look and I'll get you a champion reserve. If you would, thanks again for having me. It was a great honor and a privilege. Uh, let's give these kids another nice round of applause. Congratulations to you all. We'll be here on the Shorthorn side, another uh, nice class of heifers. I got a heifer that I thought come to the top real easy for me again. Uh, I think she just puts it all together a little better for me as far as soundness. A little more fresh up through her front end. We get her out here on the move, and she's not disappointing. That's one I like an awful lot to win this class. The effort's going to come out here in second. Maybe just a little crestier right there. Maybe a little plainer in her head. Not quite as good right there from her hooks to pins, and maybe doesn't carry her depth down into her flank quite as much as the heifer we're starting the class with. The heifer that's going to come out here in third. Just gets a little off on those two hind legs when she gets out of here. Maybe gets a little straighter once it gets outside of her skeleton at times. She gets real crusty up through that front end for me today. I just need to give her a little more femininity. The young lady heifer that's coming out here uh, to round out the class is one I think is going to make a really nice cow. She just gets a little plainer to look at. She's wanting to fight the halter really bad today. We just need to get her to uh, calm down and get out here and move a little freer and easier for me.
Well, congratulations over here in ring two, your grand champion female here in our main on June Junior show. Kelton Arthur, Stillwater, Oklahoma, with BBR J uh, 47 JET. And congratulations, your reserve grand champion, Maine Anjou female here in her junior show. Congratulations, Madison Shawn of Piedmont, Oklahoma, with DUP Jealousy 199 JET. Ladies and gentlemen, and Jim Norick, let's put our hands together and thank our judge today, Mr. Scott Beyer of Ringo, Wisconsin. We'll get started with your open Maine Anjou show here in just a moment. Back over in the Shorthorn Ring, results of Class 20, winner Heifer Cavs, first place. We'll go to CFNB, Demi 1130 LLXET, exhibited by Haley Jester of Moreland, Indiana. Second place, and congratulations to Carissa Dalquest of Wilsey, Kansas. Third place, exhibited by Kimberly Holland of Tecumseh, Oklahoma. And fourth place, exhibited by Addison Dick of Nottawa, Oklahoma. Next class in the ring is class 21, Senior Heifer Cavs. Well, again, we have a heifer that I think comes to the top relatively easy for me in this class. Uh, this one that uh, puts it together really nice. She's really uh, beautiful in her overall design, uh, pre well presented to us here today. Uh, uh, and you look at the paper, she checks all the boxes for uh, growth numbers and carcass numbers. Uh, she probably excels a little more than the other ones. A uh, heifer that I like an awful lot. She's maybe got a left or uh, yeah left rear toe that maybe rolls out just a little bit or rolls under a little bit but uh, again that's a pretty nice heifer here to start this class off with uh, that gets a little closer for second and third i'm going to go with the heifer to me it's just a little straighter in her lines she's maybe got a little more chest forward than i'd like to see gets her a little more restricted in her movement not quite as feminine uh, the young man's heifer that's going to round out the class is one gets a little weaker in her heart a little coarser in her shoulder maybe just gets a little shorter and choppier in her stride when we get her out here on the move Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Ring. Results of Class 21. First place will go to Carter Wickard of Wilkinson, Indiana with CF Mona Lisa 1121 Flash X. And second place exhibited by Heath Kaiser of Gothenburg in Nebraska. And third place in that class will go to Shane Carlisle of Amarillo, Texas. We'll now bring in those first and seconds like the champion reserve here in their senior heifer calf division.
Well, nice pair of heifers here on the shorthorn side uh, for this uh, senior calf division, uh, two that I like really well. Uh, these are well, uh, highly presented to me uh, when you get them out here, uh, extremely well fitted. Uh, there's, uh, there's some differences between the two, but uh, not a lot, I tell you. These are both, uh, both really good in their own kind. Uh, the heifer that won the first class is one that uh, maybe carries her depth down in her flank a little bit more. Uh, she's probably not sitting on quite as big a foot and leg, maybe just a little narrower right there in her pins compared to the heifer that's right behind her. The heifer right behind her, like I said, is maybe not quite as soft in her middle, but boy, is she powerful as far as her foot and her leg and her hip. I mean, she's really big hipped uh, when you get to looking at her. Uh, like we said in class, she maybe left rear toe, maybe wants to roll under just a little, but that's uh, getting pretty picky about a pretty good heifer. I love the way her front end ties together. It's, uh, it's extremely close for me, and uh, you know, your seconds uh, in both those classes were extremely good too. But for me, I'm going to use the young man here in the cowboy hat to be your champion champion and the young lady right in front to be reserved. Well, congratulations back over here in the Shorthorn Ring, your senior heifer calf champion. Comes out of class 21, congratulations, Carter Wickard of Wilkinson, Indiana. And reserve champion in that division will go to Haley Jesser of Moreland, Indiana. We'll now look to see class 24 summer yearling females over here in the Shorthorn Ring. Back in the main ring, we are getting started with your open Maine Anjou female show. First class in the ring is class 33, spring heifer calves born May to June of 2022. Well, a tremendous way to start off your main Anjou show with, uh, I guess there's a June heifer in here, but predominantly Mayborn heifer calves. And, and I think this initial trio of heifers on the top end of this class is very good. And I, I think with a little bit more time, uh, I think that that initial trio probably can get just a shot more competitive. But with that said, never a doubt, uh, the heifer that's going to lead off this class was going to win. Uh, just so good in terms of her three-dimensional shape 
shape and uh, flexible on the go, yet still has enough look for me. Uh, one that's just very maternal looking in terms of a cow power and, and her dimension, I think that that's a very logical place to start. I do think that it's a little bit closer in, in the two that go two and three. Uh, as it stands today, I think the heifer that goes in second, there there is just a shot more to that one. Uh, I think that she's probably more opened up and, and maybe even just a little further along in terms of condition. Uh, but I think that that one's awfully nice there to go second. Young lady that's going to go third. Uh, this one hit me pretty hard when she came into the ring because I do. I think she's got that extra flex on either end of her skeleton. I think she's extremely attractive and youthful and, and green, if you will, uh, when you study her from a composition standpoint. But that one's very, very neat there. Uh, the front one third of her body, I think, is absolutely exquisite. Like I said, I think she's good at the ground. That's the one, I think, in about 90 days, uh, you know, she could make this top trio a shot more interesting uh, because that is a really good built, really attractive one there to go in third. Young lady that's going to come next, uh, one that's certainly good enough for me in terms of her flushing ability. I think there's some boldness there, uh, but when we ask the cattle to go in motion, that one just needs changed on both ends of her skeleton, make her a bit more ideal and pleasing to the eye when we study her there out of her hind leg. Uh, the two heifers that are going to round out the class, I certainly commend these young people. Uh, they're in good shape. They're presented well out here today. They're both cattle that have some length of body. Just simply need to mass those cattle up, give them a shot more total body dimension to move up any higher. Good class of Maine on Jew females to start off the day. Well, on the Shorthorn side here, uh, we've got an interesting class. The young man's heifer that's uh, going to win the class is obviously uh, getting real close to calving. Uh, I mean, she's going she's gonna to calve pretty early for her age, but uh, she's making a nice udder and, and looks really uh, fresh in her overall look. Uh, he said it was by accident, and that, that happens, but uh, hopefully she can handle it. And I think, uh, it, she's like I said, she's making a really nice udder for as young as she is, and uh, I like that an awful lot about her. I like her up to her front end. She may be just a little narrower right there in her pins, but uh, I think another nice heifer here to, to come to the top of this class. The young lady's heifer here that's going to come in second. Just gets a little plainer right there at the top of her neck. Right at the top of her head, uh, she's just maybe not quite as feminine. She just doesn't quite blend in quite as well right there where that uh, uh, neck comes out of that shoulder for me today compared to the heifer that we're uh, starting the class with. Well, congratulations. Over here in the main ring, we have gotten started with your open Maine Anjou female show. First place in Class 1 will be Carter Cornegy of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Second place exhibited by Kennedy Lockhart for Gibson, Oklahoma. Third place exhibited by Hadley Geiger of Blue Ridge, Texas. Fourth place went to Henley Hessenbeck of Elgin, Oklahoma. Fifth place exhibited by Sarah Rimple of Athens, Texas. And sixth place will go to Lillian Christian of Purcell, Oklahoma. Now in Ring 2's Class 34, Maine on Jews Spring Heifer Calves, born April of 2022.
Well, an outstanding class again uh, of April-born females in the Maine on Juice side, and and admittedly, uh, this heifer that's going to lead off this class compared to most of her contemporaries out here, you might want to call her moderate. But if that one's small for an April female, I, I, I'm just not buying it because I, I think that one's very good in terms of her size. Uh, I think so much balance and, and probably her biggest advantage in, in the heifer that stands directly behind her is just how smooth and balanced she is, uh, how juvenile and, and immature she is in her look. I think that that's an awfully, awfully nice one uh, to start off this particular class. Yeah, sure, the heifer that does come next, uh, there is a lot of power and performance in that, that female and, and her advantage when we talk about her compared to the heifer that's going to go third is I think she's the other really good structured sound moving one of this uh, initial trio. For me there's probably just a little bit too much there and, and just a little bit uh, overwhelming in terms of size and growth at this stage of the game uh, but one that uh, without a doubt is quality. A uh, young man highly presented very attractive heifer that comes in third and and I don't think that she's just terrible moving I just wish that it was a bit more fluid in the way that she goes. She she gets to her stride eventually but there's a shot of waddle there uh, that I'm just not comfortable with uh, but still a very striking attractive well balanced well presented heifer uh, to go in third. I like this heifer quite a bit that comes in fourth. Uh, one that's uh, a little bit greener and a little bit more immature uh, from a performance standpoint. Uh, doesn't have, you know, the, the extra weight, but that one's structure is very good and her basic build is very good. I think we give that one some time. I think she makes the top end of this class uh, a bit more competitive. Another bigger frame, Baldy Heifer here that's going to come next. Uh, I just wish that we could open that one up in terms of power and soften her up there in her rib cage, but good built cattle nonetheless. Young man that's going to round out the class, sure the one that's stout and has the extra feature and foot size and bone work. She's just a little bit too toned up for me in terms of muscle. Uh, consequently, just wants to uh, be a little bit more restricted when we ask her to go. Good class of females there in that April division. Nice pair of heifers here on the shorthorn side. Uh, there's some differences type and kind between these two. Uh, the heifer that I'm starting the class with, boy, she's so powerful from the ground up and uh, so sound when we get her out here on the move. She's got a nice body shape to her, big square hip. Maybe it gets a little crestier right there, but that's getting pretty picky about a heifer that uh, I think is really good. We're plenty on the big side for these two, weighing over 14 for their age, but uh, again, that's taken away from a really good female that just gets out and, and moves so free and easy for as much as she has uh, to her substance and, and bone to her that, uh, that she's got. But that heifer wins this class relatively easy for me. Uh, the heifer that's going to come out here in second is a little more refined in her overall makeup. She's not as big footed, not as big bone, but not taking anything away from her. She's got a nice middle, she's got a nice front end to her. She's just not as stout as the heifer that we're starting the class with for me today. The young lady's heifer that's coming out here in third, third is one that uh, I like an awful lot. She just gives up too much rib shape to the two right in front of her, especially when you get right behind her. She's just not as bold and sprung in her rib shape uh, compared to the two right in front of her. The next two just get a little plainer in their overall look right there at the top of their shoulder and from there forward. This one here just doesn't blend in quite as well up to her front end. It's a little coarser in her shoulder blade, just a little plainer right there in her neck and down to her uh, chest floor. The next heifer is really presented really well. You like that extent she has up through her front end. She just gets a little tucked up in that uh, uh, flank area for me and gets a little narrower from her hooks to pins compared to the heifers that's in front of her. Well, congratulations. Back over the main on Jew Ring. Results on Class 34. First place exhibited by Aubrey McCurry of Hutchinson, Kansas with Ratliff Cat Call 212 KET. Second place in that class exhibited by Clara Cross. Third place will go to Cutter Prince. Fourth place in congratulations to Kristen Hezelmeyer of Gerald, Texas. Fifth place in that class was exhibited by Rebecca Purvine. And sixth place will go to Benjamin Burling. Now over in ring two, we have class 35, Maine on Jews Spring Heifer Cavs, born March of 2022. This will be your final class in Division One. 
Back to the Shorthorn Ring results of Class 25. First place exhibited by Kinley Boland of Walnut Grove, Missouri. With CG Diana's final reward, 122 JET. Second place in that class exhibited by Weston Ward of Green Forks, Indiana. Third place was exhibited by J.C. Tweeten of Spring Grove, Minnesota. Fourth place exhibited by Bristol Souls of Sperry, Oklahoma. And fifth place will go to Jocelyn Phelps of Tecumseh, Oklahoma. Now in ring one, we'll bring in those first and seconds and select a champion reserve in your intermediate division. Well, as we pick this uh, division championship, uh, a young man's heifer here that's bred and going to calve a little early. I tell you what, I, I think that's going to make a nice cow. If, uh, if she can hold herself together as far as maturity, she's already making a really nice udder. She's nice up to her front end. She gets a little narrower in her pins, but uh, that's a really nice heifer there uh, uh, to win that first class. Uh, the heifer that won the second class, uh, just big, powerful, big-footed, big-boned. Uh, you get behind her, you just love how much width she has. Still retains quite a bit of femininity through her, through her right there, too. I guess, uh, again, she's getting a pretty borderline on being big enough for her age, but uh, that was pretty powerful right there. Uh, and then both the seconds... I liked both of them really well, uh, but for me today, the young lady here is going to win this division, and the young lady that was second in that class is going to be your reserve. We have a really good class winner over here on the main on juice side, and uh, one that I think when you get to the side of the cattle, uh, she probably suits me very well. I think that everything blends and, and transitions very well in this female. Uh, she's got some extra stoutness and power, but still handles it like a lady and gets out and moves. I think that that's an awfully nice one to start off this particular class. Without a doubt, the heifer that's going to come in second is probably a shot bigger, even a shot longer, and even maybe a little bit tidier there about her neck. Uh, but in comparison, just not as opened up when we study her there in her four rib, uh, but no, good, good cattle that's really attractive and neat in her angles. Uh, I think that that's, that's going to make a really nice bread as we project the cattle on down the road. Uh, the heifer that's going to come third, I, uh, without a doubt, that one is a source of power and substance in this particular class, but with that added substance, she just becomes a bit coarser. She's a bit more opened up there in her lower shoulder, wants to deviate in her spine as we ask her to go, comes up in her tail head, uh, but without a doubt, like I said, one that's certainly powerful and shapely. Young lady that's going to conclude the class, uh, one that's moderate and easy fleshing, and you certainly like that about her. I think she gets out and travels with enough ease and go. She's just a bit plainer when we compare her to the other cattle in this class. My compliments to all those exhibitors. Well, congratulations. Back over here in the Shorthorn Ring, results of your intermediate heifer division. Champion, we'll go to back number five zero. 566 CG Diana's final reward 122 JET exhibited by Kinley Bolin Walnut Grove Missouri and reserve champion that division coming out of the same class congratulations to Weston Ward of Green Fork Indiana we'll now look to bring in class 28 early spring yearling females back over the main on Jew ring we have the results from that last class here in our first division First place in congratulations, we've got Hadley Dunklau of Wayne, Nebraska, with Miss Maxine E.T. Second place in that class was exhibited by Brooklyn DeBerry of Alton, Texas. Third place went to Claire Williams, and fourth place will go to Grace Raymond.
Well, if you would, put your hands together and congratulate these uh, exhibitors on a really good first division of Maine on Jew females. And, and if it's any indication of how good this show's going to get today, I'm pretty pumped up because uh, I think uh, we have three exceptional class winners out here and their respected seconds are, are all very good and high quality and, and uh, you expect to see that when you come to the big town and, and get into these good breeding cattle and, and I think that there's some trade off in this, this, these three class winners uh, that uh, I like all three of them pretty well. Uh, the heifer that wins that first class, I think, uh, did so just from a mass and a substance standpoint, uh, one that we still think uh, very attractive there when you study her about her head and neck. In comparison, maybe that one's already starting to push just a little bit of chest there on the lower side of her skeleton, maybe not just perfect in the way that she comes out of her hip, but so good and genuine when you study her there in her forerib or lower body cavity. She's excellent at the ground. I think that that's that's an awfully, awfully nice female. Uh, the heifer that comes out of that second class, maybe she's a shot more moderate than the two heifers that, that stand on either side of her, but as I commented, I don't think this one is small by any stretch for, for an April female, and, and I think that that one has so much good in her. <coughs> She's so soft. She so, looks like a little cow to me, uh, one that's definitely good in her angles and gets out and travels really, really well. I think that that one's just very smooth when we study her and just so female and, and ladylike in her character. I think that that one, too, is very, very nice. Uh, one, the little bigger one here that comes next, and, and certainly not a disadvantage because she handles it all so well, and she's probably just a shot more powerful than the heifer that stands right, behind, or right in front front of her. Uh, and two, she, I think that that one's built extremely well when we ask the cattle to go. I think she's attractive and neat. Um, just a shot more frame and, and growth in that one. So good cattle here on the top end of this division. Congratulations to each and every one of them. I'll show you the two that I like. Well, congratulations, your champion in Division One, coming out of Class Three. Congratulations, to Hadley Dunklow of Wayne, Nebraska. And your reserve champion coming out of Class Thirty Four, that second class in this division, Aubrey McCurry of Hutchinson, Kansas. Congratulations to those two exhibitors. We'll now move into your next division here in our open Maine on Jew female show. This will be class 36, Maine on Jew spring ever calves, born May to February of 2022.
this class, I think we got a heifer that just overpowers the other two when you get to looking at her as far as her body shape, her foot size, uh, uh, her, her bone structure, just uh, from her shoulder back, that's just a nice female. She gets a little coarser right there in her shoulder, but again, uh, that's not taken away from a heifer that I think is going to make a tremendous cow here that wins this class. Uh, gets a little closer for second and third. I'm going to go with the heifer to me that I just think has a little more springer rib, a little more depth of rib and depth of flank when you get to looking at her. Uh, gives me just a little more of a maternal look up through her head and neck than the one that's going to come out here in third. Real nice heifer here in second. The heifer that's coming out here in third is one that I'd just like to make her just a little more feminine up through her head, up through her neck area, just give her a little more of a maternal look. Uh, she maybe just gets a little terminal there as far as uh, when you get to looking at her from right behind and up through that head and neck area. Well, congratulations in the Shorthorn Ring, Class 28. First place in your division champion will go to Kaya Hendrickson of Charlotte, Montana, with Soul MFS Dreamy Cherry 1014 JET. Second place in reserve in that class will go to Brooklyn Frazier of Meeker, Oklahoma, with KSS Maxim Revival 2110 ET. And third place, and congratulations, goes to Dason Cash of Fay, Oklahoma. We'll now bring in Class 31. These will be junior yearling females. Tremendous set of cattle on the top end of this class, and uh, I think that we're three deep with some some cattle that I like pretty well, but uh, the one that wins this class, yeah, she's overwhelming just in terms of what that one does from a mass and a dimension standpoint. So good there, right there in the center portion of her body. It has some outward curvature to her rib shape and, and still very, very good at the ground. I think that that one's awfully nice. Ideally, maybe just lean that one a shot up there in her front end, uh, but she handles it so well, and her shoulder's still good and gets out and travels really nice. I think that that one's an awfully good place to start in this class. Uh, this heifer that comes next, uh, probably, you know, give this one just a shot more time and let her catch up from a maturity standpoint. She probably rivals that one the best, in my opinion, uh, in terms of cattle that are opened up and genuine in their shape because, yeah, this one's green, uh, but there's some turn and some flair to that female um, and still very good in her rib shape and her ladylike character and structure is just absolutely on point on that one uh, just needs a shot more uh, time to go just a little bit. I think that this heifer that's uh, third, I, I think she gets a little bit just overwhelmed in terms of gauge and total body shape uh, when you study that kid, the cattle right up on top of them. She's a little flatter in her makeup, but she's attractive. She gets out and goes well. Uh, just needs a shot more time, if, in my opinion. This heifer that's going to come next, uh, that one's got plenty of shape for me. I think that she's easy flushing and good in her basic build and conventional in her type. Just doesn't have the bells and whistles that the initial trio does. Young man that's going to round out the class, certainly a good heifer in terms of length and freshness and uh, maturity. Just simply need more of that one. Well, congratulations over here in the main ring. Results of Division Two in Class 36. First place and champion will go to Braxton Rydell of Franklin, Indiana with MCCF MFW Cami. Second place in reserve in that division exhibited by Tyler Miller of Armington, Illinois. Third place in that class went Hunter Morton of Medill, Oklahoma. Fourth place will go to Andrew Triplett of Blanchard, Oklahoma. And fifth place, and congratulations to Tanner Waite to Moundville, Missouri. We'll now bring in Class 37, Maine on June winter heifer calves, born November to December of 2021.
Very good way and a very logical way for me to start in this uh, just pair of heifers out here. The the black heifers just simply so much more of her and, and so much more and just in terms of quality and growth and performance. Uh, but one that I think certainly can stand some competition because that one's extremely long bodied. You study from her, the top side of her shoulder there to where her hip hooks up. That one's very long through the center portion there. Uh, yet still for one with that length has enough reach and go off of both sides of her skeleton, a good place to start. A little red heifer here, moderate in her frame, simply just needs more time and growth and performance to be more competitive in this class. Well, congratulations in that last class over here in her main ring. First place, we'll go to Claire Norris of Eudora, Kansas, with NCC 15%, 119J. And second place in that class, exhibited by Morgan Ray of Stephenville, Texas. We'll now bring in class 38. This will be fall heifer calves, born September to October of 2021. Very good single entry October born female here and uh, much like our last class winner, tremendous length of body in this particular female. I think uh, really long spined and good out of her hip and good in terms of her motion. She probably needs to be just a shot softer in the center portion of her body, but one that uh, I certainly think has a lot of breeding value and breeding flexibility for this young lady. Well, congratulations over here in the main ring. Results of class 28, first place will go to Bailey Matlock of Andarco, Oklahoma, with BK Joyful Breeze 1002 JET. We'll now bring those first and seconds in, select a champion reserve in this division. So we wrap up this fall division in the main Anjou show, not the numbers that we had in some of the calf divisions, but two high quality class winners to come out there and re represent their respective age groups. It does, it comes down to two class winners. For me, it's pretty easy. The young lady that wins the first class is gonna win this division. I think that there's just so much more to that one. Uh, when we study her there in the lower portion of her rib shape, I think uh, that one's more collected when we ask the cattle to go in her spine. I think that that's an awfully nice winner in this division. Young lady that comes out of class two, you're gonna be reserved. And congratulations over here in the main ring, your fall heifer calf champion coming out of class 37, NCC 15%, 119J, exhibited by Claire Norris of Eudora, Kansas. Reserve in that division coming out of class, excuse me, coming out of class 38 will be Bailey Matlock of Andarco, Oklahoma. We'll now look to start your next division. This will be class 39, Maine on June summer yearling heifers, born May to June of 2021.
Well, if you like good cattle, you're going to like this class, top to bottom. This is, uh, Monty was right, it's going to keep getting tougher, and it did right here, for sure. Uh, for me, the heifer that wins the class does so on soundness. I love her up through her front end. I think that's the advantage she has over this heifer that's going to come out here in second. Is she as thick? Probably not. Get her out here on the move, that's where I think she really excels. I love her body shape, I like her hip structure, she hits the ground uh, really good, I like that an awful lot about her. The heifer that's going to come out here in second, she doesn't give me quite the maternal look up through the front end that the heifer that we're starting the class with. She is big and bold in her rib shape, she's big footed, big bone, big when you get behind her, but I'd just like to change her up through that front end compared to the heifer that we're starting the class with. The heifer coming out here next is one I think falls type and kind from her shoulder back. She gets awful wasty right there in her chest floor for me, but she too sets down on a powerful foot, powerful leg, got a lot of hip in her, uh, like that an awful lot about her. Just need to clean her up in that chest floor for me today. This heifer here coming is one that strikes you an awful lot as far as look. She just gets way too far out of her skeleton for me when we get her out here on the move. If you watch those hind legs, she just gets outside of her body when she gets out here on the move. But on the standstill, boy, that's one that you like an awful lot. The next heifer coming, I told this young lady it's just a shame she had to be in this class because that's an awful nice one too. She sits down on a big foot, gets out and moves really free and easy. Probably just like to set that tail head down in her just a little bit for me today, but that's one that's extremely long bodied and adds a lot of pounds of beef to her progeny. Half her round and out the class, just gets a little jammed up in her front end. I'd like to change that about her, but I think that's a nice female too. Let's give her let's give those exhibitors a round of applause in that class. That was a tough class, sir. Well, congratulations back over here in the Shorthorn Ring results. The Class 31 Junior Yearling Females. First place and congratulations will go to CFCSF Dream Lady 140HCXCT. Exhibited by Miller Smith of Pendleton, Indiana. And bred by Cornerstone Farms, Winchester, Indiana. Second place in that class exhibited by Kennedy Arthur of Stillwater, Oklahoma. Third place will go to McKinley Evans of Lorenzo, Texas. Fourth place went to Keegan McGrew of Gettysburg, PA. Fifth place in that class exhibited by Skylar Ward, New Paris, Ohio. And sixth place will go to Lane Blankenship of Orlando, Oklahoma. Now in ring one, we have class 32 senior yearling females. So in this class, uh, we got to kind of project what we think this first one's going to look like as a, 
as a cow and uh, you know she's going to calve at 25, 26 months. As we're comparing a September to a December. The September calved in uh, October so she calved at 25 months so uh, they're both going to calve you know relatively similar as far as uh, time frame but uh, I think the heifer that we're starting the class with uh, I, I like her body shape I like her foot and legs she sets down on uh, she's got uh, start the starting of a, a real nice udder there so I think uh, she needs to come to the top for me the heifer that's already got the coupon on her side with the calf is one that gets just a little wastier right there in her chest for I'd like to maybe shorten these front two teats up just a little bit for me today but uh, she's doing a really nice job with a really nice calf here on her side uh, um, and I think that's going to make a tremendous cow. What a tremendous class of uh, summer born bred females here on the main on juice side and it, it's good all the way one through four but uh, I think the two that, that come to the top of this class I, I think these two are special and, and I think uh, these cattle actually complement and, and are, are quite similar to me in their type and kind. I think there's just um, some subtle differences in the two. The heifer that wins the class, the, the white-bellied heifer standing right in front of me, uh, I think the best way for me to describe that one is unique because that one's got that power and that substance that I like to see in them and cattle that are opened up and, and true and dimensional from a three-dimension standpoint, not just deep-ribbed but round-ribbed and, and, and still has some strength of top and some muscle in that female, yet it all ties together so well in the way that she's so attractive. That one's not freaky necked, but I think that one looks like a female and uh, awfully, awfully good. And I think the advantage that she has in the heifer that, that goes second, as I read that one, is just being a touch leaner in her composition, a touch longer spined, and then I just think she's a shot more genuine and true when we ask the cattle to go in motion when I study them there off of their hind too. I like this heifer quite a bit that comes in second. She's like my class winner from a boldness standpoint and one that's opened up and has true beef cattle shape uh, and still big bodied and good in that regard. She's probably just a little bit more timid when we ask the cattle to go, um, but I think that that one is awfully, awfully nice. Looks like a female, yet has that extra power and substance. Really a long-sided, attractive one here. This white-legged heifer, so fluent and, and extra reach of stride on both ends of her skeleton. This one's awfully high quality, in my opinion. She just runs into two heifers that are just bolder and more pulled apart, um, because I do. I think this one can win some classes in a lot of levels, because she is so attractive. She's so long-bodied, so fluid in her structure. Good cattle there to go third. Uh, the young man that's going to round out the class, I'm telling you, this, there's nothing wrong with this female. I just, when you compare her to some of the other cattle here, she's maybe just a little bit more timid in the way that she handles her hind leg. Uh, just just not as bold and pulled apart as some of the other cattle in this particular lineup, but that's a really good female to round out a class at a national show. Well, on the Shorthorn side here, um, obviously we had a class that was uh, deep all the way from top to bottom, and uh, that was this first class here, and this heifer, uh, I just love her body shape. I like how she ties together up through her front end, sets down on a really good foot and leg, just uh, not a lot of holes in that female. And the heifer that won the second class was one that didn't have quite as much competition, but uh, I think one that's extremely good in her hip structure, maybe just not quite as good right there at the top of her shoulder, uh, but again, that's just nice female. The heifer was second in the first class. Uh, again, that was a really uh, awful tight class. I think she's really nice from her shoulder back. She maybe just gets a, not quite as much uh, maternal look up to her front end as the heifer that, were, that won that class. And the young lady with the cow-calf pair over there is one that uh, I think she's got a tremendous future of her going out and being a really good cow. We just need to maybe shorten those teats up, those front two teats up just a little bit for me today. Uh, if you would, let's give the exhibitors a round of applause in this division. Um, the, the young man's heifer here that won the first class is going to be your champion, and the young man that was second is going to be reserved. And congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Ring. 
your senior champion female coming out of class 31. Congratulations, Miller Smith of Pendleton, Indiana, with CFCSF Dream Lady 140 HCXET. And reserve champion will come out of the same class. ZSF Grand Rosemary's Belladonna, exhibited by Kennedy Arthur of Stillwater, Oklahoma. We'll now look to bring in your final class here in our Shorthorn Female Show. This will be class 35, two-year-old cow-calf pairs. And back over in the main ring, we have the results from that last class in division. Your summer yearling champion, congratulations, goes to Kelton Arthur of Stillwater, Oklahoma, with BBR J of 47 JET. Reserve champion that division. We'll go to Wyatt Dunklau of Wayne, Nebraska, with BBR Junebug 125 JET. We're a nice two-year-old pair over here on the Shorthorn side, a November 27th calf, and uh, she's done a tremendous job raising this calf. This cow's got a nice udder under her. Uh, you maybe make it just a little more balanced if you wanted to change her a little bit, but again, that's a real nice uh, pair that's got a nice coupon on her side. Good job. And congratulations back over here in the Shorthorn ring. Your champion cow calf pair coming out of class 35, PEMB Pinky 24 ET, exhibited by Jessica Hoba of Blackwell, Oklahoma. Well, at this time, over here in the Shorthorn Ring, we'll bring in all of our division champion and reserves. And our judge is going to select his grand and reserve grand champion, Shorthorn Female, here at the Cattlemen's Congress at your Super National Shorthorn Show. Well, at this time, we're going to bring in all of your division champion and reserves over here in our Shorthorn Show. Coming in out of your first division in our female show, your champion was exhibited by Miller Smith of Pendleton, Indiana, with CF Mona Lisa 2101 UHXCT. Reserve champion exhibited by Abilene Sullivan Lawton, Oklahoma. Coming in out of your next division, Champion exhibited by Kennedy Brogdon of Waxahachie, Texas, with Solberg's Cherry Dream ET. Reserve champion in that division exhibited by McKinley Evans of Lorenzo, Texas. Coming in out of your next division, your champion was exhibited by Paige Wickard of Wilkinson, Indiana, with CF Crystal Lucy 230 RKXET. Reserve in that division, and congratulations to Michael Frisbee of Buckingham, Iowa. Coming in out of that next division, champion exhibited by Carter Wickard of Wilkinson, Indiana, with CF Mona Lisa 1121 Flash X. And reserve in that division, exhibited by Haley Jester of Moreland, Indiana. Coming in out of the next division, your champion was exhibited by Kinley Bolin of Walnut Grove, Missouri with CG Diana's final reward, 122 JET. And reserve in that division, exhibited by Weston Ward of Greens Fork, Indiana. Your champion, junior female, congratulations, Kaya Hendrickson of Charlo, Montana with Sol MFS Cherry Dream, 1014 JET. Reserve in that division, exhibited by Brooklyn Frazier of Meeker, Oklahoma. Coming in out of your senior female division, your champion exhibited by Miller Smith, Pendleton, Indiana, with CFCSF Dream Lady 140 HCXET. 
Reserve in that division exhibited by Kennedy Arthur, Stillwater, Oklahoma. And last but certainly not least, your champion, Cow Calf. Congratulations to Jessica Hopaw of Blackwell, Oklahoma with PEMB Pinky 24 ET. Ladies and gentlemen in Jim Norick Arena, let's put our hands together. Congratulate all of our Shorthorn exhibitors here at the Cattlemen's Congress Super National Shorthorn Show. Also, a big round of applause for our judge today, Mr. Jeff Gooden. We'd also like at this time to say thank you to not only our Shorthorn Association, but our junior board that's done such a great job out here in the ring. Let's put our hands together for all of them. Well, what fun this has been for me. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Shorthorn Association, Monty and Cassie, and uh, for asking me to come and judge this show. Uh, I'd like to thank the Cattlemen's Congress also uh, for, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, we're not going to talk about the cattle. Uh, they pretty much describe themselves, I believe. Um, one thing about it, everybody got a fair shake today. Uh, what a good set of cattle. Uh, they're deep, they're cowy. I just think that uh, I, I love the ones we've got back out here. That being said, it's been an honor of mine. Let's give them a big round of applause and I'll go select your champion. Well, congratulations, your grand champion, Shorthorn Female, here at the Cattlemen's Congress, CF, Crystal Lucy, 230 RKXET. Congratulations, Paige Wickard of Wilkinson, Indiana. And congratulations, your reserve grand champion, Shorthorn Female, coming out of Class 28, your junior champion female, Kaya Hendrickson of Charlotte, Montana, with Sol MFS Dreamy Cherry 1014 ET. Again, congratulations to all of those exhibitors. Special thank you to our judge once again, Mr. Jeff Gooden. We have a correction over here in the Shorthorn Ring. My apologies, your reserve champion overall. Coming out of Class 31, Miller Smith, Pendleton, Indiana, with CF, CSF, Dream Lady, 140 HCXET.
What another incredible class here, and, and, and like we've said a couple times, uh, in fact, just give these exhibitors a round of applause just to have a class with this much depth and quality. Uh, I think is truly outstanding when we talk about, you know, what it takes to make these bred females and what it takes to manage cattle at this level. Uh, I think that they're truly outstanding. Uh, this is by far the longest and probably the toughest decision that I've had over the past two days. and. And I'll try to describe it just the best the way that I see it. Uh, I think that the, the heifer that's going to win this class, if, if you had to just truly ask me, maybe that one's not just as powerful as I like them, and maybe not just as from a muscle and a, and a gauge standpoint, but I think everything is just so smooth in this female. I think when you step off to the side, everything transitions, and it's so smooth and so elegant and so balanced. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I'll admit, that one's probably right there on the edge for me in terms of where she's at from a freshness and a condition standpoint, but I think that she's still good. I think, I think the advantage, though, is when we put the cattle in motion, I just think this one remains just a bit more fluid remains maybe just inside of herself just a shot better uh, than the heifer that goes in second. Probably my speed in terms of just power and raw dimension and, and, and uniqueness is the heifer that comes next and, and I certainly like that about her. I like the way that that one's tied in there on the front side of her skeleton and so high tie in there on the, on the top side of her blade. Uh, her angles are so good and, and so much quality in this female. At times when we get them going, I think that she's just a little bit, had a little swing there and just wants to be just a shot hard hitting, uh, but I think those are two two incredibly, incredibly high quality females uh, to go off in this particular class. I like this heifer that comes third and probably doesn't have the bells and whistles as some of the other cattle in this particular class, but I think when we study that one just fundamentally, I think she's as good as, as a lot of the cattle that we've seen over the last couple days. I think uh, she balances up really well for me. She's attractive in her set to her hind leg. She's got enough in terms of that body dimension and lower ribs shape. Uh, I think that that one balances and transitions very well. Probably just doesn't have the, the overall power and uniqueness that the two heifers that go in front of her. I think the same could be said about this heifer that comes next and, and probably doesn't overwhelm you in any certain area, but I think that this so good when you just study the basics of cattle. I think that she's true to her skeleton. I think she's moderate and functional in her type and kind. She's got good teat placement there. I think that that one just makes a tremendous cow for this young man. The heifer that comes next, I really want to grab onto this one because I do think there's some uniqueness and some power uh, when we study that one. It's just when we ask her to go, she just simply gets too far outside of herself in terms of her structure, uh, but a big powerful made uh, bold one there uh, to go there. A bigger framed heifer is going to come next and if we could change the way that this one just handles her spine on the go maybe you know make her just rocked back in that shoulder ever so slightly I think that she makes this class a little bit more competitive because there's some quality and some feature in that particular female. Big long bodied one here that's going to come next and probably just a little plainer when you study her there about her skull shape and, and her face just a little bit more cow headed if you will but one that's sound structured and good bodied big stout powerful white legged one here to come next and certainly like that about her she just passed a little bit in terms of prime there just a little over in terms of her condition and freshness at this stage of the ball game but a good structured nice cow prospect young lady that's going to round out the class just simply need a shot more of that one from a total body dimension and mass standpoint Well, congratulations over here in Class 40, Main on Juice Spring your Yearling Heifers. First place, and congratulations went to Tyler Miller of Armington, Illinois, with BBR Alley 262 JET. Second place in that class, and congratulations will go to Kelton Arthur of Stillwater, Oklahoma. Third place was exhibited by Carly Sheenfield of Lakeland, Florida. Fourth place exhibited by Kyan Herman of Tryon, Oklahoma. Fifth place, exhibited by Lane Fincher of Waxahachie, Texas. Sixth place in that class will go to Bailey Dutra of Hanford, California. Seventh place, Caber Johnson of Clinton, Oklahoma. Eighth place went to Brooks Collier. And ninth place, Kathleen Hamill. 
We're now going to bring in your final class of Maine on Jew females. This is class 41. Really good uh, single entry, February born female, and one, uh, we talk about cattle that are opened up in terms of skeletal width and dimension. I think that this one fits that bill very well. Big feet, big legs on this one, gets out and travels the ring with some ease. Maybe a shot coarser, if you will, when you study her there about her head and neck and her udder placement, or her teat placement there, but I think that that one is awfully, awfully nice, and it's certainly a source of power. Good single entry female. Well, congratulations in class 41. First place will go to Madison Shout of Piedmont, Oklahoma. DUP Jealousy 199 JET. We'll now bring those first and seconds in. Select the champion reserve in your, in your junior yearling division. Another outstanding division here is uh, in your in your older division here in your main on Jew females, and I think three heifers that are extremely good in terms of uh, the way that I like cattle. I think they're all certainly good enough in terms of their structure. I think that they're cattle that are dimensional and have the extra look and and neatness and attractiveness that we like to have in them. I think there's some differences, uh, you know, just in maybe the way the cattle tie together and and maybe being some of them are a bit more wedged in than others, uh, but I think that these are all extremely, extremely good heifers. That first class was, was so good and, and, and deep all the way through. I thought that that was an extremely, extremely tough, or tough class. It's logical to me that we keep those two females together in this division. Well, congratulations back over here in the main Anjou ring. Results of your final division here in this show. Your champion coming out of class 40. Congratulations, Tyler Miller, Armington, Illinois. And reserve champion will go to Kelton Arthur of Stillwater, Oklahoma. At this time, we are going to bring in all of your division champion and reserves. Our judge, Mr. Garrett Lampy, is going to select his grand and reserve grand champion females here at the Cattlemen's Congress in your open main Anjou show.
Well, I, uh, I think that uh, the last couple days of judging your main and main influence cattle, it's, it's been an absolute honor, it's been a pleasure, and quite honestly, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I mentioned uh, the other day that uh, we're starting to try to make some of the main Angus, and, and uh, so uh, this, this is a breed that I respect a lot, but I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, until you get out here and you stand on the dirt and and uh, evaluate these these cattle, I, I did not expect that that the depth and the quality, uh, and, and in particular some of those big heifer classes would be there. Because, but I, I think that that that's a compliment to all of you that are raising these cattle, that are getting them out and presenting them. Uh, because I, absolutely, the presentation in this and all the shows that I judged was absolutely on point, and and I think that these cattle were fed so properly and so right uh, and then and, and, and what we do from a cosmetic standpoint and dressing these cattle and putting them together uh, my hats off to you it's uh, it's quite humbling to stand out here and, and get cattle to come out here just one after another uh, that you genuinely truly like and that you enjoy um, so I'm very honored and very privileged uh, for that. Uh, I, I want to thank everybody here at the Cattlemen's Congress and the American Maine on Jew Association uh, for having me come out here. It's been something uh, that I've been looking forward to, uh, you know, since I got the phone call from Lindsay. I think uh, it was it was a while back. I, I think I was actually clipping a fallborn or something at that time, and I said, you know, Lindsay, I don't really know what I got going on in January, but I'm going to make that work because I was pretty pumped up about it. So, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm ecstatic to be here and uh, you know a couple things uh, uh, my, my oldest boy he's getting a little older and we've been talking about doing showing some heifers and, and this is probably one of the breeds that I'm, I'm really interested in him uh, being a part of I, I see everything that you guys do from a junior association and your leadership I, I have a tremendous amount of respect for the leaders in your breed uh, I think that your junior national from the the stories that I've been told by friends and, and other people in the business is second to none so you know congratulations on that uh, you know hopefully one day uh, we'll get to participate in, in some level on that uh, that end so uh, I guess it would you know uh, my mom is here I have an aunt that lives here in Oklahoma that it's been really good to visit with them uh, the last few days and uh, and uh, my mother-in-law has our three rascals there at home and I'm sure she's ready to give them back off uh, back off to us um, it's been a lot of fun to come out here um, not something that Gretchen and I get to do a lot uh, is get away and and uh, not have um, you know just a ton of work to do so I've enjoyed coming to Oklahoma City and spending some time with her and uh, you know thank you for everything that she does to to allow me to be part of this business and and continue to uh, chase my dreams and my aspirations guys this female show all of your shows have been absolutely incredible but this this high percentage main on Jew female show has uh, it's got me just a little bit weak in the knees because uh, I think uh, that the quality was so good but there's a female that came out here and she hit me extremely hard maybe as good a one as I've had the avail ability to evaluate I'm gonna show her to you Well, congratulations, your grand champion, Maine on Jew female, here in our open show at the Cattlemen's Congress. Kellen Arthur, Stillwater, Oklahoma, with BBR, Jaya, 47JET. And congratulations, your reserve champion coming out of our final division. Congratulations, Tyler Miller, Armington, Illinois, with BBR Alley 262 JET. Well, at this time, we would also like to introduce to you your premier breeder and exhibitor. Congratulations, your premier breeder of our main on Jew show, Blind Badger Ranch. And your premier exhibitor, congratulations to Turner Longacre. 
A special thank you once again to our judge, Mr. Garrett Lampy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here in the Jim Norick Arena, we are going to get started in ring one with your Key Angus show. We'll start with our junior Key Angus show. We'll be looking for a class one Key Angus heifers born May of 2022. Well, over here in the Key Angus ring, we are getting started with Class 1. Key Angus Heifers, May of 2022. We'd like to welcome our judge today, Ms. Kendall Reitenstein of Kersey, Colorado. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and, went, and welcome Ms. Kendall Reitenstein here to the ring. Again, over here in ring two, we are going to start our Aberdeen show at two o'clock. Once again, that'll be at two o'clock. We'll be starting the Aberdeen show. We'll be starting with your junior breeding heifers over here in ring two. Well, good afternoon. It's certainly a pleasure to be out here sorting through the Key Angus show and the Key Show tomorrow, something I'm looking forward to for quite a while. We get started off really strong in this pair of May females, and I, and I, I guess a, a champion in reserve division as well. The heifer that we're going to lead off with is really striking from the side. I, I love her neck and how it ties into the top of her shoulder uh, in comparison to the one behind her. I think there's more just shape and, and turn to her body shape, her forerib, midrib, back into her flank. There's a lot of natural power and spread when you get on top of her, study out of the back of her shoulder. I really like this heifer's look. She's elegant up front. She's neat to look at. You know, maybe in a perfect setting, doesn't set down quite as comfortably as perhaps a heifer in second. And that is where I like this female. She sets down really comfortably off of her hip and her hind leg. You set her from her pin set, hawk to surface. I love the set and just the swoop she has at the surface in terms of looseness of lower joints. She's really feminine about her head and her neck and how it ties in. Just gives up a little bit too much today in terms of just body, totals of just dimension and substance at the surface, but a great way to get us started off here in the Key Angus show. Wow. 
Well, congratulations over here in your Key Angus ring. Results of Class 1 in your first division. Your champion, Summer Heifer Calf. Congratulations, back number 7001, ECAX Ava 293K, exhibited by Gemma Emerson. And second place in reserve champion. We'll go to back number 7002, MD Miss Allegiance 110K, exhibited by Tatum Miller. Very, very good trio of females out here. And honestly, I'm putting one third that I like quite a bit. And honestly, her best days are to come. And that's nothing taken away. These top two are really good. And yet the one that wins, uh, wins in motion for me. You study this one from the ground up. She's huge footed. She's sound structured. She covers her track so flawlessly. And then when the young man gets her parked, She's striking in terms of her look, her neck, and how it sits into the top side of her shoulder. More importantly, get in front of her, get behind her. There's some natural width and spread there. She's a good-chested female. For a young heifer calf, she's fresh. She's good in her chest floor. It sits in her good. Her body shape is right on target. And you get in behind her, she's got some natural spread, natural dimension. That's a really nice heifer calf to lead us off. To me, I guess I debated a little bit more between second and third, and they're complete opposites. This one in second is loaded with body shape. She's loaded with power when you get on top of her, uh, presented extremely good. I like her head and her neck. Uh, to me, in comparison to the one that leads off, and actually the one in third, I'd just like to freshen her up. She's got just a little bit more on her than maybe what I prefer. I'd like to set her down just a little more comfortably. If you study her out of her pin bone, hawk to ground, I didn't 
quite as sound as that heifer that leads us all. That's a good heifer, though, in terms of just body mass, true dimension, still giving you an awesome look from the side. This one here in three is the freshest. There's no doubt about it. She's real sound structured, love her in motion, like her body shape, and just her extra femininity refinement, to me, reads long term. Today, she gets a little off in her hip. She doesn't have quite as much just overwhelming body shape or overwhelming power as the ones that precede her. But I'm telling you, that's a good trio of uh, key Angus females. Congratulations to all those kids. Well, congratulations in class two and your late junior heifer calf division. First place to go to back number 7007 BMW Ace 2 101 KET, exhibited by Braylon Schaefer, Hagerstown, Indiana. Second place in reserve in that division will go to back number 7008. Congratulations to Luke Jennings in third place in that class, exhibited by Rex Harrison. We'll now bring in class three. Kiangis Heifer is born February of 2022. Interesting pair here and quite different in terms of their kind. Uh, the heifer I lead off with really neat up front and yet in this particular pair, she has the advantage just in terms of true dimension and substance. Her body shape, she turns more aggressively out of the top of her spine in terms of her forerib, her mid-body, back into her rear rib and flank. And there's a lot of power in this female out of her hip as well in terms of her upper pin set all the way down to her lower hip and stifle. You know, maybe it uh, needs to set down just a little more comfortably in her rear foot, maybe intensify her at the ground there. I actually thought she had a little bit more bend and set to her hock though than the one and two. This is a good heifer that's really need up front has a lot of body shape a lot of power to go along with it this one and two from the side I really like some things about her her body shape she's real deep and soft in that full rib all the way back into her rear rib and flank she's real square hipped at the standstill as well and level from hooks to pins you get in behind her and watch her go away we got to have just a little more power a little more turn and spread in terms of her body shape and just relax her in her hind leg that's a good pair of cattle though congratulations in that particular division well, congratulations in class three in your early junior heifer calf division. Your champion will go to back number 7010 LLW Card Caroline's Channel 536K exhibited by Tayden Miller. 
Second place in reserve in that class will go to Kevin Hessner. We're now going to look to bring in class four, Key Angus Females, born November of 2021. Just a single entry here, the young lady brings us, and one that is so feminine about her head and her neck and her shoulder, really fresh for her stage of the game and age, and I certainly appreciate that. Her chest sits in her good. Love her body shape from the side and how smooth she transitions from her shoulder all the way back out to her hip. Study her in motion. She covers her stride. She's comfortable. Her pins uh, remain square in motion as well. That's a really nice heifer. Uh, congratulations. Well, congratulations in class four. This will also be your champion senior heifer calf. Back number 7,013, GOP Judy Garland, 114J, exhibited by Kennedy Evans. We'll now get started with your next class. This will be class five, Key Angus Heifers, born August of 2021. Another single entry August heifer here and one that brings forth a lot of power and spread. If you get in behind her and just study her body shape, there's a lot of boldness, a lot of just shape and turn out of the top of her, her spine there into her lower body wall. From the side, she's fresh about her head and her neck and her chest. You know, in motion, we could maybe just relax her in terms of her spine and the looseness of her lower joints. But that's a good heifer in terms of moderation, body, and just sheer, sheer power. Well, congratulations over here in the Key Angus ring. Results out of Class 5. Your champion summer yearling will go to KMEM Stella 184J, exhibited by Peyton Buck. We'll now bring in Class 6. This will be Key Angus Heifers, born April of 2021.
another tremendously good class and a really nice heifer to lead us off with. And, and to me, her main advantage in this particular setting is her structure. Her, she's so flawless at the ground. She takes a big, big step off either end. She's fresh in terms of her head and her neck. I love her body shape because from the side, she's so soft and maternal. And yet you get in behind her, she's still got some turn and she's still got some spread. Is she maybe as stout as the heifer in two? Probably not. Uh, but by no means is she flat. She's still got some turn. She's still got some proportion. This heifer balances extremely well from the side. And like I said, in this setting, she is super sound structured and, and loose in terms of her spine. This heifer in two is no question the status heifer in here. She's really dimensional up high and real powerful out of her hip. Her pin set all the way down to her stifle. And you know, she's fresh as well. You know, you get her in motion though. She gets just a little PC up front. We like to reel her in in terms of her shoulder and just make her more comfortable off either end. That's a good heifer though in terms of moderation and sheer power. This heifer in third is really fresh as well. I love her head and her neck and her chest. When she settles down and stops, she's very balanced. Her chest floor and to her flanks good. Maybe just runs out of the extras. Uh, just a little plainer in terms of her kind and her, and her balance from the side. Didn't overwhelm me with quite as much body shape, but I do like her balance. I like her extra freshness as well. This heifer that comes next, real long spined heifer. Probably the longest hipped, longest, uh, just longest heifer that, uh, of this class. And real good about her neck as well. Just needed a little bit more body shape back into that flank, but a good heifer nonetheless. Congratulations. That's a really nice class. Well, congratulations in Class 6. Your champion late spring yearling will go to Braylon Schaefer of Hagerstown, Indiana with BMW Ace 2 409 JET. Second place in reserve in that class will go to Kennedy Lockhart with WSCC Hennessy 87 JET. Third place in that class was exhibited by Charlie jo Joy Holt. And fourth place, congratulations to Jay Paxton. We'll now bring in class seven. These will be Key Angus females born March of 2021. Really, really nice single entry here. It, it could certainly withstand some more competition. She strikes you initially coming in the ring, uh, not only just from a look and balance and proportionality, but take her to the ground. The basics are there. She's big footed. She's sound structured. She's awesome in terms of her hip and her hind leg. And she reaches so flawlessly at the surface. Yeah, get her on the stand still. Get in front of her. There's some actual width and some spread in terms of her body shape. She's got some natural power working out of the back of her shoulder and drops that down into a beautiful body. She's real fresh in terms of her chest, her neck, her head. Everything balances very nice. This is a good heifer to win this division. Well, congratulations in Class 7. This will be your champion early spring yearling female. Going to back number 7022, BMW Ace 2 325 JET, exhibited by Samantha Van Voris, Bowling Green, Ohio. We'll now look to see Class 8 Key Angus females, born February of 2021. This will be your final class here in our Key Angus Junior Show.
Well, the heat just keeps coming in these single entry divisions, and this one just screams cow in maternal function. Uh, she's awesome in her body shape. She's shaking down a good udder as she gets to become uh, go into the real world here soon. Take her to the ground. She too is so sound structured and big footed, uh, really good in terms of her sweep from her full rib back back into her flank. Getting behind her, there's a lot of female here in terms of her turn and her shape and her curvature of her body back out through her hip. You know, when you get her in motion, she steps good and her hip stays square which is hard to do you know maybe just a dab of chest but I'm not going to be too critical because from that point up she's so fresh about her head and her neck and her shoulder it's a really nice female this division or this champion drive is about to get real good well congratulations in our final division your champion junior yearling We'll go to back number 7023, HIGG Allure 107J, exhibited by Rob Oakley. At this time, we're going to bring in all of your first and seconds, and our judge is going to select her grand and reserve grand champion, King, is female here in your junior show at the Cattlemen's Congress. Well, as they're entering the ring, ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and thank our judge of our junior show and your key Angus females, Ms. Kendall Wrightsensign of Kersey, Colorado.
just a tremendous show, and maybe not huge in numbers, but I'm telling you, the quality of this Key Angus, this, these division uh, winners and reserves are, are awfully, awfully good. And maybe I'm taking just a little longer for my decision, but uh, you breeders, you kids, you, everyone getting these things put together, hats off, because this is not an easy decision. There's a few different ways you could go, and that's just a testament to how high quality these Key Angus cattle are. And, you know, I am going to go through and just talk little things about each one of them. I think they deserve it because uh, you know this heifer out of the first division is striking about her front end quality she's good down her top line she's square out of her hip structure maybe need to loosen her up out of her rear uh, her rear leg placement but that's a good heifer a heifer that came out of division two is uh, got a real, real bright future. I love this thing at the surface in terms of her skeleton. Her structure reads long term as she goes through maturity. She's fresh. She's youthful. She's good about her head and her neck and her chest. Body shape is spot on. That's a very, very good female Division 2. Division 3 out here, uh, real powerful. She's moderate. She's real dimensional in terms of her body shape. Out of her hip structure, she's good about her head and her neck. Like I mentioned in class, maybe just intensify her at the surface in terms of her rear foot and her placement there, but certainly a lot of potential in that female as well. We move on back to the young lady's uh, heifer that came out of a division that certainly could have had a little bit more uh, competition because this is a good heifer. She's very fresh and good about her chest floor in relation to her flank. Her hip is real long and that allows her to step and reach so good out of her rear skeleton. She's good about her top line. Her body shape from the side is awesome as well. Maybe not quite as powerful as a couple out here, but that's a very good female, that particular division. One coming next, very powerful, very moderate. Maybe runs out of the extras from the side in terms of balance, but certainly going to be deemed a functional cow. And then we work back to these, uh, these last three big breads, and I'll be just completely honest, it's real close between these three. I'm going to describe them to you how I see them. The young man's have her here is so good from the side. Her body shape, her sweep from her full rib back into her midrib, back into her rear and flank is almost picture perfect when he gets her stopped and set up. I love her skeleton. I love her hip and her hind leg. You know, maybe in comparison to the two behind her, there's not quite as much just genuine power or spread when you get right in behind her. But like I said, in her division, she doesn't lack it. All right. It's just in comparison, she's not quite as stout, not quite as powerful. Her silhouette from the side is breathtaking. She's fresh about her head and her neck, her chest, and how it sits back into her flank. That's an awfully nice heifer. Heifer that comes out of the division right behind her, uh, just striking. Her, her balance, her presentation, her body shape, her power. Take her to the ground. She's big footed. She's sound structured. They've kept her extremely fresh for a big heifer here in terms of her chest, her shoulder in comparison to the one I'm about to talk is just a little smoother and how it sits in her. Her knee sets a little squarer up front. I really like this heifer's power. You get in behind her, there's a lot of female there in terms of her spread out of her shoulder into her spine and out through her hip. Maybe not quite as just swoopy bellied as the one I'm about to talk, but she still has plenty. She's real good from her forward back into her rear and flank. It's a nice, nice heifer. And then with the one we just talked in our last division just screams maternal function and cow. Uh, she's awesome in terms of her body shape. She's shaking down a good udder. She's sound structured. She's big footed. Good down her top line. I like her neck and her head. Maybe just a little dab of chest and when we get her out here has just a little more shoulder uh, than, than maybe uh, ideal but by no means is it causing a big issue. This heifer is awesome in terms of her body shape, just her ability to stay that fresh and that comfortable for being a big bread is impressive. A few little details there. This is an awesome, awesome lineup of cattle. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow as well, but I want to thank you guys for having me. The Key Angus breed holds a very special place in my heart, so thank you breeders, thank you kids, and everyone for getting these things dialed in. Ringside, let's go ahead and put your hands together for all these exhibitors. We'll get you a pair of champions. Well, congratulations, your grand champion, Key Angus, female here in our junior show. Coming out of Class 7, Samantha Van Voris, Bowling Green, Ohio, with BMW Ace 2, 325JET.
And congratulations, reserve champion, coming out of Class 8 in your final division. Your champion junior yearling, Rob Oakley, with HIGG Allure 107J. Congratulations once again to those exhibitors. A special thank you to our judge, Kendall Reitzenstein. We will now get started over here in ring one with your open Kiangas female show.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we have our judge over here in ring one. We'll get started with your open Kiangas female show here in just a moment. We'll get started with class one, Kiangas heifers, born May of 2022. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get started over here in your Key Angus ring. This will be your open female show. We're excited to welcome Mr. Brandon Callis of Minco, Oklahoma.
And over here in ring two, we are going to get started with your Aberdeen show. We'll be starting with your junior breeding heifers. We're excited to welcome your judge, Miss Macy Goretzka of Stillwater, Oklahoma. Macy is the assistant livestock judging coach and master's student at OSU. She got her associates from Redlands Community College and bachelor's and master's degree at OSU. She grew up raising and showing cattle with her family. She went on to judge then at Redlands Community College, then continued livestock judging career at OSU, where she was a member of the 2021 national champion team and recently helped coach the 2022 national champions. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and welcome our judge over here in ring two, Miss Macy Goretzka. Well, as we get started, I just want to say thank you to having me uh, come out and judge today. I've really been looking forward to it. Uh, we've got a nice single entry to start us off. The young lady, whenever she gets her heifer uh, set up from the profile and she wants to cooperate with her, I think she's got a look of quality, refinement up front. Uh, she's got some good pieces to go on down the road. If you're going to nitpick on her, you could probably just relax her a little bit in the angle of her shoulder, uh, but she's not really convinced that she wants to be a show heifer yet. Uh, she'll settle down as she continues uh, to get a little bit older. Let's go ahead and congratulate her. Great way to kick us off. Well, congratulations in Class 1A, summer percentage in purebred heifer calves. First place will go to DCS Crackle 10K, exhibited by Ava Summers of Lindsay, Oklahoma. We'll now look to see Class 1B. These will be summer percentage and purebred heifer calves, born May of 2022. Here on our key angle side, a really good way to, to kick off the show. Uh, I think two nice, promising heifer calves, but I think the one up front still a pretty solid decision and one to go with. Uh, again, her look of quality or her presence and outline, you really, really enjoy the study. Uh, her body shape, I, I like. Still one that, that's fresh and youthful enough, but yet uh, I like the, the bulk and density she carries there through her rib cage and her, her upper hip there. If you're going to be critical of that female at, at all, and for some people it's not a problem, I'd square her up from behind ever so slightly as she goes, but still a loose, uh, limber one that does a lot of good, got a bright future. I'd like to have her here in second. She probably does correct the faults of your class winner as far as just a little square moving from behind. Again, she's bold, centered as well, and, and neat looking probably just a little more off in her hip maybe just not the same kind of body ass and volume we find in that class when a good pair of females to get us kicked off Another nice single entry here in this May class. I think a heifer that's good in terms of her moderation, her body type, uh, one that when she sets up, I still think has some extension up front. If you're going to pick on her, she probably wants to drop just a little bit out of her pin set, uh, get just a little straighter in the set to her hock, so we could reconstruct her a little bit in the way she gets out and utilizes her hip and hind leg, uh, but in terms of her body type, her moderation, I, I think she's got a lot of upside for this young man. Congratulations, another good single entry. Well, congratulations over here in the Key Angus ring, your champion summer half for calf. We'll go to back number 7202, ECAX AVA 293K, exhibited by Gemma Emerson. Second place in reserve in that division, exhibited by Tatum Miller of Big Spring, Texas. We're now going to bring in Class 2. These will be Key Angus Heifers, born March of 2022. Back over in the Aberdeen ring, results from Class 1B, first place, went to back number 101, CLT Miss Red Perf, 01K, exhibited by Patterson Farm, Family Farm in Findlay, Ohio.
Well, we bring our, our first two class winners. They are both single entries uh, back out here. I think a good first division that we've got. Um, I, I think both of these heifers have a lot of upside for uh, for these two young people. Uh, probably could pick on both of them, and we talked about them in class, just in terms of their structure a little bit. Uh, I think between them, in my mind, there's one that probably just has a little more substance, uh, a little more body, and then even probably matches that with a little more substance of foot and bone at the ground as well. Young man out of the second class will be your champion. Young lady up front will be reserved. Congratulate both of them. Uh, good division. Well, congratulations in our first division over here in your Aberdeen ring. Your champion heifer calf coming out of class 1B. Congratulations goes to Patterson Family Farm, Finley, Ohio with CLT Miss Red Perf 01K. And second in reserve in that division is going to come out of class 101A. Congratulations, Ava Summers, Lindsay, Oklahoma. Well, now bringing Class 1C. These will be late spring percentage in purebred heifer calves, born April of 2022. A nice heifer uh, that I really like, I think specifically from her shoulder back, uh, I think her body type, the depth to her rib, uh, I think of the we've seen so far, she probably is uh, just the most comfortable in terms of her build or lower joint work, uh, the way she handles herself in motion. Uh, I think if you're going to nitpick her just from her shoulder forward, she's got a little more leather. Uh, she could be just a little neater and a little more refined there about her head and the bottom side of her neck. Uh, but from there back, I, I like her it just in terms of her body type being the most comfortable uh, that we've seen yet in terms of her structure. A good single entry. Congratulations to him. Well, congratulations over here in ring two in your Aberdeen ring. First place in class 1C. We'll go to back number 102, DCS Kuna 3K, exhibited by Connor Summers, Lindsay, Oklahoma. We'll now look to see class 1D. These will be spring percentage in purebred heifer calves, born March of 2022.
I think a uh, nice trio that we've got, uh, and I'm pretty comfortable with the way they line up. Uh, the heifer that's going to go ahead and lead off, I, I think when the young lady gets her parked and set up from the profile, uh, she's the one that probably hits you the hardest just in terms of her presence out here. Uh, the way she ties her neck out of the top side of her shoulder, her presence and balance from the side. I think it is the most attractive out here. Uh, if you're going to pick on her, she needs to be just a little more laid back in the angle of her knee and her shoulder. Uh, but I think uh, we, we could probably pick a little bit on all three of them. I like her quality, her presence, her femininity uh, to go ahead and lead us off. The heifer in second, if you start at the ground, may have the most just in terms of substance, uh, foot and bone. Uh, I like that about her. Uh, she's just kind of wanting to fight the halter at times. She gets just a little rounder out of her hip comparative to the heifers on either side of her, she's probably just a little more conservative in terms of her size as well. Uh, so we could change some some balance things as well to make her uh, just a little more unique out here. The heifer that's going to be third when you get in behind her is probably actually the thickest and the boldest in the turn to her rib. Uh, I really like that. Whenever you get up on top of her, she's got a little more substance. It's just from the side we need to soften her back into her flank. Uh, the way she transitions from the base of her chest back back up into her flank. We just need to correct her a little bit in terms of her balance, correct her attitude too, so that young man uh, can get her shown, but he's doing a good job sticking with it. Let's go ahead and congratulate all three of those exhibitors on a nice class. Very, very good class, very deep and, and competitive class uh, all the way through as you study through these. And then these top two obviously probably have a few more advantages and, and not just performance, but just the way they're built and put together. Uh, and so and there's some trade-offs on these two as you go back and forth. And, and I do understand uh, we show in this surface uh, several times a year. This is the most unforgiving surface in America, if you ask me. And so if you don't have one that's right at the ground, it gets a little uh, har harmful for for you and that's where this one uh, leads off this class. She's so much bigger and better in terms of foot quality and shape. Uh, I think because of that, the longer we walk these girls out here, the looser that one becomes, the more loose she is in terms of the way she engages and goes and reaches. Her shoulder lays back, her knee parks in there correctly. I like her look. Uh, you know, does she have the extra width that I'm usually accustomed to just falling in love with? No, but you get up in front of that one and study true chest width. We can't call that one a narrow bovine by any manner as well but boy I love that one's movement and the way she sits down and that's what gets this one in trouble for me uh, if this one moves any looser any better particularly uh, up front I switch those two because that's my kind of body shape that's my kind of hip and power I love to see in them I love that one's heaviness of bone and, and structure there and then she still comes together with a very very quality look more we're out here the more she starts to fight things the worse it becomes she wants to search up front just a little more she was starting to drive and go just a little outside herself off of a rear skeleton. That's an awfully nice pair of cattle, though. Heffrey run here next and third. Just ran into an incredible pair. Love the softness of her body. Still one is very extremely attractive there, uh, the front part of her as well. We can lengthen out of her hip and, and set her down in her spine, and she's on the go ever so slightly, but boy, does a good job pulling her together, getting her right there. Just a real cow individual here that rolls around next. I love her extra width and shape. Uh, her boldness is good. Just wish she had the bone and foot to match everything she's got up high to really throw her balance together. At times, she looks just a little more vertical there in her knee and shoulder. This is the green one here that, that closes our class. Smooth made. She's neat to look at there as well. Just today, she's just a little more behind in terms of body volume and softness relative to contemporaries. Probably structurally, there's a thing or two. She does just a little better than the ones in front of her, but I like to open her up, and she too moved just a little more coordinated off of her rear too. But very, very deep, very competitive class. Nice pair up top. going to leave these two uh, the way they came in and I think uh, you just need to get them lined up that way. The young ladies it's going to lead off. Uh, I think whenever you get in behind them, uh, she's the one that's easily uh, just a little more powerful in the turn right behind her shoulder. She comes back uh, wider to her upper hip and pin set and she's got more true shape uh, and just muscularity. And I think for being the stouter, bolder maid heifer, she's actually the one that's also a little more comfortable, a little more correct in her lower joint work. Uh, and so I think 
from there, from her shoulder back. Uh, I think that's a very nice individual. If you're going to pick on her, she needs to be just a little more refined, a little more feminine up front, especially about the top side of her neck. She's getting just a little bit crusty there, but it kind of matches her shape and substance from there back. The heifer that's going to be second probably does have a bit of that advantage just in terms of the top side of her neck, her refinement. Uh, when you get in behind her, though, she's just a little flatter uh, and just a, a little narrower from behind. And then she, too, needs to be a little more relaxed in the angle of her shoulder and front end and just a little more comfortable off either end. A nice pair there, really nice class winner. Congratulations. Well, congratulations back over here in the Aberdeen Ring. Results of your last two classes. Class 1D, first place exhibited by Rian and Nickel of Mount Oklahoma. Second place exhibited by Rhett Nickel. And third place was exhibited by Wyatt Brock. In Class 1E, first place and congratulations went to Miranda Morgan of Morgan, Utah. And second place in that class was exhibited by Sullins Ranch of Mount Oklahoma. We'll now bring in your first and seconds, and our judge will select your champion and reserve in this division. Back over in your Key Angus ring, results from class two in your late junior heifer calf division. Your champion will go to Braylon Schaefer with BMW Ace 2 101 KET. Reserve champion in that division will go to Luke Jennings of Felicity, Ohio with BMW Ace 2 100 KET. Third place in that class was exhibited by Rex Harrison. Fourth place exhibited by Holt Cattle Company. And fifth place and congratulations to Justin Holt Cattle. Now in ring one, we have class three. These are Key Angus Heifers, born February of 2022. Got an interesting pair here, and we're going to leave them like they, they came in. Uh, the one we're going to lead off with, just uh, quite a bit stouter and more opened up. Uh, I prefer her more moderate frame of the, of the two as well in terms of just proportion and how everything fits together. Beautiful from the side there. Uh, not, not perfect in her structure. You lay her back at her knee. Uh, she's just a little awkward set to rear leg as she goes, but although she's not as correct as I like her, to me she still utilizes her structure in a more comfortable manner, though, than the one we are going to put second. Uh, putting second here, deep, deep-sided, really, really smooth mane, got the really long extended front end, just gives you a lot of female quality and, and, and character to her as you study her. Still has some bone there. Just when you get in behind her, for me personally, I like to open her up. I want to see her just a little looser, more engaging as she gets on the go. She gets just a little tighter and shorter to her step. But again, good pair here in this class and division. Well, congratulations in your early junior heifer calf division. Champion will go to back number 7213 LLW card Caroline's channel 536K exhibited by Tatum Miller of Big Spring, Texas. And second place in reserve in that division will go to BMW Why Not 206K exhibited by Kevin Hesser of Leesburg, Indiana. We'll now bring in class four. These will be Key Angus Heifers born November of 2021. Got another quality heifer here in our, our Key Angus show. A, a single entry, uh, a lot of uh, body volume and just broodiness uh, to this particular female. Awesome in her rib cage and the way she reads. Uh, still one that, that lays her muscle onto her skeleton in a pretty positive and, and feminine manner there as well. And then you get her from the side. I still think her head and neck come out of the top of her blades in an attractive enough manner. Still sets down on her feet and legs pretty good here as well. Maybe just a touch planer up front, if you will, uh, but still a, a nice kind of cattle here to represent this class. Well, congratulations in class four. Your champion senior heifer calf goes to GOP Judy Garland, 114J, exhibited by Kennedy Evans of Campbellsburg, Kentucky. We'll now look to see your next class over here in ring one. This will be class five. Key Angus Heifers, born April of 2021.
three nice class winners that we have out here for this spring division and, and I think each of them have some things that I like about them uh, they're just a little bit different in terms of their type and kind uh, so we'll run through them real quickly and, and I'll let you know what I think uh, the heifer that comes out of the first class uh, I think uh, in terms of her build and her lower joint work she's one of the most comfortable that we've seen I think her depth of body uh, is really good if you get in behind her maybe comparative to another one that's out here she's not a, not quite as bold in the spring to a rib and probably doesn't have quite as much substance uh, but I still think that heifer has got some quality heifer out of the second class one that's got some extension up front uh, I really like that about her uh, she probably gets just a little out horsed by the cattle on either side of her uh, plus we need to relax her just a little bit in the angle of her shoulder and her front end I think uh, of all three that we've out, out here we could probably pick on her structure the most and, and then she also gives up just quite a bit in terms of substance. Heifer out of the last class, I, I think whenever you have a rear three-quarter view, uh, this female is where you really like her because I think of the lineup, she the most impressive just in terms of the boldness of her rib the substance and power that she has and yet to be the most powerful and have the most substance I still think she's probably uh, the most comfortable just in terms of her lower joint work we picked on her in class and she gets a little thicker about the top side of her neck and she's not the most feminine there uh, but I think she matches it from their back so that's what I see uh, between these three cattle uh, I think the one that best suits me just combines uh, some unique things in terms of substance and power still being really good in terms of her lower joint work young lady out of the last class will be your champion well congratulations over here in the Aberdeen ring your champion in our heifer calf division your junior heifer calf division coming out of class 1e congratulations to Miranda Morgan of Morgan Utah bring in that second place uh, and I certainly don't think that she takes away uh, anything in terms of quality and having some presence out here uh, I think the one for me though that probably best follows up our champion in this division uh, in terms of her her build her structure her body type young man out of that first class will be reserve and congratulations your reserve champion junior heifer calf coming out of class 1c exhibited by connor summers of lindsay oklahoma we'll now look for class 1f these will be senior percentage and purebred heifer calves born september to october of 2021 Another good class and a neat heifer here that leads off. Uh, she's one that's a little deceiving, I'll be honest. So you get to the side of this one and, and she's so smooth in the way everything blends together from her shoulder uh, there into her rib cage and, and out through her hip and the levelness and length of her. You get in behind her, maybe not expect one to walk as wide. That's probably the most correctly structured one, at least from behind, from hip to hock to ground, the squareness that she carries. And that was a surprise, but pleasing to me as we got back there and studied that one. Still sets them down on our feet and legs in a smooth way. Got a real cow a cow look, but yet there's still some cow potential and power when you get in behind that. Nice heifer here leads off. You can debate back and forth with the next two. I just think this one's front skeleton probably, and the fact that she's just a shade leaner probably 
helps her in terms of movement. Uh, neck set's good, body shape's good, she's got plenty of power. I like to modify her hind leg just a, a shade there as well and set it down differently, but still a good heifer. This one parked on the standstill, you can move her up a notch pretty quickly. Uh, a lot of the levelness, uh, one that's chock full of power and stoutness and she's really, really robust. Just one I like to lean up a little bit and maybe more so her front skeleton wants to give her a few more problems, get a little aggressive in terms of how wide she gets off those two. Heifer here just probably just needs more body if we're just being honest. I think structurally, looseness, she's better probably than the next two in terms of comfort of movement. Just gives up a little much in terms of just true body and power and just body volume relative to those two ahead of her. But again, four nice heifers there in that class. Just a single entry here in this division, and young lady does a great job getting this heifer shown. I really like her in terms of moderation. I think she's got some substance of body and some depth to her, uh, so I can really appreciate that about her. Going to pick on her, it's probably just in terms of her balance. Uh, she just gets a little thrown off in terms of her front end, the way she comes out of her hips. She's just a little bit rounder off either end. Uh, we could change some things. Uh, I think that would make her hit you just a little bit harder from the profile but she's doing a great job let's give her a round of applause well congratulations over in the Aberdeen ring your senior heifer calf champion coming out of class 1014 01f my apologies back number 108 TCS breeze 1d 44 J exhibited by Ava Summers of Lindsay Oklahoma back over in the Kiangas ring results from class 5 your champion late spring yearling female exhibited by Braylon Schaefer of Hagerstown, Indiana with BMW Ace 20409 JET. Reserve champion congratulations to Charlie Joy Holt of Aberdeen, South Dakota. Third place in that class exhibited by Kennedy Lockhart. And fourth place will go to Jay Paxton, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Another quality single entry we bring here, and, and again, a really cool presence about this female, uh, extra body volume uh, to her there as well. Her head and neck set, sets in there the right way, still has some, some dimension when you get in there, uh, up high on there, and again, comes together very well. She wanting to fight it just a little bit, and so it's hard to read what she really truly does in her spine, so we'll make a better evaluation on that when we bring her back in, uh, but still, that's a neat heifer here to represent this class. Well, congratulations over here in the Key Angus Ring. Results of your early spring yearling division. Your champion and congratulations, Samantha Van Voris, Bowling Green, Ohio, with BMW Ace 2325 JET. You can get just a little bit better of a read on this heifer while the young man's got her stopped and parked there from the profile. Uh, I think whenever she does cooperate and pull herself together, uh, she's got a look of balance there about her, and I, I really like that. I think if you get in behind her as well, uh, she's got some substance and turn to her rib. She's good in the depth back into her flank. Uh, so whenever she does settle down into herself and set up there from the side, uh, I think that heifer's got some good pieces. Now in motion, she kind of wants to drop out of her front end and get just a little more rock forward in her shoulder and she's maybe even just a little more open and not the smoothest about it uh, but I still like her boldness of rib and body type from their back young man's doing a great job well congratulations over here in ring two your champion summer yearling percentage and purebred female coming out of class 1g Goes to back number 109, DCS Jill 12J, exhibited by Wyatt Brock of Spring Hill, Kansas. We'll now bring in class 1H. These will be spring yearling purebred and percentage heifers born March, April of 2021. Another quality individual here that that enters the ring. Uh, love just uh, a lot of things about this one in terms of just that look and, and ladylike appearance up front. Uh, but yet that one obviously uh, has the advantage of, of being farther along, but there's still some width and some substance to this particular female. Love the utter design and what's starting to develop there. I still like for being as far along as she is. She's still limber and loose and still reaches her front step like she needs to. Another nice heifer here. We'll continue to, to critique on maybe just a little more in our, in our lineup here, but nice heifer here to represent this class and division. 
Well, congratulations over in the Key Angus Ring out of your final division. Your champion junior yearling will go to HIGG Allure 107J, exhibited by Rob Oakley of Livingston, Tennessee. At this time, we'll bring in all of those first and seconds out of your divisions here in our Key Angus show. And our judge, Mr. Brandon Callis, will be selecting his grand and reserve grand champion Key Angus females. A really nice spring yearling that comes in and probably uh, makes uh, uh, the heat just go up a, a little bit. I, I think in terms of her presence and quality, uh, she's maybe one of the best that we've seen so far. Young man's done a great job getting this heifer presented today. Uh, I like her in terms of her look and presence up front. I think the way her neck ties to the top side of her shoulder and then the turn right out of the back side of it and the substance and dimension that she has uh, is really good. She matches that at the ground, too, uh, with the right kind of foot and bone. I think when you study her from the side, I don't think that you can necessarily uh, call her shallower back into her flank. She's maybe just got a, a touch more a chest uh, down there in the base of it, and, and I think that's probably uh, what at times you could change a little bit in her look from the side. Uh, but that's being critical because I still think she's got a ton of quality. Standing still, her hip and hind leg reads good. In motion, she gets just a nickel extra set to her hawk, uh, but she's still functional. She still gets out and goes, and so I'm just telling you a couple little things that we could change uh, and still a really high-quality female. Congratulations to him. Well, congratulations over here in the Aberdeen ring. Results of class 1H. First place, go to back number 110, ILC Jenny, 17J, exhibited by Benjamin Burling of Gardner, Kansas. We'll now look to see class 1I before we finish our junior percentage and purebred female show over here in the Aberdeen ring. Back over in the Key Angus ring, if we could please put our hands together for all of our division champion reserves here in your open Key Angus show. Also a big round of applause for our judge, Mr. Brandon Callis, Minco, Oklahoma. This heifer is just tremendous in terms of her rib and body type. Uh, just v reads very, very maternal and, and broody in that regard. Uh, great in, in the way she transitions and sweeps back into her uh, rear rib and flank. Uh, I think if you're going to pick on her, I think especially in motion, she gets just a little more rock forward. Uh, she doesn't move out of her front end quite like you'd like to see her. And then because of it, she wants to come up in her spine, dish a bit in her loin. And then if you get in behind her, she wants to... To, uh, swing those uh, back to right outside of herself so we could change her just a little bit in motion and, and make her maintain her balance just a little bit better uh, but I think that's uh, one that you've just got to appreciate in terms of uh, maternal look and rib and body type congratulations to him another good single entry Boy, this is a, a heck of a set of uh, 
keying his cattle here. Uh, obviously not, not as big of a show, but uh, I challenge one to, to be as stout uh, on the top end as what this is uh, all the way through. That was a good way to start with this calf. Uh, she's neat. Uh, I think the sky's the limit with that one. That kind of look, uh, that kind of presence, she, yet her body shape's right, her, her hip and, and, and skeleton still set down in a very correct way. Like I said, for me personally, you, you open that one up at the ground just to shave, but that one can continue to do that as we continue to feed her on and go. Uh, there's a lot to like about that one. That pair that came out of that next class, again, uh, liked them quite well. Uh, I think both of them uh, just still have a lot of promise. Uh, just depends, uh, I guess, on maybe how they're acting and what things are going on uh, as far as how they move and go. We can call that one on the other side probably good enough and justify, but I do love just the foot quality and excellence in which and looseness in which this one moves really, really neat up there through her hip neck, uh, th her neck posture there as well. Another stouty that comes out of this next division. Opens up well. Bold in her body. Neat up front. Just wanted to change your hind leg uh, once again. Uh, one that came out of this next class division was a single uh, awesome cow look to this one in terms of just boldness and smoothness and softness is very good. Very broody. Very practical but yet there's still some show element and feature to her as she sets her head and neck there. Uh, again probably if you're going to just really get down to it and try to compare these things you like to maybe modify her hip just a shade and change her right there up front in terms of her chest in terms of the company that she's in but that one's still deserving out here and so I'll be honest this sees three and the rest of them if you really get down to it for me uh, it's hard to make breads and then keep them in the rig and condition that we've kept these three and still keep some movement and some flexibility in it uh, there as well and so that's where my my priorities are going to lie this time. This one here right in front of me, uh, again, a lot to like from this vantage point right here. Uh, so smooth, so neat, uh, so put together very, very well. And again, when you get in behind her, that one still moves and, and travels with some squareness. Now we have some more company here to really break down and break her down into. Uh, she is truly bold and open up in terms of extra boldness. Probably not, but if you call that one enough, that one's silhouette, that one's smoothness and posture really gets you going pretty quickly. This one right in here behind her uh, probably has the, the benefit of the big fresh hair coat and that don't hurt things uh, but just a, a little stouter featured look to her uh, of these three and, and still one I think that's plenty pretty enough when you get to looking at her she's got some hip up high when you study her, her boldness as you probably study these three and go from their hip to the ground she's probably the one I want to square up out of her hawk and just make her go just a little more correctly right there from behind she can come in uh, there ever so slightly there but again uh, that's a nice nice bovine with a high quality look and in presentation to her and I still think she's in the mix quite solidly. The big bread here, again, sometimes these bigger breads are harder to read because they'll get a little soft back. This isn't one of them. Uh, a boy awesome in her body shape and still the look of freshness that she has. Uh, one that still has some stoutness to her uh, there as well. You know, you could lengthen out of her hip probably just a touch. Probably where I love this female and I'm one that likes to study these cattle from a three-quarter view. You get to the front three quarter of this one that's a tank in the way she opens up with squareness but yet she lays her shoulder into her the right way she's got a stout head but yet it's maternal and to me the rest of her body reads the same that's a stout functional animal still very maternal in what she does heavy bread with a good udder, still handling herself very, very well. So there's a lot of ways you can go out here. There's probably two of them that mirror each other a touch more, and then one of them just a touch more my speed in terms of extra power and width. So let's give all these uh, folks a big, big round of applause. Awesome set of key Angus females. And congratulations, your grand champion, Key Angus Female, here in our open show. Coming out of that final division, congratulations, Rob Oakley of Livingston, Tennessee, with HIGG Allure 107J. Well, we bring these two heifers out here uh, for this division, and they're a little bit different in terms of their type and kind. Uh, we talked about them in class, but I'll touch on them just a little bit uh, before we select uh, your champion in reserve. Uh, the young man up front out of the first class, uh, we talked about her just in terms of her quality uh, and presence, her presentation, too. Uh, I think one of the best that we've seen so far. Uh, when she gets stopped and parked from the profile, I really like her look about 
balance that she has. Her return to her rib and body type uh, is very good too. I think she matches that with uh, uh, the advantage probably in just substance of foot and bone work. Uh, we picked on her. Uh, I think that uh, even though everything fits together, she's got a little bit uh, down at the base of her chest. She could be just a little bit neater there. And even though standing still, her angles all read pretty good. In motion, she gets just a little extra set to her hind leg. Even though I think uh, she could be a little more correct in the set to her hind leg, I think between the two of them, I probably prefer her structure. I think it's just a little more correct, and I think it allows her to better maintain her balance in motion. Young man's heifer out of the second class, one that is just moderate, broody, just looks like she's got a lot of brood cow potential uh, as she goes on. I, I really like her, her body type, the sweep back to her rear rib and flank. I think with that, uh, when you really study her in motion, specifically, uh, is where things get probably just a little more spread. I, I think we need to change her in the way she moves out of her front end, make her top line stay in her a little bit better, and keep her squared up from behind as well. Uh, but like I said, moderation, body type, really, really good in her. So I, I think it's probably obvious which one hits me just a little bit harder. Young man up front is going to be champion. Young man right behind him will be reserve. Well, congratulations. You're champion in that division. We'll come out of class 1H. Congratulations to Benjamin Burling of Gardner, Kansas, and reserve champion coming out of class 1I, Connor Summers of Lindsay, Oklahoma. We're now going to bring in all of those division champion and reserves, and our judge is going to select her grand and reserve grand champion female. Over here in ring one, we are going to take a brief photo break at the backdrop. We'll return back with your Key Angus Bull Show. Back over in the Key Angus female ring, your reserve grand champion was exhibited by Braylon Schaefer, Hagerstown, Indiana. Well, we've got a great lineup uh, out here for our percentage uh, grand drive, and, and I think uh, these cattle are just a little different as we go through, and, and I want to talk about each of them just a little bit. Uh, we'll start with the young man up front, the red and white heifer. Uh, I think even though she's obviously the greenest one out here, uh, I think she's got some quality and some good pieces. She's extended. She's got some refinement about her neck up front. I think her, her body type, the lower part of it is good. She's got some substance 
presence of foot and bone too. Uh, and so there's a few things uh, I really like about her. We picked on her a little bit uh, in division there and in her class. She wants to drop out of her pin set, get a little straighter in the set to her hawk, and maybe comparative whenever you get in behind her, she's probably not just quite as shapely or bold in the upper turn to her rib and doesn't have quite as much shape uh, comparative to some of the other heifers that we'll talk about, but I think she's got some upside for him. Heifer out of the second division, I, I think when you get to a rear three quarter, uh, she is very, very impressive to me just in terms of her, her boldness, her shape. Uh, she gets bigger out of her upper hip and pin set and has some dimension to her lower quarter. So I really like uh, a female that can have some extra substance and I still think she's functional in terms of her structure. Uh, I think it's probably no surprise she's just a little crestier about the top side of her neck uh, and that's her downfall and that, that's where you can pick on her is up front. She needs to be just a little more feminine in terms of her head and neck uh, and so we could change her there. But like I said a couple times before, I think she really matches it from there back. Young lady out of the third division, we talked about her heifer, uh, just in terms of her body type, having some depth uh, back into her flank. I like that about her. There's some things that we could change just in terms of her balance. Uh, she's just a little lazier out here. Uh, she doesn't want to tie her neck uh, to quite as high to the top side of her shoulder. And then she gets rounder out of her hip too. So we could probably elevate her a little bit off either end of her structure. And I think that would probably make her hit you just a little bit harder. When the young man's heifer came in in her class, uh, she, in division, she was really not wanting to cooperate with them, and so she probably didn't give me the, the best first impression, but when she settles into herself, uh, I think that heifer's got a nice look. I, I think she's got some substance and dimension to her. Uh, she's got a little bit of vase of chest, but uh, I think uh, when, you, when you see her in motion, uh, she probably wants to drop out just a little bit up front and get just a little rounder out of her hip, but I think stopped and collected from the profile, that's probably one of the better looking heifers that we've got out here. Young man's out of the last division. Uh, we talked about her when she came in, probably upped things just a little bit in terms of quality and presence. Uh, he's done a great job getting this heifer presented today. Uh, I like her look up front, the turn to her rib, just her proportions all fit together really nicely. We picked on her just having uh, a little bit in the base of her chest. She could be just a little bit neater there. Uh, and she gets a little extra set to her hind leg, specifically uh, on that rear left too. Sometimes she wants to favor it uh, just a little bit more. Uh, but I still think that she's plenty functional in terms of her build and comparative to some of the other ones. Maintains her balance plenty good whenever he gets her out and circles her around. Uh, so that's the differences between the cattle. Uh, I think even though there's some differences in terms of type and kind and we didn't have the most numbers, uh, there's some good ones out here. Uh, I'm going to put this down, take one more look at them. We'll get you a champion reserve, but we need to congratulate all these young exhibitors. Uh, it's been a great show. Well, congratulations, your grand champion in our junior show for your percentage, Aberdeen, coming out of class 1H. Congratulations will go to Benjamin Burling, Gardner, Kansas, with ILC, Jenny 17J.
And congratulations, your reserve champion. We'll go to Miranda Morgan, uh, Morgan, Utah, with ILC Kokomo 3K. Again, congratulations to those exhibitors. We will start our full blood show here in just a moment. Well, just a single entry here in this division to get us started in our full blood show. Uh, one that I think if you start at the ground, I really like her in terms of her substance of foot, substance of bone. Uh, I think that heifer has got some shape and some power as well. Uh, she probably gets just a little bit rounder off either end, uh, just a little plainer in terms of her look up front, a little rounder out of her hip. But I like her substance and her power that she has. Congratulations to her. Good way to start us off. Just another single entry here in this division, and I think a heifer uh, that's probably got just a little more look and presence up front, uh, especially comparative to the first one that we've seen. I, I like her head and her neck, uh, the way she comes out of the top side of it. Uh, she's got some look and presence up front. I, I think if you're going to pick on her standing still from the side, she could probably be just a little bit deeper back into her flank. Uh, I think that would probably correct her balance just a little bit. And then in motion, she's probably just a little too tight and rigid in the way she gets out and utilizes her hip and hind leg so we could relax her there soften her in the rear part of her rib uh, I think that'll make her balance up a little bit better but a nice single entry congratulations
You know, if we could just study this heifer uh, standing still, uh, I think there's a lot of things to really like about her because when she gets her collected, uh, I think she balances pretty well from the side. Now, she's not the most uh, just extended or, or the neatest up front, uh, but I still think she's probably uh, one of the most refined that we've seen about the top side of her neck. And then from there back, uh, she's got some shape and some turn to her rib and some substance. Uh, so I like a few different things about her. Uh, I think her biggest downfall probably when she gets into motion. She's just a little more hesitant, uh, a, little, a little more rigid, and, and the young lady does a good job being aware of that, keeping her going at a pretty slow pace, uh, but she needs to set down just a little more comfortable, specifically out of her hind leg at the ground uh, in her pasterns there. Uh, but I think a heifer that I like for some different pieces, uh, congratulations to her. Another nice uh, single entry that we've got here in this division. Uh, I like this heifer in, in terms of her rib and her body type. Uh, honestly, she's pretty smooth about the way she comes into her shoulder and still has some boldness and, and some turn right behind it. Uh, so I like the way that she transitions there from her shoulder back into her forerib. Uh, she could probably be just a little bit deeper back into her flank uh, and in motion too. She can be just a little more comfortable the way she utilizes her hip and hind leg, give her just a little more set uh, and flex to her lower joint work, uh, but I still think that heifer's got some presence up front and, and some boldness and substance to her. Another nice single entry. Congratulations. Well, over here in ring one, we're about ready to get started with your King Angus Bull Show. First class in the ring, class one, King Angus Bulls, born May of 2022. I think a really cool way to, to kick off this bull show. Uh, that's a neat, neat one in terms of just his, his look, his, his posture, but yet uh, body volume still really good. Feet and leg design, the way he lays that down is, is still really good. Uh, again, for that age and size, very good testicular development as well. So really a, a neat way uh, to kick off this bull show. Well, congratulations over here in the Kings ring. Results out of Class 1 first place. Exhibited by Kennedy and Brooke Evans of Campbellsburg, Kentucky with GOP knockout 211K. Well, now bringing Class 2, these be Kings Bulls, born March of 2022.
I'm going to leave these two heifers uh, the way that they came in. Uh, honestly, they're a little bit similar uh, in their type and kind and probably the areas that you want to change them. They're probably both just a little heavier in terms of their condition uh, and they're not the neatest fronted cattle. They could be just a little more refined and a little more feminine up front. I think for me, uh, between the two of them, if you start at the ground, especially on the heifer that we're going to start off with, I probably like the shape of her feet and her toes uh, just a little bit better. I think she's a little more correct down low, even though she wants to roll out of her hip and drop her pin set a little bit, uh, I think that she probably is just a little bit uh, of the advantage in terms of movement and the way she handles herself. We could pick on both of them, uh, but I just think in terms of starting at the ground, foot shape, toe, as she's just a little more correct to me. Uh, I think the heifer in second is tremendous in terms of her rib and body type. She has got uh, a ton of substance. Uh, she's pretty heavier in terms of her condition, and we could freshen her up in some areas. Uh, I think that that's uh, probably evident when you get her in motion. She gets to uh, swinging outside of herself, and so we could uh, make her set down just a little square and be a little more comfortable, uh, maintain her balance. And if you study her at the ground, she's just a little bit longer uh, in her rear toes, and we could change her foot shape a little bit and make her a little more correct. A nice pair in that division, though. Congratulations. Got another nice single entry here. Uh, again, really masculine, uh, robust bull, awesome in his body. Like his muscle type, he's wide, but yet he's smooth in the way that goes on to his body. Head and neck set are perched up there in a really high and, and neat manner. Uh, you know, maybe not the biggest bone uh, to match all the mass he has up high, and that throws his balance off just a touch, but that's still a good, good, good bull. It's got a lot of good going for him. Well, congratulations over in the Kings Bull Ring. First place in Class 2 in your champion early junior bull calf. Goes to back number 7228, MD Beyond the Ring, 780K. Exhibited by Tatum Miller of Big Spring, Texas. Class 3 was a scratch. We'll bring in Class 4. Back over in the Aberdeen Ring, we're going to bring those first and seconds in. Select the champion reserve. Yearling full blood heifer. Good bovine here, uh, single entry, uh, just one that worlds of quality and, and look. And, and I still think as you study that bull, if you take away the, the big good presentation, there's just a lot of good and fundamental things that are there, but yet it's quality and, and things he does and in terms of width and thickness, but yet smoothness and attractiveness, yet he's still masculine-headed, good-nutted bull that sets him down in an athletic manner. Nice bull here, leads off here in this class. Well, congratulations over here in the Key Angus Ring. Results out of your summer year lane division. Champion will go to BMW GCC Bucket List 520 JET, exhibited by Weingartner Show Cattle of Herod, Ohio. We'll now bring in Class 5. These will be Key Angus Bulls, born March and April of 2021.
We would like to also add over here in the Kiangas ring, your champion summer yearling, owned by Weingartner Show Cattle, Griswold Cattle, and Van Voorhees Cattle. And currently over here in ring two, we are going to select your grand and reserve grand champion, full blood female, here in your junior show. Another really good pair of bulls we have here again. Uh, very masculine, very rugged individuals, but this guy up front there standing still, uh, that's a heck of a bull in terms of just robustness, uh, his body mass, his muscle, but yet he still ha has a neat, neat feature there up front, the way he sets up, uh, his attractiveness. And, you know, I don't always like to call bulls attractive, but that one's good to look at, but he's still a man uh, as you get to study him all the way through. I can't tell if he's reacting to his nose bud, not wanting to go, but he will step outside himself and be a little awkward on the move and I like to change that about him but boy right there that's a lot of good in that one bull still like this bull here we have here in second and you talk about one again length and extension are awesome but yet that one's still robust and no he doesn't have the big hair uh, but boy his shape's still good his body contour is still good there as well just probably not the extra body and, and width we find in this one, not the extra uniqueness of look that we find in this one. Probably does keep himself inside the frame of his body work just a little better, but at the same time probably has just a little excessive set to his hawk, so you can give and take there as well. But really good pair of bulls, good big pair of bulls. Well, congratulations in Class 5 in your junior yearling division. Your champion will go to Classic Genetics of Ardmore, Oklahoma, with Classic qualified 564J and reserve champion will go to Tyler Loudon of Creston, Iowa. We're now going to bring in your final class of Key Angus Bulls over here in ring one. This will be class six. Key Angus Bulls born May of 2020. Well, we didn't have a, a lot of numbers here in our full blood uh, show, but I, I think we've got some nice cattle out here. Uh, we'll go through them a little bit uh, and break each one of them down uh, a little bit quickly. Uh, the young lady out of the first division, we talked about that heifer just in terms of her body type, having some substance, a foot and bone, having some shape, uh, I think she's good. Uh, when you get her back out here and you compare it to the rest, she gets a little out horse. And then I think in terms of her balance, we, she, we said she's a little round or off either end. She's a little plainer up front. She gets a little off behind her shoulder and wants to come up in her loin uh, and round out of her hips. So we could change some things from the side uh, to make her balance up a little bit better uh, and probably be just a little more competitive out here. A uh, young man out of the second division, I, I think that heifer has got some extension. She's got some presence up front. She probably is one of the neatest uh, heifers that we've got out here, just about her head and her neck, the top side of it. Uh, I think from there back, she's probably just a little greener, uh, a little harder in terms of her rear rib and flank. Uh, and then when she gets out into motion, she's a little more rigid, too, in the way she utilizes her hip and hind leg. We could relax her there. Heifer out of the third division, I, I think stopped and standing still. That's probably the one that, that of the five that we've got out here hits you the hardest, just in terms of the way she proportions. She's not the most extended uh, or the neatest fronted, but I think everything fits together well in her uh, and she probably is just a little neater than some of the other heifers that we've got out here but just in terms of the way she balances uh, I think she's one of the best we picked on her in motion she needs to be uh, a little bit better in the way she utilizes her hip and hind leg and just get out a little more comfortable uh, but I like the way she pieces together she balances she's got some substance so I think that heifer probably checks off a couple of boxes for me the red heifer a uh, little bit different than some of the other ones I, I think one that's got a little more extension, uh, maybe comparative to the heifer, especially right behind her, ties her neck a little smoother into her shoulder. I think she's got some turn to her rib. We could relax her off either end of her build. She's a little straighter up front uh, and just a, a little more tight in the way she utilizes both ends of her build. Uh, but I think in terms of presence and look, she does have some of that out here. Heifer out of the last division, I, I think one that's really impressive in terms of her substance, her body type. She just looks very, very maternal. You get to a 
rear three quarter really good and the turn to her rib the sweep back into her flank uh, so I like those things about her we picked on her in division uh, just in terms of having a little more condition and I think in motion too uh, she wants to round out a little bit off either end uh, she could be just a little more correct in the way she maintains her balance but just in terms of substance broodiness she's really really impressive uh, so that's the way I read these five division winners uh, I think they're all a little bit different uh, and I was interested to see the way that they would shake out when we got them all back out here uh, again I just want to thank everybody uh, the shows have been really really good and I've really enjoyed myself uh, the kids have been great to work with and everybody helping me has made it very smooth uh, I'm gonna put this down I'm gonna take one more look at these five and we'll get you a champion of reserve but we need to congratulate all these exhibitors a really nice show Got a neat one and fun one to, to study and look at, and, and got obviously a little higher percentage on the key side of things here. But boy, uh, again, length, extension. I obviously vertical challenges. I am would have a hard time showing that bull. I can dang near look underneath him. But uh, boy, I, I think this one's just kind of old school cool. If you ask me, uh, I like still his muscle for as big and long of a bull as he is. And, and again. To ask him to perfectly lead me to stride would be probably unfair, but that guy still gets and goes in a way with a bull that big, with that much growth and gets. I'm glad you brought him. That's a neat one to look at and study and a fun one for me to look at out here. So let's give him a round of applause. Nice bull there. Well, congratulations over here in ring two, your grand champion full blood coming out of class 3B. Congratulations, UF Miss Wendy, 58G, 18J, exhibited by Ella Patterson, Finley, Ohio. And congratulations, your reserve champion coming out of that final class and division. Congratulations to Erica Patterson of Finley, Ohio with UF Miss Sparkle, 37C54H. Again, congratulations to all of those exhibitors. A special thank you to our judge, Miss Macy Gretzka, Stillwater, Oklahoma. We'll look to get started with your open show over here in the Aberdeen ring in just a moment. Well, back over in the Key Angus ring, we are going to bring in all of your bold champions. Our champion out of that last division, your senior yearling division, was B.J. Big John, exhibited by 5J Kianina of Polk City, Iowa.
Really uh, an impressive set of bulls here. Uh, again, uh, almost like a history lesson as you look through here, uh, but just a, a neat set of bulls. This one here up front, again, you always uh, like it when you have a good calf lead off and, and one that gets really hard to really to pick a, a big hole in. Uh, just a lot of neat things about him uh, come together, uh, starts to put on and tack on some extras there. Uh, I like his skeleton. I like his flexibility there as well. And the still one, again, squareness is good. Good. Uh, feet and legs are good. His reach is good. That one's got a world, a world of potential uh, to me, and there's just a lot of good going for him. Bull that came out of D2 here. Uh, again, very masculine, very rugged in terms of body shape and, and stoutness when you get in behind him and study him. Obviously, you want to see him a little bigger bone to match everything up high. He's maybe not quite as, as eye-catching at first, just a little thicker neck than maybe his contemporaries out here. That's still a good bull, though, in terms of his fundamentals and still has some balance and proportion to him. Bull that came out of that next division, uh, again, I, I think that one does a lot of good things as far, far as being a, a show bull, a show animal, but yet I still think underneath there, uh, there's some thickness, there's some smoothness. Just looks like a female maker if you just want to get down to it, to put that kind of neck set and body shape into one and still keep it as athletic as what he does. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm not going to call him the powerhouse because that stands right here behind him, but boy, that's not a narrow animal uh, whatsoever. He still gets and goes. This stout, stout, rugged bull here that came out of this next division, I mean, that is, uh, you can't put more muscle into one uh, and still have them look as attractive and neat as what that bull does. It opens up extremely well. Big, massive hip there as well. And, yes, it does come with some shoulder. comes with just a little coarseness there. But the way he parks everything together still comes well. Still in my mind, I'm, I'm fighting with what he does off his rear skeleton. I like to see him just a little more conservative in the way he handles his rear skeleton. But when he stops and parks himself, uh, boy, he's hard not to love amongst his crew. Under seven eighths bull here on the end again, obviously towers over everything in terms of growth and extension. And for what he is, uh, again, I love it, and I'm glad he brought him to the show. It, obviously, is he as, as modern looking? Maybe as what these are? No, but for what he is, he is, and I do a value. I do value that bull a lot, and like to look and study him here. So, really, a, a neat conversation we can have. I, I think we got a logical one uh, that leads off this crew. I'll go back and forth on my mind just a little bit and what we do for reserve here. But this bull right here in front of me. I think he's a stud. We're going to use him to be our champion. Well, congratulations, your grand champion, Key Angus Bull, here at the Cattlemen's Congress, coming out of your summer yearling division. Congratulations, Wagon Gartner Show Cattle, Griswold Cattle, and Van Voorhis Cattle with BMW GCC Bucket List 520JET. And congratulations, your reserve grand champion, Key Angus Bull, coming out of Class 1, your late junior bull calf champion, GOP knockout, 211K, exhibited by Kennedy and Brooks Evans of Campbellsburg, Kentucky. Congratulations to all of our exhibitors. Special thank you once again to our judge, Mr. Brandon Callis, Minco, Oklahoma.